Hello, Hello everybody. everybody. <laughs> Hello everybody. Yeah, trying to sync it there. Yeah. Not sure how yeah, it worked. Yeah, yeah. I'm Ikebu, the video content manager for World of Tanks EU, and this is the wonderful... Echita, Confetti Queen. Confetti Queen. <laughs> Confetti Queen. There you go. Confetti Queen. Uh, and today is day two of the Clan Rivals tournament. We're going to be continuing on from yesterday. The first match between Nomi and BGWP. Uh, we're going to pass over to uh, our casters very soon, but first... We have to talk about giveaways. Giveaways. Everybody's right? here for the giveaways. Course, Codes and course. giveaways. Of course. So today we're going to have still the Chill Blast giveaway. You just have to sign up to the campaign, follow our social media channels, refer friends, and you may be the lucky winner of this amazing custom APC from me Chill Blast. The, me the lucky winner. Um, I don't know about that. I <laughs> me the lucky winner. That. You also saw that. Clip it. Yes. Ikibu wins the PC. Everybody yeah, knows so this. So that PC is up to the value of? £2,000. 2,000 pounds. Great yeah, British pounds. It was like 2.3 Yeah, 2.3k like euros it comes out at converted that somebody managed to work out. Yes. So yeah, that, that's pretty cool. I wish I could get that PC actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely for me. But I don't think that will be fair. No. Uh, so today we have the, the usual. We have the codes on the maps that you need to keep an eye out for. Our observers are going to do their very best to try and keep an eye on those, but don't worry if not, we will be sharing those in chat. And I think we've covered everything in terms of I codes and giveaways. Before I going to the casters, just to make sure that you guys understand that it's only one code per map and not per game. Yep. And also all these giveaways are for the use server only. Okay. So I hope you are going to enjoy the game. And Oh, 5k activations. That's right, <laughs> pike activations for So code. you need to make sure you get them early yes. because otherwise people activate them later in the day and then it's like, it's not it's working. Gone. So by collecting five of those codes, you're also going to get something extra, a garage slot and a style. Uh, I believe that was yesterday. Is it one but day today as today? Well. Today, today as well? Today as well. Oh, okay, so if you sorted. If you collect 10 of those codes, including the ones from yesterday, you're going to get a one day of premium. So you better redeem those codes. I'm going to. Okay, and then we're ready to pass over to the enigmatic, the wonderful, charismatic duo of Steel Mojo and Daki. Wonderful pair. And uh, I'm sure they're eager and raring to go this morning. Uh, and uh, yeah, good luck, guys. See ya. Thank you very much, Iki. It's so lovely to see you again. Honestly, I'm, you know, I want like a, like a captain's glass. You know how that goes? to so, like spy on Iki more, but nobody wanted to give me one. Captain Hook? No, 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 like the... The spying glass you get, you know? Like yeah, you get it when you're a pirate, mate. You yeah, well, be a pirate. I mean, you know. It's before your time, you know? I Pirates mean. are extinct in this game now. Anyways, welcome to the second day. Uh, we have four teams that are remaining from all of the 16 that actually entered the qualifying and everything else of the period. So you can see them now there after a big battles. We have Nomi beating Bliv. I, I believe that was a bit of a stomp, 4-0. But it's the first tournament from the guys from Bliv. So I believe they have a chance next time when they are more calm and they know exactly what happens. To be honest, when we used to play Gold League, there were a bunch of guys who would go out on a, on a scene like first time and they would start shaking like leaves. You know, so things happen on tournaments. BGVP, a victory for uh, BGVP guys who actually most of them played in trust during the campaign. So <laughs> things happen, you know, the ball is around and uh, we have the first semi-finalists there, Nomi vs BGVP. MEPS and CSA, a dramatic uh, quarterfinal match, if Very you remember, close. like super close. And then the, the, the last game came in tiebreaker, a shocking 15-0. Not expected. Yeah, no, especially because it's like beforehand, uh, my kills was like, Line Vox is not really a CSA map. And then they beat the uh, MVPS 15 0. They, they must have listened to you. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> You're gonna see it now, man. Yeah. Um, that, is, that is very correct. Uh, the RVRC, they're having a good showing in some games, and then uh, I would say lackluster. And so like, it, it was a very hit or miss performance with them on some maps. Yeah, two maps, they play absolutely brilliant on one side, and then on another side, a complete opposite of the coin like what were you guys doing Th that's like where were you where were you on the other sides of those maps so bgvp guys used their ex long years experience and won them there and the last match devi and nomi was very static as far as i saw and uh, a lot of mistakes were made i expect more from devi today so we will see how it goes in that regard but first thing first nomi and bgvp Who's your favorite here, bro? 
Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to go with PG underscore WP just on the sheer basis of experience. Um, it's a best of nine as well. It, it's not Nomi's first team either. Um, and just based of experience, I, I do think that the map picks help for Nomi, uh, to be honest. Because I don't think they want to take BG underscore WP on any city map. So mm -hmm. there's no Himmelsdorf, there's no Ensk. I, I think personally that's very good. But then still, um, playing at semi-finals against this team is already very pressuring. Especially for them, there's a lot of nerves on their shoulders. Um, and, and even then... Uh, it's just like so much experience. They need a really IMO a strong, very strong start, even maybe picking up the first map 2-0. Yeah, respectfully, Nomi brought two teams here, so they already have a huge success and one of them even made it to semi-final. But today there is a high chance that we will see some guys that didn't have a chance to play yesterday for BGVP, as you uh, really well uh, observed yesterday. Like, didn't, they didn't have Stefan, he had a football match, Shokish couldn't connect to U2, so he couldn't play. And there is Stefan, and there is Shokish. Shokish. Yeah, two big, two big hitters in this team that weren't there yesterday. And first game already here on Live Oaks, Mojo. I do want to say that uh, Nomi has a Udes and a Leo. Udes? Really? Okay, that's the first time I even saw it in some match like this or expected. I'm really interested to see how they use it. I mean, it's a good cooldown tank, but I would call it average. I wouldn't call it exceptional. So we'll see how they do. Leopard, you already explained yesterday to everyone who didn't watch, guys, like uh, it replaces STRV in many occasions because of uh, shell velocity and accuracy, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, uh, very high shell velocity in here. He can also immediately run away. He doesn't have to wait for the um, siege mode to go out. He's running away straight because yeah, there's running. a very aggressive <laughs> move from BGWP un under onto the F3 position. Very, very aggressive from the beginning. Yeah, this is an opening we see often from some teams that who I like how they play, to be honest. They're taking open the water part, immediately playing the cooldown. And in the same time, you can see on F0, they maintain the force of tanks. So they have a crossfire with these guys, so they can't get easily counter pushed. So they're kind of playing a zigzag on a map, and they're going to rely on each other to spot, to hold off the enemy and do rotations and start shooting enemy one by one. As we can see already, there is a one casualty on Nomi side. The game just started a minute and a half ago. A couple of other guys lost some HP, and they don't seem to be in position to actually push on BGVP at the moment. They are gathering, but I'm not sure they can actually do it. Yeah, there's a lot of tanks here for BGWP in this northern side. They are starting to push in with the 260, the 907. They are making a play in the meantime. And Nomi is trying to make a play on the other side, but is it quickly enough? They're already down 3000 HP. They're pushing on towards the pre while Faley here and the likes of him, the 260 coming as well. They're pushing on towards Ren in that uh, Chieftain. There's double Chieftain there and an EBR, and that's not enough to actually hold off that push, I think. Yeah, Ren is going to fall really soon, and those double Chieftains will be a victim of these four mediums. I mean, you ha can have good armor and hold on, but four mediums are four mediums. Plus, there is more of BGVP guys coming from this IA. HP is actually equal because Nomi core is actually winning the other side, but they are having heavy casualties on that side. Also, there will be a huge problem. Once these tanks are dead here, there is no one left except Leopard to spot the cap and maybe decap. Well, there's for a chieftain the Nomi. with him still though. There's actually a chieftain right next to him. I didn't even see that myself. Oh, Come yeah, on, not pushing in. Kind of bogged down with yeah. those textures. Uh, Camille not pushing in in the EBR. The, the Leo is one shot. That's a big issue here for the side of uh, Nomi. Camille's going to go pick that up because obviously Leo cannot bounce an EBR. It just doesn't happen. Very rarely, maybe. In but some now, magic world sometimes. Yeah, now they need to kill the Chieftain though and start capping at the same time. A big hit on towards Camille there from that Chieftain as well. They will start capping. They will push towards him at the same time. And now it's on to Nomi to actually be able to reset this as well. Yeah, and there is a much better position for BGVP to reset. They may be down on HP, but positional, I would say they are way advanced in compared to Nomi. And you can see Nomi will start to melt now. This Chieftain is in no position to do anything with the cap. He's surrounded by enemies all over the place. Evil or Scalabrine is going down and he's trying to now proxy the cap because there is no one to actually see these tanks. But he's way down in a water in a swamp, taken out by Shokish. That leaves only Qpec to maybe try to blind show the cap, man. But that's a vast area and there is a blind angle there completely. Yeah, there's only one second left for the cap here in BGWP. Even though the HP is close, has capped it out now. As long as there's no more kills coming in, I mean, there's five seconds left. Gets extended a little bit by the time, but I don't think it will go long enough. Nope, there it is. BGWP caps it out on their attacking round on Live Oaks from what a lot of people think is the inferior side even. Well, I don't know. I mean, Live Oaks, man, inferior side, if you play rotations and if you play the way they play the map control, this is pretty much equal, equal game. Uh, I like their approach, as mm -hmm. I said already. You they got the Chieftain for free in the beginning, the one yeah. that plays on the normal hill. Like, they are 
basically pushing two sides of the map and uh, also they rely that most of the guys actually like to push the brawl side of the map where Nomi went. Uh, to counter push guys from BGVP you have to sacrifice a lot of HP. Uh, they can also choose to go over the rail toward their mediums on the other side and uh, the mediums can cover them by sniping if there is no mm -hmm. opposition on the other side. If there is a slight opposition on the other side we saw already they just YOLO with all of the mediums and chieftains they have. And still, they will be able to control their own cap because they still have the test TRV, they still have a couple of guys who can snipe and spot, and there is none of that left for Nomi. It's simply like that, tactics and a bit of math with the numbers. Yeah, uh, I do feel that Nomi, that, that chieftain that stayed in that area, when as soon as he sees the 907s going under, that, does, that doesn't get full. There always is a follow-up to the north. Yeah. Like, they, there has to be tanks going to the north, or you're just, like, putting mediums in a bad position. So that chieftain probably should have bailed as well. If we're honest about it, when he saw them, he can still get out because they have to stay under the whole time. It's not like they can spot him and shoot him. There's nobody really to shoot him. So maybe he should have bailed. I think keeping those two chieftains is that, that hole is a waste. Yeah, I, yeah. well, they, they lost the first one, and then there are two chieftains in the hole. I think, like, they could run away with the first one back to the hole and then keep another one in support, and maybe that would have... I mean, if they do want to commit something there, then if they have two guys, but they would have one you more. You leave one guy for a spot. Mm -hmm. You leave one guy for they a do spot. Do as much damage as you can. And then you keep guys on a red line back, do as much when they're approaching, and then you just try to keep control of the cap with the tanks alive. Yeah. If you don't have the tanks, what will you do? Well, they, they lost that chieftain, and then they had two chieftains in the hole, and then they had an EBR there as well. So in reality, they lost four tanks for that push. Plus, uh, Leopard was on one shot. Yeah, Leo. Mm. That also. Like, he should have been away way earlier to you, just you know where snipe. evil oscar was with the 907 he was like the next dip on the rails mm -hmm. that's where the leo should have been and the 907 should have been where the leo was yeah technically but you know generals are easily made after the battles <laughs> they will be able to see all of this also and they will have to now prepare for the next side of the map they will have to focus a bit on their attack yeah um, i mean picking up that round for bgwp is very good ammo because in general, most teams do not favor northeast side. Well, I would say there is a bit more security in their play compared to yesterday, honestly. And maybe it's the influence of uh, Shokish and Stefan. So there is maybe, you know, a bit more of voices of reason or leadership that they need since they don't have Insane and Maestora anyways. But uh, we will see on another side mm. because even they know that any team can come back. And I believe they will just fight really seriously till, till the end. Nomi? On other hand, what do you think they have to do actually to be a, beat a team like this? I think, uh, I mean, this last round wasn't really that bad. I just feel like they need to react a little bit quicker to what's being thrown at them. I mean, you know, bringing, leaving the Chiefs in there to die for free, that's mm -hmm. a mistake already. I think they need to, they, I think when they spotted those 3907s and those other tanks, they had to, like, just sacrifice the Chieftain IMO and play way more aggressive towards 9 0. Like, uh, it, like, I feel like they need to react quicker and faster. I mean, quicker and faster is the same thing, but more aggressive. Mm -hmm. So they saw three tanks. They know there has to be tanks supporting. They know that there have to be tanks going through A-line as well, which leaves zero line open. At that point, they should just push zero line, which they did, but late. Yeah, I think, like, uh, details. They realize in details, as usual. Yeah, but if they do it quicker, that's like, what, 30 seconds? Mm -hmm. 30 seconds extra time? Uh... We saw that HP was really equal most yeah. of the game. I think they lost this game more or less tactically, like not on exchange. So it doesn't mean they be played bad as individuals. Like always it happens that one guy will make a mistake here or there. You cannot break a game on something like that. But like uh, the decisions in the start actually, the initial opening by uh, BGVP guys was way better and smarter and took them a bit off guard. They and got they them some free yeah. some free stuff. Yeah, they got they, they got them also a big uh, playing space for themselves to operate much more. And Nomi was just like then forced to do things. And when you're forced to do things, then you start losing HP and ground. Well, we'll see what happens in the second game here, though, between BG underscore WP and Nomi. Um, the lineup so far, Mojo, things to point out here. Uh, a lot of chieftains, actually, for Nomi. Only one ID, double for BGWP. Double RT for VG. That's interesting. It definitely means they will not play fast with this kind of setup, and they will probably not expand too much on one side. They will probably, yeah, they're keeping tanks mostly on one side and just keeping a spot on the other. Are they doing what they did before with going under? Like, we've seen this from them before in previous tournaments, I think. Yeah, but they have only two, three mediums here. It doesn't look the same. Two 7.7s are going. They, they have like three two seven sevens going under as well. 
from what I can see on the minimap right now on D4. Like, I think I, I've seen them play this before. Like Yeah, 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 we've seen them before. This is actually really interesting because they have only three mediums on the other side. So that means if they actually pressure there, they will uh, run toward the city. If the other side is pressured, then 907s will just flip back and try to play hold on toward them. The 279 has to face towards the 907s right now, so he doesn't get uh, mm -hmm. free farm from behind. But if they're actually able to push back those 907s, these 277s will just melt, should just melt. This 277 in the bushes will be in a problem, I think. Also, double RT will take out of Henneker really fast unless they're careful. Camille actually falls in his EBR. He was spotting the rail side and the other side of the map. So the 907s, as we said, they already started running away. The next step, if they completely leave, will be STRV pulling back. But if they leave people there in holdown, STRV will stay on G5 position, 100%. Uh, Camilo is actually safe uh, in his 279 here. There is no one who can harm him because to be able to kill that tank, you need to control the rail side so you can shoot him in his side. And obviously, Nomi is not allowing that. Yeah, you need to be a bare minimum to pen this 279 in that position. You need to be on like even ground as him. And you can see right now the position that they are in, those three 277s, they are below him. They are mm -hmm. not penning this. Okay, the only thing is Arti is the only p people who can shoot him in case you are wondering guys because you cannot shoot them easily from other side. There is this little dip, you can see this little hill on their right side, it's protecting them from the guys from the rail. But if Nomi manages to chase away three 907s from K3, then they will have a perfect position to shoot them in the back. You can see BGWP is still controlling the rails and they need this double RD to really work. Yes, Nomi is attacking, but BGWP is far down in HP and this RD is doing significantly more than the double RD for BGWP. With one yeah, shot, he did like yeah, 600. They, they, they're doing nothing and they're shooting H8 over Camilo here and he's just laughing about it. As you can see, he's taking like 15, 20 damage. <laughs> Come on, guys. It doesn't work. So there you go. First RT actually connects on Camilo for the first time here, I would say, on some significant damage, like 300. But still, Nomi single RT will uh, return the favor because he is always hitting the cluster of uh, Vale, Felver and Silencio. So for, for now, we just have to see how this fight develops here. But, ooh, <laughs> Manchurnik almost shooting Camilo <laughs> in the back there. Um, so far, not too many shots coming out from the south side of the map, though, on towards these tanks. They do have a sort of a rage hold down where they are pretty safe, and it's just going to be an RD trade for now. And at this moment in time, BGWP is still defending. They are, however, down in HP. Yeah, but it's only 3,000, and with a team like this, to be honest, that HP can be melted back. We've seen it even when they have inferior number of tanks by creating crossfires and uh, opportunities during the game. They can come back with that quite easily. I'm going to be very blunt here, Mojo. If, mm -hmm. if you are Nomi, the best play right now is you pull back everybody and you re-push yes. A to D line. Yes. But you need to kind of do it uh, unspotted. So yes, you need to yes, clear. Yes. You need to clear the spotter somehow. And... Uh, they do have an EBR they can use for that. Mm -hmm. Also, you can see Failure needs to completely fade. He's hugging the swamp now up to the en engine deck because he's a one-shot. That's actually a big problem, having a tank uh, on that HP there. Uh, Camilo is trying to give a proxy. I think Nomi is doing it, by the way. Yeah, they're doing it. Uh, Camilo is trying to do a proxy. That's why he's peeking so much. And he's trying to push Vale and Silence uh, back down as much as he can. So... Some of them actually don't see the rotation, but there is still EBR in the bushes on the top of the hill on C6. So he's probably mm -hmm. the guy that will spot the rotation. Uh, most of the tanks from uh, BGVP are actually gathered up close. You see they're rotating the GC toward the city so they can farm a 279. But that can actually be a mortal wound for them because if the push comes, GCs will be stuck in the city area. Oh, the new Papa was in that bush that like, actually hit him for 500 immediately and he gets spotted by running away. That's great blind fire there from Bunchernik, honestly. Yeah, very, it was, very, that very was nice really stuff. good. It was an important shot and we said like he, they will try to clear all the spots before the rotation because they realize in details and that's the only way you can actually make this push successful. Now, they don't have to kill everyone from BGVP in that push, but if they catch one RT, mm -hmm. kill one or yeah. two tanks, that's a I, significant advantage, I, and then they can play rotations. I think they should ignore the 277s altogether, pretty yeah, much. They, they're just dead weight. Yeah, because you can see the Chieftain from G9 will cover Camilio if they peek up. They still have some control on the south, which is not easily going to be beaten. I don't like the Chieftain forward in J8, personally, because he can be pushed upon, but they but need to ignore the, Yeah, they need to ignore the 277s and just push A-line. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that Chieftain is for map control together with other guys, so 277s cannot actually run away anywhere. So no matter where they go, they're gonna die. These guys are the striking punch, like the power fist of Nomi. 
and they actually have a really good chance to do something now. Double artist shot from BGVP coming in. Fifen is clearing the way in front of them, so we have Stefan, Shokish and a couple of other guys there, but they will have really not much backup from the rest of the team. No, I mean, still those tanks in the south not moving for BGWP. It's a little bit lackluster, a little bit slow even, as Nomi starts retaking the A-line here. Yeah, I'm and quite surprised they're not still uh, going up. Yeah, Papa takes one more shot of damage there as well. Stefan is behind the house. He is kind of safe. BGWP is defending, nonetheless. But if they take... Well, the, taken down. If they take D3, if they take D3, all these 277s just die. Yep, Vala is already down. Uh, these guys will just have to take the houses over the water and they will have a complete fire control over the 277s. 277s are now completely victims of these tactics. Nomi is doing really well. Look at these 907s now in the south. They had an opportunity there to push and maybe focus out one of the chieftains, but now they are going to be facing four chieftains in 907s. And yeah, even if it's a 4v4, yeah, that does not, not work. Happening. It's not happening. Like, uh, BGVP should have pushed those 907s up to the city. That's That's... I think that was their last opportunity to win, unless Nomi makes some really ridiculous mistake now. Yeah, now Sky is just gonna start shooting away at these nine at these two seven sevens. That is another like full HP, pretty much one thousand six hundred HP is silence, and he's just gonna get farmed here. There's nothing he can do in this position. When you give up D three, you get into the position here where this under push just gets free farmed. Yeah, they didn't see the rotation well enough on time, and by the time it came, this is the result. Really, really good play by Nomi in this game. 6,000 HP advantage already, tactically completely outwitting uh, BGVP and suppressing them on every front, I would say. Yeah, this is not this push is not happening here for BGD, BGWP. I mean, Philly's now getting shot on the side as well. That is chieftains. That does not just happen. They don't just die. Uh, IMOP fancies a little bit of a brawl there with Kaiser and the Ich, and he's going to win that. Just, there's just too many chieftains there for the side of Nomi. And this was a very slow round in terms of BGWP. They made the initial play, but then at one point it just felt like they they just stopped doing things. They yeah. just stopped. The first round we watched was really aggressive, tactically something we've seen on previous tournaments, to be honest. So nothing like, I would say, a shocking tactic we've never seen before, but just execution was perfect. And uh, now, this kind of stalemate, it doesn't seem like it's used them that well. And Nomi actually made smarter decisions how to hold them and how to rotate and really execute it well. Like it's really good. One one in a match. I'm I'm good with that, man. I'm good with that. Yeah, this is this is good for the match itself. Nomi about to pick up their first round here in the semifinals as IMOP Nerf Me finishes off Tuna, bringing it to one to one. And like I said in the beginning, this tactic seems very familiar to what they've done in previous tournaments, even mm -hmm. like very familiar. They did get the chieftain, Hanukkah and this chieftain died. But the 279 being at the house is not a um, how to say? It's not a new thing. It's been happening recently for a lot of a lot of teams do it now. They put a two seven nine there because it can't die. Even if you have nine sevens in the south, they can't just peek him and kill him. I would say a couple of things went a bit wrong here for uh, BGVP. Camille for dying. Camille dying is one, but they traded him for at least chieftain. Or uh, the the bigger problem is I think they didn't rotate Arty on time to the city so they can farm two seven nine. Also, the rotation by 907s from their base. If you want to play that side of the map, you actually need to be ready to abandon the lower side. That's how I see it. And in that moment, 277s can use the house to protect themselves from upper side because you need to dominate the upper side yeah, of the map. If you're moving already to... I mean... The thing is, yeah, if you're moving... It didn't even look like they really need two artists, to be honest, no. for playing something like this. I mean, but even then, if you have two artists and you're down on EBR and the other EBR is on the north side of the map, mm -hmm. uh and you can't really spot, I feel like you need to be more combined to like realize that if they push one side and we're this split, we're gonna lose, which is exactly what happened. They were super split. They, they couldn't push in south, there's four chieftains yeah, there. Yeah, they were kind of a sluggish call there. And uh, that was what surprised me because usually these guys play much faster. And uh, as I said, like they didn't rotate Arty on time toward the city. Like they started doing damage on mm. 279 way it's, too late. It's still super hard to kill him then though, because as soon as you realize they're in the city, yeah, but just if, if, back if, a if you bit. realize how many shots they fired before that, yeah. and yeah, yeah. Uh, 80 shells they were shooting from tanks for 15 damage and stuff like that, man. And they still didn't rotate Arty. Like yeah. Arty went up in the city where they can actually hit him for a couple of hundred each time, way too late. Like, way, way, way too late. I agree with you. They could have probably given up the majority of the south part and just fell back and played off north. Mm -hmm. Like, they go south, we push north and take their base. That would be the play, but uh, things happen like this. So it's 1-1. One, one. It's good for us mm -hmm. as an audience. This is a best of nine today, guys. All the three matches we will watch. 
two semifinals and final are best of nine and uh, that means they will have to play probably maybe one map more and so on so first map is over it was live oaks next mm -hmm. will be prokhorovka we've seen quite a lot of prokhorovka yesterday unlike live oaks yes uh, it was interesting to see live oaks and how it went Proko, however is more of a uh, Familiar map from yesterday. Uh, very defensive, though, from the north side. I haven't really not seen anybody, you know, being eager to... I mean, TRVSD tried. Their execution wasn't optimal. Uh, but outside of that, very passive. Yeah, uh, I would say when we were watching yesterday, I was impressed in one match, if you remember the exchange of EBRs. <laughs> like when they were like, I think in 60 seconds, four EBRs died. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. One to land on Proko is always very interesting in the EBR. Very, very... Sometimes, you know, you drive through the bushes, mm -hmm. and then in a split second, the enemy EBR appears in front of you, you just, you just crash into each other. It's, it's seriously, it's weird, because like, if you just drive through... If both EBRs drive through the bushes straight, you see each other on proxy, and you're like, oh, oh, what do I... And then you just drive it to each other. But uh, how close do the other guys actually need to be to be able to kill that EBR? That's uh, doing a first spot. You is, mean, is it you even mean possible? Nine or sevens? It is possible. If the nine or sevens, um, when we get into the map, you'll see the sec If the nine or sevens drive from straight line from their base to the C2, D2 sector, but like mm -hmm. actually like full straight line, they will just about get there. If he, however, doesn't like spot a little deeper than, like if he doesn't spot kind of deep, then they can't shoot him. If he turns right before the little hill, they cannot shoot him either. But if he goes a little aggressive, then they do have shots. So basically, if they use a double spotter, it's much harder. Yes. That's why people do it. I just wanted you guys to understand why are the guys actually in the matches usually doing that for one-two line and not just yelling one EBR. Okay, so BGWP here on the defense. From yesterday, they have swapped out one STRV. I didn't like the double STRV yesterday anyways, but the one on A0, it really it didn't do much. It kind brings out passivity in a play. But double spotter again towards 1 2. I want to see if Kamal goes to take E1 again. And if Nomi blind fires him. Well, he's not giving up on his 268. Ooh, Papa got spotted for that as well. That's not great, actually. So he wanted to go to a bush here, but both EBR spotted out. Initial trades in favor of Nomi. They give two shots. They only receive one. So good stuff there. They have managed to like block the double EBR in a way. Mm -hmm. So good stuff there. RDI comes out and misses. Uh, fight on the hill, though, between the EBRs is very, very, very aggressive. Tuna is left on 69 HP. Tuna is not alive. He is taken out by Camilo. So really good play here by Nomi coming in. They are actually in a lead for one EBR and both of the others are already a bit damaged. Camilo and Papa are now doing aggressive spots. Camilo is again in a bush like yesterday, but oh, they are no. taking him out. Camilo goes down again. I am OP. Nerf me. Indeed, we shall nerf him because he's keeping these, uh, these EBRs lit the entire time. Camilo tried to get back in the same bush as Papa Pavin. Yep. Got spotted. Got hit twice, got set on fire, and died. That's one EBR left with 8 minutes 40 seconds. Yeah, even if you have a 6 cents perk, it's like 2 seconds before you can realize you're spotted. If you actually stop even EBR, is an easy target. This is another good scenario. This is a good scenario for Nomi. For Nomi, but yeah, not for BGWP, because Papa uh, can't really play passive. Like, this is a map that heavily relies on spotting. And when you lose spotters like this on a map like this or on Malinovka, you are really in dire straits. The only good thing going for them, they're defending, so most of their firepower is still there. But if they don't see enemy rotations, Oof. okay, okay. So they are taking out Camilo. How did he die? I really actually he was full don't HP. understand. Yes. He was one of the guys on the hill, guys, who took out uh, Tuna on a start, if you remember. And last we saw him, he had at least 1,000. He, he was full HP when he killed Tuna, so... And he was shot now by Chieftain. Dupre. And that has to be from middle. Uh, no, Dupre, I think, is the one at B9. Or is he middle? No, I'm there, he, sure. there he is on middle. Oh, he's on middle. middle. So they did some crazy blind fire then. I really don't understand. I would like to see his corpse, honestly, <laughs> to understand what happened here. Yeah, I'm very confused by that as well. I mean, you don't really just kill a full HP EBR like that. Well, mistakes happen, I guess. That could have been one of them. Or it could have been a really great play by BGVP in some form. Sadly, Coordinated blind fire, perhaps? Yeah. But it would have to be a really focused one by several tanks in the same moment. Yeah, it's incredible blindfire if it, if it was that. I don't think he was spotted. I, I can you see can't get tracked in EBR. Yeah. So, so you can that. always move. Yeah. Well, it's very good for them. They kind of evened out the odds here. There's still one EBR down, obviously. It is less tragic than when you are like this much. We already, already said yesterday, like in a last ditch resort, when the game is kind of a stalemate, you can always use e EBRs, not like a battering ram, 
but like a really fast scout ahead of everyone. You, you yolo them in, you follow with a bunch of snipers and, and you do as much damage you can and then you just pick up the rest of the pieces. So if you have all of those EBRs toward the end of the game and the enemy doesn't, it's a huge, huge advantage. But I'm not sure that Nomi actually doesn't know what to do with that advantage at the moment. They're really slow, taking it slow. They're taking it very, very slow. I mean, they're, both these teams are kind of playing on RD right now. IMOP is moving towards the hill again to, I guess, replace their lost EBR. So there is that. Uh, the Chief on the hill takes a little bit of damage there from RD. So he needs to be careful to not lose too much. You want that guy to be decently healthy at least. Well, let's see, Nerf Me is going to the hill. I'm really interested if he actually see the corpse of EBR up there or he died somewhere else. I don't see anything here. He's next to uh, the Chieftain. Like, if you look on the right of the Chieftain, there is this little corpse. You see it? Yeah, I see it now. So it was a blind fire by uh, BGVP guys. Like yeah, they're just continuously blind firing these bushes from Yeah, let's just say GGVP on that one. <laughs> That, that must have been like simultaneous hits, like three or four. In the Chieftain here takes another blind yeah, fire. Yeah, there's Kaizu down, Failware, and a bunch of other guys. Kaizu actually had a really good angle to shoot it together with the Dupree from the middle. So it must have been like uh, all three of them maybe hitting the same bush in the same moment. Yeah. I mean, the weirdest part is that he even died a little bit behind the bush. So maybe he got set on fire. Yeah, that actually happens with DBRs a lot as far as I So I never played the tank myself because I don't have it. But uh, I've, I've heard the curses of guys who have it when they yes. get set on fire because you usually use rations on a tank, never a fire extinguisher. Then you burn like a crisp. It yeah. is, uh, it's infuriating. Sometimes it's like you get hit by a chief, 200, mm -hmm. and it sets your fuel tanks on fire and you're like, okay, that happens. You know, but he playing a tank that is essentially overpowered, if you got just give him everything in his favor, that would be kind of too much. He has to have some weaknesses. You can see the rotation here from Nomi, though. They are leaving double Chieftain, STRV, I7. So four tanks will defend one, two. There'll be two Chieftains in the mid, and everybody else will push off. We saw this yesterday being be tried by Tier VST in not successful fashion, because it was too late, it was too slow, and they didn't have a way to kill the Chieftain. Mm -hmm. We'll see if Nomi is any more successful at it, though. Well, it was not only one Chieftain that was defending that. It was a 907X7. Yes. So... It's not a lonely position, and it's usually the guy who is playing the position with failure is on D8. He would pull back and come to the aid of their chieftain on time because he is keeping the first spot up, and he will be the guy who will say, hey, these are guys are pushing. Of course, he will not try to stay there in that moment. They're only sending the EBR so far. Kaiza hits that there. Failware is going to hit that as well. And now this 907 should either take punishment because if the EBR dies, they lose their spoiler on this side of the map. Yeah, failure cannot be shot because he immediately went down in cooldown, guys. So Nerf Me is actually suppressing their spot. But Skynet is actually spotted. So they know something is going on. Where there is one 907 going down, it's never alone. But kind of Nomi is taking it easy. They are sending people, not in droves, but in little groups. And the most of other guys are staying to snipe. This is a really awkward de decision. They have four mediums here and everyone else is just positioned defensive all over the map. Like... It looks even like they're hoping that the enemy will push one to line. Hmm. They, they do seem to be baiting here. Silence on the rail with Ich locking that down. Stefan now going to be from behind. And they need to find a way to kill this Chieftain reliably. Both IDs are going to be doing tons of damage on towards this area. It's yep. only, 44 from, uh, only 44 from the GW. They're going to need more here with three minutes. I don't think BGVP is taking the bait, mate. It doesn't look to me like they are eager to push one to line at all. They saw there is no really immediate danger here on this side of the map. They can work with RT and tanks they have. They are perfectly satisfied with this situation. That means that Nomi will actually have to pressure with the rest of their team now. Well, they're sending the EBR, which I like. The EBR went back and he's going to try and outspot the rails on A6. I personally think that is a good move. Um, if he does manage to do it, he gets spotted out. I feel like he should have gone past it for this. He's going to probably die. Lucky. Ooh, dodging, but it, he's not going to dodge this forever. At one point, he is just going to die. Lucky. I mean, he dodges again. They're not Very peeking lucky. from the rails. <laughs> <laughs> he's still alive, but for how long? Against all odds. Seriously, mate? 
Uh, is he gonna... Okay, he's still alive somehow. Stefan will now peek him and kill him, All finally. Right. <laughs> I feel like he lived a little too long there, for what it was worth. Yeah, that was, like, kind of amazing. I wouldn't even say amazing driving, but amazing amount of misses toward him. But the game is kind of getting heating up, because there is only two minutes remaining. Let's us remember, Nomi is attacking, BGVP is defending, so they don't have a reason to move. Nomi actually has... 105 seconds left to kill everyone because capping is not happening. Yeah, Nomi is now forced to push everywhere. Left, right and center. You can see Oscar there going over, immediately getting focused down towards 715 HP here. I feel like they left it a little too late to attempt and now they're just losing HP all over the place. And it doesn't look like Nomi is about to break this defense from BGWP. Ace yeah, is not happening. It's al already 6,000 damage. Never mind, 7,000 damage advantage for BGVP because wherever Nomi peaks, they are taking shots. Number of tanks is dwindling, so this is a final push resort. At least to go out with a bang, I would say, and a bang it will be. Yeah, Nomi here trying to push out this Chieftain, but those 907s from the rails just peeking up and absolutely slaughtering them one by one. Stefan up coming in, he's gonna go for the ram. There you go, he gets it on the Chieftain, gets it in style. Ronan now following up as well, and those tanks from Nomi, all the remaining ones, they're all in 1-2, waiting for something that never came. BGVP is staying alive. Wow, like a BG song. Time is running out, 40 seconds, guys. There is nothing that Nomi can actually do. Oh, we can actually see someone using I-7 after a while. Uh, he has a spot liner? Yeah, he does. Yeah, it takes, it takes so long to kill it with ID. It's it's very annoying to deal with. Mm -hmm. However, Chieftains don't struggle with it as much. I don't think anyone even bothered to spot him too much, so he would be shot by RT. He's just an RT bait in these kind of games. I mean, at least Hanukkah here finally gets to do some damage in this game. As <laughs> that was his first shell of damage after 9 minutes and 48 seconds. How does it feel to be a part of the trap that never sprang? Yeah. Um, I think Nomi did very well in the beginning, but I don't think they seemed like, you know, very aware of how they exactly wanted to play it. I think, like, from what they played, it looked to me they were just uh, expecting one two-line push. Mm. And that was the core of this, this, because this was not a decisive push on that side. We saw that. They, they sent like a couple uh, of tanks all the time waiting for some reaction. But Nomi, then they could have done a lot more. Uh, like, like in their scenario, ideally, like you need this RD to kill the Chieftain. Mm -hmm. You really need this RD to kill the Chieftain. Uh, Kai's are doing 5k damage. Uh, it's pretty nice. It's enough for a round and <laughs> God forbid for a <laughs> match like um, this. But in like they, this move they did, what's the percentage of uh, penetrations? I want to see that. They they could have done this uh, a lot nice. earlier, um, to be honest. Um, like what they did off the hill, they could have done it earlier because if they want to play like this, the RD needs to kill the chieftain, and that should be the goal of the RD: kill the chieftain, trade one for one. Because once the chieftain dies, you can maybe push the 907. I, I think it's really hard actually to kill the chieftain with one RD. I know that's I, the problem. That's why you need a lot of time for it, and pushing at like. 3 minutes 40 seconds is not gonna do it. It's not gonna cut it out for sure. Because that EBR, if you clear Failware's position, like I, one of the things that they're struggling with is those 907s on A6. If you clear the 907 where Failware is, you put your EBR there, he spots them on A6 if they're peeking, and then your Chieftains from the mid can actually do something on towards them. Can we can we have a damage panel again? I wanna see two guys more, like for something, if possible. Secret stuff? Secret stuff. Yeah, I, can I see Dupre and Failware? He only fired 29 times. 29 times. And failure? 17. 17. Kaizu had 31 and 17 connections. They were shooting left and right of those <laughs> bushes up there where EBR died, man. I think that EBR, like, it's really hard in the EBR to, to, to do that, to, to play those bushes if they're continuously blind firing. Mm -hmm. But the easiest trick in the book is if you know there's no EBR there, which you can be pretty certain about if they only have one left, you have the top bushes, one row lower, just drive into those. 907 can't spot you. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, I'm just like amazed. Like Prokhorovka is a big map. It does require from a team to be well versed uh, what actually to shoot and not just randomly mm. blind shoot the bushes. We've seen yesterday that people are trying to dig out the bushes. We've seen how I think it was like Papa or Kamil in a bush that was not, that was uh, com Kamil, right? Mm -hmm. Yesterday they were trying to shoot him for like one or two minutes. Arti never did though, and they didn't find him. And this guy just died while we were chatting about other things on the map. Yeah, I, I still don't understand how, in the beginning, Tuna, like, he went so aggressive on the hill. He did, they, did they wait for him and let him take the hill? I don't know. That could have been the case, you know? I, I, all I saw on the minimap, he was like, not just spotting, he was like, actually going over. But it could have been that they let him. Because I, I, I really don't understand, why would he go there? 
Yeah, me neither. I mean, I don't... Uh, double EBR on the hill is not very common, though. Maybe it was like, what a mistake to make, you know? Perhaps, Things perhaps. Happen. Now Nomi gets to defend, though, on Prokhorovka. Um, the question is, will they go in a similar fashion here as BGWP? It's very hard to play the tactic that somebody else plays and expect it to work. Well, I don't think, like, it really pays off for them to attack. I think it would be kind of suicidal, so I don't expect super aggressive play from Nomi. This is a, a trap for teams that are new in competitions, usually. They always feel uh, kind of threatened by an uh, older team, and they try to make a surprise. Well, surprise doesn't necessarily mean that on, on a map that is biased against attack to do it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Especially from that side of the map. I mean, it depends on the lineup that BGWP and Nomi are bringing anyways to see yeah, what uh, they're going to do. Yeah, something can happen. Like, they can see something in lineup that clicks and says, yeah, we can do this. But, you know, generally, it doesn't work like that. Double SCRV here for BGWP and a 268. They really like that. Uh, GV is on both sides. Like, su highly surprising. We mostly see GCs in uh, 92s yesterday. Yeah. I mean, people just like GWs for the DPM. Uh, to be honest, I don't feel like there's such a huge difference between it and the GC and the T92, but I, my, maybe personal preference from the players itself. You can shoot faster, but honestly, I don't think it's uh, that good RT anymore compared to these previous two. I mean, the thing about GC and max range is if you actually hit, you almost, like, you hit, if you hit engine deck... If you deck, hit, you really hit. Yeah. And you have a bigger splash, especially with 92. And 92, if he hits, well, that's, that's, that's a punch in the face. Okay, so Fiffin here blocking off the initial spot from Camille, doesn't take a hit in return, gets wheeled, immediately repairs, using that repair kit to get the wheels out. He'll have to take a passive spot here now though, and figure out something, he cannot die, that's the most important thing. Aggressive play on hill also by another Nomi EBR, taking a spot there, but it's all classic so far. The only difference is, is you, if you can see, they have a 268 on C6 next to the rail. So he is ready to shoot over the top of the hill or toward the village. That's not a position you often see a tank like that. It's just light traits on the hill, Tuna. Just speaking on third, it's such a hard shot here. I don't think that 268 is about to hit that. He actually gets spotted out as well. That's a lot of information gained here for the side of BGWP. That must have been Kamil who spotted him. That means he actually peeked out from the bush. That, that's actually a big mistake. It's not a slight detail. It also tells Tuna, okay, don't die again in for 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's playing it quite safe right now. Ooh! Oh. Do <laughs> that was, uh, I, I saw that, I saw that go straight for him. I'm like, Good. no way. Tuna, the bullet dodger. Well, he's continuously getting spotted out here. At one point, these EBRs from Nomi will bail, though, because they just can't make these trades. Nah, this is not happening. Also, this 268 uh, already used his presence here. He needs to move back. I don't know if I like what Viffen is doing here. I mean, he's not passive spotting, and BGWP knows that both the lights have to be... Okay, that's minus 214 HP. Things happen. Right. <laughs> I don't know how, but they do. Not a big presence by tanks on the middle of the map. We have a couple of heavies from BGVP because they want to control the map uh, more. And to be honest, like being shot by one GV is something that oh, oh, all the tanks can take. Commander down, repair key down. Now he's on 454. If one chieftain has a normal um, roll and not a low roll, he's dead. 56 and wield. I really don't know what this guy is doing. I, I'm it was awkward driving. surprised. I mean, Papa just pushed up for free because if the two EBRs are on the other side of the map and Viffen is doing active spotting, I can just push up for free because why on earth would I not do it? Also, as we said, the important thing is, like, if you lower the HP of enemy lights, you start dominating the map, your map rotations are way easier, and you can surprise the enemy much better. Also, you can use your EBI as, as uh, really active spotters in that part of the game, which is a huge advantage. Well, all I'm going to say right now is that so far, BGWP hasn't taken a single shot of damage. Yeah, Camilo is taking over the spotting of middle, which is highly expected. You cannot keep a guy at 50 HP to do that. He will have to s take a really more passive role, but passive role like that also can be a big problem because a single stray bullet through the bushes can take him out or a first spot that comes really aggressive. There is no way to run away. Still, a <laughs> single shell of damage done, six minutes in. Well, to be honest, like BGVP did a good work on their light, but that was mainly due to his mistake. And... Uh, they are the one working against the time, not Nomi. 
That is true. There's six minutes left, though, however. It feels like a long time, but we saw how quickly those things can change uh, in the previous game. Mm -hmm. You do have to start moving around the five to six minute mark to get yourself into position of what you want to do. You remember how Americans were called in, calling the five minute mark a golden mark, a mark where every, every American team has to start attacking. <laughs> Yeah, well, the golden mark will have to be here as well. I'm surprised that Kamala is getting away with so much driving in that little city. He's like always going more and more aggressive. It's really, really hard to hit that light consistently, though. I will say it's really hard. Especially when he's like zigzagging in between buildings the whole time. I guess the guy on 50 HP is taking the C1 bush. That we might guess on this map. And we have EBR where we had failure in a previous game on the 8th. So they want to abandon that position and keep all the possible firepower for a crossfire. There is five or six guys of, of uh, Nomi across the rail. So that side of the map is fairly well taken care of. I'm not sure what Panshrenik is doing. He's been reloaded for quite a while now. Camilio spotted out Kaiza in the middle, but he just didn't shoot at him. It's very confusing. There is seven tanks actually covering the right side of the map from Nomi. Oh, they're starting to push up 1-2 though with the 2 a You can see that there. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. I think the 1-2 is actually a better option for uh, BGBP in this kind yeah, of situation. Chieftain to 7-9 STRV. Two Chieftains, uh, one one-shot EBR and one STRV. But you have, on the other hand, three EBRs. You can use two of them, two, two of those, to actually rush through. If STRV gets spotted, you know those two Chieftains cannot hold off. The STRV is the core of that defense. If he gets taken out, they will lose his side. Well, Kamil is going to go for a run here. In between the bushes, trying to see what he can find out. We've seen him do this before. Multiple that occasions, actually. Ta -ta 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 -ta. It really depends on when he gets spotted here. Well, he gets spotted out by the Chieftain, moving through the bushes. Kamil still so far, so good, unspotted, driving in towards Nomi's base. And now he gets spotted out. He spots out the EBR in return, though. Will he die on time? Kamil picks it up. A nice kill there from that EBR. Is the STRV spotted? The STRV is spotted, but is there going to be enough damage on towards the STRV before Kamil dies? Because that's the, the position here. They're not really close up. They do not pick it up yet. There is the GW that dies. Kamil, the Polish Hussar, has fallen, but he took the RT and the EBR together with him. Also, there is a pressure now. They know where STRV is. They can even blind shoot him a bit with the RT. Rotation is coming in from the other side. You can see the guys from Nomi Corps that were on, on rail are coming back to boost the forest. I, I don't think that was entire push, actually, because BGVP kept significant amount of forces on the middle. So these guys can actually rotate, play the cooldown, and rotate on the right side whenever they want to. You can see here Papa Pavian. Ooh, I thought he was going to do a very, very, very strong play moving through those bushes. But down. The Chieftains in the middle just dying now. They're just dying. They're all dead. Nomi is actually split in half. Yep. There is nothing they can do about this anymore. That was the big weakness of this defense. Too many guys in the middle that cannot be helped. And they had a weak flank because of that EBR being only on one shot. This is the significance of playing the light tank in a proper team. You carry a huge responsibility. Very, very true. Papa still alive and so far so good for the side of BGWP showing a clean execution here against Nomi's passive play. It looked simple, but it was very well executed. Yeah, it was really good. It was really good, really calm, and uh, Nomi really looked like a bystander here. They took the default positions which we, with which you can pretty much beat most of the teams, but with those small mistakes done, uh, small, relatively, in a the start, they had no way out. So only two, le two men left standing here for the side of Nomi. Well, one, the 279 now. And as they pick it up, we'll put BGWP 3-1, picking up Prokhorovka 2-2-0. Two, two, and that is going to be worrying some for Nomi because now they need to win one of the maps 2-0 to even get back in towards this one. So there is that. It's going to be a really tough job, I would say, losing uh, early, I would say, in a match, mm. a uh, map like this. Uh, the next one would be Cliff. Taking uh, both games it's in a clip, really hard. it's really hard. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah, but it's really hard, especially against a team like this. Even if they uh, slip up one side, they will not allow themselves to do it twice. So, I would say Nomi has a sturdy performance, but look at the damage, man. Five guys with zero, three of course being EBRs, but well, six guy consume also that zero. <laughs> 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 he didn't even shoot. Uh, I guess he was AFK, man. I guess he was on the wrong side of the map. He was like, eh, 
I can't be bothered. I think he was building the road to Moscow. Yeah, but uh, Nile was uh, did like 4K in his STRV, so he was one of the guys. Uh, he was the STRV on one to line. Yeah, farming damage all the time, and overall, I don't see a big gaps <laughs> except with consume. <laughs> <laughs> They're in a BGVP, so they were pretty much all in a battle, taking out their their, their uh, targets. More or less, like when we just uh, dissect this game, mistakes on the middle by EBRs, and uh, lack of spotting later, mm. and then pretty much no idea how actually no to deal with this. There's no support for those chieftains in the middle. They just got pushed, they got pushed down, chieftains speaking high, nobody punishing chieftains, no health control. Chieftains die one by one it, by one. It looks like uh, before BG VP attacked, wild predators. Before they attacked, it looked to me like they have actually really a uh, good idea how much Nomi split, hmm. how much tanks where they have, you know, because it looked kind of uh, like a sluggish attack. But they sent Camille. They saw exactly STRV, how many guns are shooting and so on. They didn't suicide anyone. As I said, they already had advantage in lice. They could always sacrifice one for information. And the moment when they sent Papa, already everything was ready in motion to pressure more, to clear the, the rest yeah, of the, the tanks. Yeah, the SRV moved up behind. There was an yeah. 907 pushing through the three line. They pushed the guys on one, two line back so they cannot actually support the middle. Then they picked over the middle and just killed them for free. The guys that were on the other side of the rail... Not farmed by the SRV. Like, yeah, they needed to cross to help the guys on the other side. They were farmed. They were in bad positions. It was like, I would say, panic on their side all over because they were left with very little choices what to do. And to be honest, when you watch development, how it happened, they actually had none. Mm -hmm. They had no choice at that moment. That was it. Yeah. Uh, Nomi, not much they could do there with their setup. They're outplayed, outrotated. It's very, it's, it looks very simple, but it wasn't in reality. Good stuff there from BGWP. Clean. Mm. Uh, picking up Nomi. I mean, I think they got a lot of info with those lights on, on the 6 to 0 line. Kamil going aggressive, kind of recognizing how many tanks shoot at him. Then Tuna on the hill also kind of knowing how many tanks shoot at him. The 268 also being spotted there yeah. in the beginning. So they were they did, they did seem to know. It was not as blind as it looked. Yes, yes. Not at all. Even if tanks aren't spotted, I mean, if Kamil gets like seven shells landing around, it was like, I think he can count to seven. Two, I mean, it, it involves two <laughs> hands, which is, you know, it's complicated, but I, I, I think he'll manage to do it. Like he was deliberately, you could see, driving like a, like a champion on the middle of the road. Like he was literally provoking people to shoot him so he can see how many tanks are around. Like it was, there is nothing else to say about it. I mean, as you said, well, like uh, they were not in position to actually damage the STRV in the back. So when you don't have enough guns covering something like that, you know there is only one thing. They wanted to clear out a spotter and they wanted to see where is actually enemy and they had enough other EBRs to use later if they need. Well, moving on to Cliff now. Um, Clive. Clive. Uh, I'm not sure for Nomi here. I think it's going to be really hard for them to even pick up one round on Cliff, personally. But we'll see on the lineups. They chose to go with Artie. BGWP, however, did not choose already just tanks on their attack so that gives Nomi a little bit of space to think about what they want to do and, but if they give up too much of the map to BGWP we know that it's not going to end well also much faster setup on BGWP it uh, spells like complete aggression guys 277s there is no oh Luna is kind of not moving <laughs> What is going on here? There will be, be a restart. There will be a restart. That's going to be a restart, I Both think. Both teams have stopped. So that is going to be that. We shall be heading back to Garage. Um, so there is that. Um, all good. It happens. So uh, we can, however, go off the initial play already, though. You know, 277's downside, everybody else up. 277s plus the mediums. And they have only one 279. I guess he can This come. is very reminiscent of what they played before. 277s, well, I think it was the 60s down. If they go down, push from top, push from bottom, kill everybody in 1 2. If not, take 1 2 for free. Nomi will have sh some extra time to think actually how to deal with it. What would you do? Uh, I, I, I mean, the weakness of the 277s, it depends. Like, it, it, it's a gamble. Uh, you can push full down 1 2, but then you need the 277s to be close to the corner. Because if you can kill them before they come from the top, you can actually make it work. But even then, Nomi has two lights. Nomi has a Leo, Nomi has an ID. BGWP has one EBR, and everything else is actually combat tanks. There's no STRV mm. even. I don't think if you commit into a full fight, you're just going to win it because they just have more tanks that they can keep driving in and in and in and in and in. So for Nomi, 
I honestly feel like they will have to take the hill, win the hill, and play for around the for around the hill. But how do you tank, take hill if you have a ta- tanks shooting you from the side? Maybe two seven sevens. Uh, you can climb up though. You can still climb up. I mean, they have two lights. One should take it for free. They can climb a nine or seven if they want. Do those tanks shouldn't be able to really peek because of the Leo mm-hmm. that should pin them down. So if you take the hill, you can go around. They just need to be careful from a one-two push, like we saw yesterday. If, if it's a good one-two push, then uh, they need to be careful. But you can kind of prevent that by leaving a two seven nine in the base. Like if the, if you have one guy spawning and a two seven nine in the base, you can you know, can't really push one-two. When you play against fifteen tanks of a really aggressive notion, like we've seen, like uh, PGVP like to play, also like Russian teams like to play, also sometimes uh, in a league back in the day, uh, it's a huge problem actually if you don't brawl them in the middle. But if you have a setup that involves Leo and Arty, as Duck already said, it's a problem. It's a problem with DPM because once Arty fires, it's uh, on reload. Leo cannot go in the first line because it's a sniper tank, yeah. weak tank, and uh, it must be unspotted to actually. The Leo can to actually climb though. I mean, I've uh, I've considered it myself. Just climbing with the Leo, it's it's. You mean from a backup climbing spot, not from the road? Yeah, not from the, just from the back, from over the rock. But I- again, it requires a guy who is really certain he can do it. You can, if you're not certain, you can always get somebody to push you up, to be honest. All right. It, it, it takes like two tanks to push somebody up. Still, it, it, does, takes time. it, it does require some time and it does require uh, some coordination. And I don't think BGVP will be kind enough to wait for that. I mean, they ch- I remember when they tried it in the Russian show match uh, and, and there was the EBR. I think it was uh, uh, the Tornado's EBR. Mm-hmm. was sitting there and just spotting everybody that tried to climb the rock. Uh, uh, that was... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Climbing the rock always takes time, but I don't think they can go for a straight fight and expect to win it. They just don't have the lineup to win a straight fight. But being with Double Light, being with Leo, being with Arty, that is four times. Well, it's three, it's three times that they can't like extra that they have on them. So mm. I don't think they can go for a straight fight. Can they camp it out? Uh, it's going to be real difficult if they if 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 they do not take around the hill and they let BGWP have around the hill, like if they let them take it, it. <sighs> Maybe because BGWP hat doesn't have ID, so it's not that easy for them to clear the top of the hill. Yeah, but they can always do cross somebody at some point. Like it's really hard to sit there in stationary positions and expect to win. So we think it's suicidal to find in the middle. Maybe try to camp it out with holding the hill, but you need to sacrifice something in the start to get a hill. That's gonna be a bit of a problem. Mm-hmm. But uh, generally, this kind of setup might even scare Nomi a bit. Yeah, um, I I don't like it. If they would go full turtle, I think it's going to be super hard to actually get away with it. To like just sit there. At one point, they, if they cross one guy towards the hill, they, they will still push through mid, take the forward position, spot mm-hmm. the Leo. Leo can't help help cross somebody towards the hill, take around the hill. They don't even have to push one two then. Hmm. The only thing is, it, it will be it will be hard for BGWP one way or another because they don't have RD. so they might have a lot of HP. But at one point, they will actually have to commit. Like they, they, well, they can't seen, effectively seen kill low HP. Davy, Davy was yesterday playing like with, were they playing without RT? No, they had. I, I they know had on Prokoroka, but on Cliff I can't remember. They, 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 they had they had Nix Nix played RT from North. Huh, so he, they had RT there, but still it was really long game as far as I remember. Mm-hmm. Like and they, they lost it. Yeah, they lost at the end. So there is a way. I'd say BGWP's execution should be slightly better than Davies, though. You think so? Yeah, my, my, if you're listening, I'm sorry, Dave. Maybe RNG is better in that side. Maybe. Paid RNG? Who knows? Um, I don't think they can switch lineups now, so we should see the exact no, same no, no, thing. No, you, you can't. You can't. Yeah. I just, just, you know, if I say don't think, then I cover myself in case they can. It's like thinking ahead. No, no, they should not be allowed to. Like, once you start as far as I know, by every rule we, yeah, we cast it before, you cannot switch tanks. Like, it would be a gimmick then. I am very curious to see what Nomi goes for here, though, in their, in their defensive round on a cliff. There's a lot of chieftains, though, and you really want to use those chieftains in a good way. And it's hard to put those chieftains in good positions. Yeah, EBR and T100 on Nomi's side. Interesting to pick a T100, to be honest. And... Uh, Camille has a single EBR on BGVP side. As we said already, they have one, two, three, four, five, two, seven, seven. No, four, two, seven, sevens, and one, two, seven, nine. And only one chief they didn't play by Shakish. So, looks like exactly the same start here. No surprises in that. Obviously, mm-hmm. with the delay, they don't actually have time to see what each other did. Um, so, two, seven, sevens going down with two, seven, nine. The rest of the team going up. 
Uh, Vivian here is going to be in 1-2. He's going to see the majority of the team. He will not see the 277s, though. And now it depends on, does Nomi actually realize and recognize that the 277s are not there? They could have seen only lineups. There was no spotting in a previous game. Ooh, Vifi needs to be very careful here. Two seven sevens are coming below him. He's going to have to bail out of this area very, very quickly. So far, so good. Nile takes a lot of damage there. Does give a big one in return. Camilio actually takes a big shot as well in his 260. Yeah, he was the only one spotting these guys because uh, Skynet was pushed back completely by uh, Nile and uh, 907 behind the uh, uh, F1. Ooh, the big counter push coming out to IMOP. Nerf me taking a lot of damage already in his 907. Nomi is pushing across straight into them and this is hold down to 7 7s i don't know if this is going to work out for them they have to actually commit into these positions oscar coming in coming in strong now luna going back around the corner they actually have to push this they have five times here but it's five going to be actually enough as fame is rotating across as well vala is going to be the first one that gets focused out there's still a 907 behind the rock creating crossfire is this the move that is too aggressive from nomi i don't think this is going to work this is not going to work for sure because they are taking damage from the tanks while crossing they're taking damage while they are advancing and the worst of all even this execution being all over the place is not working. You can see Nile already dropped that back down. He was shooting them in the back all the time, covered by 907 behind the F1. That 907 had to run away, but it doesn't really matter because Cavalry from the middle is already back in a group. Yeah, they're down like 5,000 HP at this point. This counter push, it costed them so much to actually get back in towards it. And they didn't even manage to kill everybody in it. Nile's still alive. Then they tried to kill the 907 behind the rock and they did manage to do that at some point. But in return, they lost the middle. They lost one too. It wasn't I, I, so hard to actually effectively pull that off. They took so much damage from the crossing. And then BGWP just crossing with their own tanks as well, reinforcing. And the 279 still behind, killing all those tanks. Yeah, not happening. Well, Nomi did, uh, in a start, take the hill and everything, but BGVP did everything in his last game, as we commented. Uh, they just pushed on those two sides, created a crossfire, created a beneficial circumstances, circumstances for themselves. And I think Nomi did the worst play against I don't think that. those 277s stopped either. They just went straight to 1-2. It's kind of a, a little bit of a gamble. Mm -hmm. I don't think they stopped because if Nomi went full 1-2, which is it's maybe hard from their side with their lineup, but if it happens, they would have got them for free. Yeah, but that would be a Yolo Swag gamble. And yeah. also, also uh, there was a gap between. Uh, they sent one 277 first. He went, he cleared the spotter. Mm. And then other guys c came through when they were not spotted. They were just spotted by a 260 in a side. So also, while that was going on, the middle was already spotted by EBR. So nice. it was not really totally blind from their side. Nice damage there, though, from Papa and a 279 holding the bottom side 9 for 9. Mm -hmm. Good shooting. The Papa was a rolling stone. Papa is a really good player, so there is nothing about that to say. Stefan also coming yesterday from his soccer game. <laughs> Already in the top I of the I will say I think Stefan is by far their best player. Could be, man, considering how much time he actually plays in a game, which is not much lately. Like, it's amazing yeah, that for he how can little, just sit down for a computer for how, and do this. For how little he played, I think he's miles ahead of anybody else. Well, always was a talented kid, so there is nothing more to say about that. Well, this is a dire situation for Nomi now. It we is. are talking about this is a match point for BGVP, 4-1. to one. And uh, the worst of all, now they will actually have to attack. <laughs> Look, Majo, uh, three rounds in a row, easy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? Uh, win Cliff and then Red Trier. Just gonna, just gonna easy, easy, easy clap it to the tiebreaker. From and then, zero to then hero, we've seen it happen <laughs> so many times before. It works every time like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely can see this happening. I mean, I, I'd like to believe, but, you know, if realistically, happens, the odds are like 10%. If that happens, like, Shokish will not eat his mouse. He's gonna eat a chair, uh, keyboard and everything, you know, like, he's gonna... Rinse it slowly and cook everything together. I think, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think this will be happening. But maybe they will be able to take at least one more round some now or something like that. But it's really hard because now BGVP can, can choose what to do. They are defending, so they can play aggressive again, or they can just like sit it out and wait and see what uh, what Nomi actually does. Yeah, uh, they are not forced into aggression. However, playing from south side and letting the enemy have the whole map, no personal favorite towards it i don't think they should we saw our like it, were their defensive style worked on proco but even then they lost ebrs for free yeah um and the other round on live oaks it totally didn't work so i'd rather see them play aggressive i think they have more success with it honestly when i play when i saw nomi play a second round on live oaks it was really good man 
like tactically decision making and everything it was good they made no mistakes there but that was the only one round they actually played that well well they're gonna and this is best of nine and we said that before like it's really hard to beat a team on high level in best of nine I'll just quickly contact Maldi for some strats you know you never know easy <laughs> they'll bond together as a big group of friends we'll see uh i'd like to take them at least one more run at the very least as well make it interesting um but it is still cliff and i think it's one of the hardest maps if to actually it's all do it about on. strats man like uh, everyone would be able to win with 15 tanks like uh, bgvp now but that's actually not in that easy t fit it, it requires like timings knowing what to do with them and actually panning the shells on time and things like that very heavy lineup from nomi there's only two nine and sevens super heavy lineup but like a crystal ball bgvp picks two artists against that yeah uh, this is the only scenario where you actually want to have two artists to fight against a lot of heavies man nomi needs to keep up the aggression they cannot just um they have to play aggressive they have no choice they have to actually push nine heavies okay they like the 260s were driving up and then they were driving down so confusing conflicting stories there ebr going towards the one two spotting it out Camille might actually get the hill for free because he was super quick. Oh, la, la. Oh, he had mind. it for free before this. He had it, not anymore. Papa gets spotted out, so I think he's going to want to do the climb and the bat. But in return, the EBR from Nomi drops to 500 HP. Yeah, he was shot uh, from the other side. Also, there was a bunch of guys ready from the uh, BGVP base to snipe over the hill and everything but they had no reason to papa is now climbing guys this is what Daki was talking about a couple of times if you remember not an easy feat uh because you can slide down easily me i would not even bother trying but <laughs> you know i don't know what fifan just did or why he did it but like, he managed to trade 800 hp for driving a circle around the lighthouse well there is a song about it, it says like oops i did it again so Maybe he likes to play on lower HP. Well, here comes game. Nomi, though, <laughs> pushing straight down the center of the map. Minus Sky already in his 907. Ronan here taking a lot of damage as well. Papa, however, in his bachelor will be forced to drop off. So they have taken center of the map, consumes in the base in that 279. Um, Shockish in the IS-7 has taken some damage as well. That's a big RD shell coming out. But Nomi now coming around the hill as well. There's a lot of aggression here, but they are down on HP. They kill Papa off. So tanks and gun in the game are important. Shockish now forced to run as well. This is not the worst movement here that I've seen from Nomi even down on HP yeah there's still 3000 down on HP and let's not forget that double GC double GC means all those tanks we can see along the water are really vulnerable because they will not be able to run away that easy and if they don't start taking out the tanks of BGVP much faster now they will take the brunt of the damage now there needs to be a follow-up here for Nomi what is their next move that comes out because they have to find an opening they are down 4,000 HP, they do spot out those 277 and Chieftain there, and they are starting to rotate back around, back towards the middle. They need to keep the HP on these guys here, though. Yeah, but they, they, if they want to win from this side, they need Vale and Dupre dead. But it's not happening, because there is too many guys covering. Also, we can see that BGVP is not playing passively. All those mediums that were waiting in the base are doing a counter push on 1-2 line, because they do know how to do their finger counting, and they saw that most of the tanks from Nomi are around the lighthouse. So they are taking a counter attack here. They want to take the crossfire tanks that are in front of them for free, and they, I think, will manage to do it. Yeah, they're pushing down 1-2 now. They already pick up Ron, and Maniac is going to be the next one. Now, the Bacha not in the fight just yet. They came back towards 1-2, but is it the right decision i do not think so the bacha now trying to uh, farm silence but he is angling very well off of that rock he's not getting much in here nomi the their hp cap has closed to around 2000 but they somehow need to do something here in one two they've lost a lot of times here there comes a 260 as well can they make this work the ebr is still alive silence takes another one now bgwp retaken in towards the middle oscar here is going to try and pick up silence is it enough Good play by Silence here, like really, really is surviving for a long time around one rock, buying quite some time for his team. The rest of the BGVP is now springing into the action, counter-attacking the other sides, and they are pressuring all over the map now. The difference is 4000 HP, but more importantly, there is no pressure anymore to their guys on the other side of the map. This is the whole reason behind this kind of attack. Even if this gets cleared out, and now, as example, Consume dies, which I don't think will happen, uh, it will, it's going to be worthwhile.
Yeah, it does look like this is done and dusted. Has a 5,000 HP lead, a tank lead as well. And Nomi on their attacking round. A good one to repush there coming out from BGWP. Taking that well back. Well timed, well timed. Yeah, they tried to take it back. Well, Nomi tried to take it back after, but it was a little too late then. And these Chieftains here on 9-0 just locked for the whole game. Not much they can do about it. Yeah, there is, a, there is a problem when you commit so many tanks around this side of the map because this map may be small, but not that small that you can just bypass the lighthouse and just go wherever you want. Yeah, Chieftain is good, but it doesn't have like a turbo engine just yet. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> yeah. Maybe in Star, Star Trek version of the Maybe, tanks. maybe. We'll see about that though. But well played here to BGWP. Picking it up, picking it up in fashion. That double already doing work. Nomi trying, pushing down the middle. Yes, they lost a lot for that as well. Though. And then leaving one to open and BGWP taking the good reaction, taking that back. And after that, it really just spiraled out of control. This is what I was thinking. Like when they were faced with 15 tanks, can BG, I mean, can Nomi maybe try some similar camp like this? along the river line because there is no arty to dig them out you know and to keep a couple of tanks like a trap and some spotters but they chose to go to full commitment and we would never know what would happen shoulda woulda coulda that will remain unknown yeah the only thing that matters is that bgwp picks it up five to one losing only a single round on live oaks so good stuff from them they're moving on towards the finals already so i mean not not unexpected not unexpected, but everyone was dubious because, as we said already, they don't have two core leaders with them at the moment. They, yeah, I think as we missing said, per rules, guys, who didn't play campaign, he cannot participate in this tournament. So that's it. I think missing insane is really, really, really important. Because like, if you watch their stuff, he is the main guy right now. So missing him is the most important thing. He's the Krang from Ninja Turtles' brain. But he and my story for shot calls, I would say equally important. But still, now today they have uh, Stefan and they have Shokish, which they didn't have yesterday. And those are the guys with huge experience in both Gold League and in this clan scene. So I think it really works much better. Uh, to yesterday we saw so many gaps when they were playing and some uh, late mm -hmm. movements and things like that. It's, it's not like that now. Yeah, it, it like beside that second game on Live Oaks, where they were pretty much caught pants down by mm -hmm. Nomi. Uh, Everything else went really smooth. Yeah, Nomi had that one good game that kind of inspired uh, us a little bit, at least me, hoping that they would be able to keep on delivering mm -hmm. a similar performance. But after that, just uh, not experienced enough. Yeah, but we, we really can just congratulate Nomi uh, so far uh, because they're the only clan here who made it with two, two teams. teams. That is very true. Yeah, so they made it to two teams. One fell, fell out in quarterfinals and one fell out in semifinals. But to have two teams in best of eight, hey, man, <laughs> it's really good. It is It is indeed very, very, very good. And not forgetting that this Nomi team that just got beaten by BGWP also pushed them to the brink in group stages. Yeah. So they were the team. They were 1-0 up in Himmelsdorf and BGWP had to pull it all out. Because if they lost them, if they lost one more round there, they would have been out in groups. Mm -hmm. So this Nomi team made it through that group, the the group of death, pretty much, with Invil in it as well. So impressive stuff, nonetheless. Yeah, the next match, guys, you will be able to see will be CSA and Devi, I believe. The highlight so far? Highlight of a day and uh, really... I mean, outside of the finals, but yeah. Uh, really, I'm... Looking forward to see that match. CSA, really old school clan, good play showed yesterday, really close match mm -hmm. against MVPS. Davy was shaky and I expect more from them today when they cool off and they think about the things like the mistakes they made and so on. So I actually expect a big battle next. Yeah, I hope it's going to be a close game. Then neither of the two can, can blame me. Um, it's not all about <laughs> you, bro. There is something about them. I just want to, you know, I don't, I don't want Saka to hate me. He's such a lovable person. Saka is a lovable person, man. He is very lovable, unless he's leading, actually. I, I thought he's your burrito forever. But never mind, guys, social media is ready. We have a lovely duo there waiting. So let's go to them. Hello, guys. Hello. So we are back? Way back. And <laughs> I, I think uh, I, I think we bet we all know that the lovable duo is definitely the casters. There. Oh, yeah. They're the, doing the, a great job, the, actually. Great job, especially in this heat. I mean, it, it's fairly warm in this office. Uh, yes, we are suffering right now. Yes. During the breaks, all you can see in the corner is this. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all you can see is just double-handed fanning going on. Yes. So, what have you got to share with the uh, the wonderful people still sticking around? Just reminders about the giveaway. So, I saw that we share already two codes 
and a lot of people redeem this code. So make sure to stay tuned because we are going to show even more codes. These codes include uh, inscriptions and also reserves. By collecting five, you're going to get a garage slot and a style. And by collecting 10 of those, including the ones from yesterday, you are going to get a premium day. So Everything needs premium days. There's no, no yes. such thing as too much premium day. Yeah, why not? And also we have still the Shield Blast campaign going on. You only have to sign up to the campaign, follow our social media channels, and refer friends to maybe win the custom APC up to the value of... 2,000 great British pounds. You should be, you know, <laughs> <laughs> trying comfortable to remember saying yeah, that, right? Yeah, I, I should be, but is that moment was like euros. Am I in euros now or pounds still? It's it's yeah. still getting it's too confusing. used to. Yes. Oh. yes. Look at the PC. So amazing. It, it's a very nice PC. We I all want know. to get it. We, we, we do have four clips that say that Ikibu should win this PC. So Okay. So uh, uh, let's <laughs> see. Let's see, because I don't think you're going to win. Uh, I don't really think so. I think that's unfair. It's clearly rigged. Yeah. If I don't like win it, it's rigged. What do you think is a war gaming employee wins this PC? Like, come on. I think everyone would be really happy. Um, yeah, I'm sure when the chat comes, uh, we ask them, do you think Ikibu should uh, win the PC? Everyone would be just spamming yes. Give Ikibu the PC. I think probably, that's what we can probably. expect. Probably. <laughs> Let's ask the question and I want to see the answers. Okay. Something else that we have, we didn't have yesterday, is a little bit of fuel. I know everybody's asking for that. Yes. We're going to ask a question later on. Yep. And the winner, we have to decide how many winners we're, we're going to pick, but you are going to get fuel. Which will be cool. So yes. we just need your in-game name once uh, we've chosen the winner. Uh, make sure <laughs> make sure you give it to us because without it, there's no way for us to give you the fuel. So if we choose you as the winner for the correct answer, please make sure you message us with your in-game name to be able to pick up that fuel. Because uh, yes. we won't be able to give it away in a code. It has to get your in-game name, go through everything and accredit to your account directly. And something very important, this is only for EU servers, so... Yes, yeah. yes, EU only because it's an yep. EU tournament in the EU office for EU players, essentially. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yes. So I heard that you have a clip that you want to show. So what is this about? I have a bunch of clips that um, I, I went through yesterday for Twitch and I saw all the, the top clips that come from everybody. I will say that when you're making clips of the stream, if you could please name your clips uh, specifically, I think out of the 100 clips I saw, only two had names. Everything else was Clan Wars, uh, Clan Rivals Tournament Day 1. And you're having to go through each one to see what they actually are about. So I picked some of them. Some of them I already know. And also make sure that you clip the really interesting moments. I was shocked to see that we didn't have any clips of a 907 piling on top of a 279. Not one. And we had no clips of DV pouncing on Nomi from uh, on cliffs dropping up above when we had uh, two chieftains dropping on top on top of a 279. So no clips for this either, which I was... So maybe we should encourage them to share clips. Yes. Maybe uh, with the possibility of getting some fuel. I'm I don't know. I'm this thinking is just fuel an for idea. clips. Fuel for clips. We'll see how that works. So make sure you name your clips. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, if you, I'm sure you'll find out in the chat. You have a little button on the top bottom right hand side of the window. You just click on it. It says clip and then it'll take you to a screen. You can clip for a certain period of time that you've watched. Name it if you feel that it's a highlight or a moment that's really interesting. If it's featured on one of the later segments, I'm sure we can work out and giving you some fuel or something else. Yes. So that'd be really cool. And also, everybody knows, I hope, that this is Twitch feature, right? Yes. So if you are watching on YouTube, Make sure to come and yes. follow us on Twitch yes, as um, well. Unfortunately, we have no yeah. clipping feature on YouTube. Yeah. Otherwise, we would do it for that, but there's no specific functionality. So not that we're ignoring or neglecting you YouTube people. Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to answer as much in chat there, but the clipping feature is all we have for Twitch and not for YouTube, unfortunately. So we're just going to show you some of the clips that we have now uh, playing through our wonderful video team. Uh, so I've maximized it and we're ready to go. So we've got no sound on these, but um, I'm just going to quickly go through some of the most interesting clips. So on this one, you're going to see basically a lot of EBRs uh, having a lot of fun. Uh, this is the one where I was expecting to you spin me right round song. Uh, going on this, <laughs> some minor bullying with the bumper carts. And this was where MVPS uh, kind of just uh, CSA completely dogpiled on top of the poor MVPS uh, players, even the teammates nudging one another and essentially it just turned into a giant ramming party towards the end which I thought was pretty cool and then this awesome awesome moment that came in 
from MVPS with a really fantastic shot, neutralizing the wheeled vehicle going on and the cameraman, the, our observer cameraman having a field day with that moment there with the spinning camera. That was, uh, I think this was our most viewed clip from Twitch yesterday. Wow. Okay. Uh, so they're, they're clearly happy about that. Everybody loves Artie, of course. Oh, so yes. So everybody loves it. And Will Vehicles as well. Uh, this moment was the probably the closest out of all of yesterday, where it was down to the very last few seconds where Artillery were deciding the game. And all that Great Again had to do was hide and hold out uh, for the capture timer to kind of wear out as long as... Because they couldn't capture the, and they couldn't kill them all. So all he had to do was just stay alive, and it, it came down to the very last second with the reload which uh, this was another really close and high view clip. This, again, slightly embarrassing for the uh, for the Nomi guys. Um, oh, unfortunately. you should know about this. Uh, sorry, not Nomi, uh, for uh, Believe. Um, poor guy, twice in one game, uh, but two <laughs> different people ending up on their sides. And uh, yes, I do know this quite regularly. You know My favorite pastime. Um, <laughs> so we, we have Believe and Nomi in that game, uh, and that was the one where we ended up with two tanks on their sides, unfortunately. Uh, great fun for us, but maybe not so for those guys. Uh, and then here we have a great moment where you, you can kind of see how that person on their side ended it up. And it was basically just a free farm. So the original clip ended up with two people on the side. This was the one. And this is the place in the other spot. So the clip's just reproducing itself. The That spot there is where later on we had chieftain tanks from one side just jumping on top of them. Uh, and they just drove off as quickly as they could. Here, as you can see, uh, really great blind firing. This was one of Daki's favorite moments where previously we saw a, a match where the blind firing stopped because they assumed there wasn't a tank there. They made sure not to make the same mistake this time and uh, absolutely punished and just buried the tank out of those bushes. Uh, and later on you saw in the game where that allowed Nomi then to be able to push up that flank and be able to rotate and it actually helped them win this map being able to take that vehicle out of that map uh, and in that really important position which was really cool. Uh, so that's where blind firing that bush is really important. And of course, here's Ichidna's favorite pastime. Uh, the thing that sh uh, Ichidna is very famous for doing during all streams, especially when I'm on there for some reason. I'm not sure. I call this abuse and bullying. Um, <laughs> but yeah, confetti everywhere. And then this was another really, really awesome moment yesterday with DV uh, absolutely bringing in an amazing and punishing crossfire and Nomi. Uh, on uh, on Himmelsdorf, Nomi trying to push around. They thought they had the advantage when uh, DV went down the low side, not getting spotted. And Nomi just pushed right into a huge trap. Uh, and the game was over from this very early moment. Uh, just Nomi were unable to recover from this. Uh, and also, I do, I do love the title of this clip, which is called Daki the Rap God. Because for this particular moment, Daki is probably speaking the quickest I've ever heard him speak, and so excitedly. So I love the title of this clip. It was fantastic. Uh, and this was the moment where I said to Daki, do you expect any memeing moments? And he went, no, no, DV are way too serious for these types of games. They'll never do anything like this. And literally, as he finished this, you can see them tracking each other and uh, doing some b little bits of team damage, which was perfect. Perfect time. I was like, do you expect to see any uh, silly antics going on on the streams? So th there was the last clip from day one on uh, on all the Twitch. Uh, so that was pretty cool. So we, we're hoping to see more. We want to see you rename these into something that's easy to find so we can feature them, you know, big key highlights, really fun moments, meme moments if you can find them, awesome shots, really key integral parts. Uh, it's really easy to tell because the really exciting parts and the good parts are when Daki gets really excited and Mojo kind of gets a little bit excited as well. And yeah, it, if we can hear it, you can hear it. So just watch out for those moments, listen out, and then you'll be able to grab them. And as uh, mentioned before, you may get some fuel for may that. May get some fuel. So If yeah. they're good and they're featured, you may get some fuel. Uh, we are basically going to be picking the ones that have got fit, uh, quite a lot of views like on there. I think Sael is going to help picking the winners. I hope she's listening to me right now and she's I th going I to think pick so. the winners. Uh, she's moderating the YouTube and Twitch channel, so I think she's having some fun right there. But yeah. Yep, and I'm sure the video team guys who are also absolutely toasty in that corner are probably going to be going, no, th this is rubbish, let's pick this one instead. Yeah. Um, so that'd be really cool. So tell me, how was your experience yesterday, well cast? Because it was the first time for you doing these and... I haven't followed enough of the casting moments on that side to be able to really kind of pick up and follow the names very well. I'm still used to just saying the names of tanks on parts of the map and kind of uh, rotating that way. But of course, the problem you have with tournament games is that you have a lot of the same tank on the map. So just saying, yeah. the 50B in the corner and there's five of them there. And you're like, <laughs> which one? Which corner? Um, so it, it, it can be a little bit challenged with that. Uh, 
I, I, I mostly focus on ans uh, asking questions that I know the community for these moments when I used to moderate the chat. They're always curious why tanks do certain things, why, tank why teams behave in certain ways. Uh, and having known that, interacting with the community as well, that's why I focused on using Daki's amazing team and tactical knowledge and experience casting these tournaments to kind of help explain what's going on uh, for people and why they're seeing what they're seeing. Uh, and like the, one of those moments where the when we saw yesterday the 907 jumping on a 279, it was purely because the 907 had bounced too many rounds and they only had 30 seconds to be able to finish out the, the round to be able to destroy his 279 to win. And he knew he couldn't reload in time to destroy him, so all he did was drove onto a rock and then try and pile on him so that when he died, he would still then do damage to the 279 to try and kill it just in time for the, uh, the timer to go down. It didn't work, but it was an epic effort nonetheless okay. and to try and like, use still using his dead tank to kind of try and secure the victory which was pretty nifty so being able to explain that to people who maybe not know these tricks is, is really really cool and uh, yeah. so i know you're eager to try out ca casting at some point the, <laughs> yes <laughs> everybody in the chats no. everybody in the chats asking when's it you going to be casting no. Uh, so a couple of people were asking me, would you like to do it again in the chat? And I'm like, no, no, Ichidna definitely wants what? to have a go next no. time. No, I don't think I will ever get to that level of, you uh, know. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping eventually I can get better at it and then we'll see how that goes. But uh, I, I know many people here and I w I'm hoping to see in chat all the love for Daki and Mojo in the chat. I know many people were really happy to see the duo back. Yes, it's so nice, and, and really they are doing a great job. I really love every time that they start screaming, especially Daki, because he gets super crazy about it. Um, it's so nice. Yes, it's it's awesome. Now I believe we're going to be switching over to the casters soon, but before but then, yet. before then, we have the first chance to win some fuel, maybe. Yes. Maybe. So I. I don't want to ask the question so fast because I know that the chat is going to go crazy. Yes. Um, but I guess I am going to ask a question. So um, we don't know how many winners we are going to pick for this one, but probably you will know during the next break. So the question is, what is Ikabu's in-game superpower? OK, so, so what is uh, the superpower that I apparently I have when I play games. He Anybody does that this watched almost every time that he's playing. I think I've managed to do one stream where I didn't flip on my side and it came close. I managed to use a tank corpse to not flip me over. I, I think that's the uh -huh. only time I haven't done Otherwise, every time I've done this, which was uh, interesting. <laughs> and you already answered the question. <laughs> well, yeah. So we are ready to go to the casters. So I guess we will ask another and, uh, question we'll later. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to pass you over to seeing if everybody's paying attention. We're going to pass you over to the wonderful and great looking duo of Mojo and Daki peering over there. We're yeah. just going to watch them from afar, seeing that they do an awesome job. So good luck. See you later. Don't forget to clip. Thank you very much, Iki. I mean, usually when you get asked a question, you don't want to reveal the answer in your second sentence, but you know. Hey, he's he helping the people out. Anyways, just give your best shot there. It shouldn't be that hard. Now this brings us back to our second semi-final match, CSA versus DV, man. Yeah, uh, it's... it's uh, Delicious Vicious. Delicious Vicious. It's an interesting match. Uh, personally, you know, I don't really <laughs> want to pick a team that I want to see to win. Uh, stick to your own crowd, man, and now I'm going to stick to CSA. Uh, we yeah, have a line. I, 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 I mean, I have to stick to DV, right? It'd be <laughs> uh, pretty, uh, how to say, uncool. If I didn't do that, uh, this has to be a close match. Honestly, this has to be a close match. The bands, Mojo, Proko, and Ensk. Yeah, after yesterday's performance on Proko by Devi, I'm yeah. really not surprised by that, yeah, to be honest. I don't know if they're going to play it again, ever. And I don't know, like CSA, maybe they are thinking, maybe we are just lacking 279s <laughs> too much. So like, let's the thing is as well, though, they that. lost in groups to Devi on Ensk. They did? Yeah. All right, then. So maybe that plays in towards it. But now getting into our first game already between CSA and DV. Anything noticeable here in the lineups, Mojo? Six chieftains here coming in by CSA. Not so much by Devi. Batch at each, but why are they even using that E3? I guess for the street. Yeah, the E3 could go eight line, I guess. Yeah, there is nothing else to do from this side with it. I mean, the E3, uh, it works well on eight line. And it also kind of works well on, uh, believe it or not, they're not even going, it's going towards 1-2. Okay. I was going to say it works well on the D7 window. Because mm -hmm. you can actually pen 
pretty much anything they throw against you. I just kind of don't like the E3 in the late kind of the, in the game. If the game gets prolonged and you have to rotate left and right, that tank is really uh, problematic then. But all right, if you want to hold off to the position, E3 is a usually big tell, but they're using it in a different way. They're completely going toward the one two line with it to actually cover the 279 on a window. So a bit more passive approach by Devi here, sending only a couple of tanks to the hill, probing the situation. Barchat coming in first. So far, Shifter didn't play too aggressive. They're gonna go for an exchange here. There is no Ooh. shell fire by Sigo. That's actually a big I mistake. Think, I think he, he missed. He can get clipped now. Sigo in trouble here. Shifter getting the better. I think he even missed Mojo because he only has two shells left now. So I, think I have no idea what he did with that shell, but because I didn't even see where it went. Yeah, I mean the initial trade definitely going in favor of Shifter here. However, they can move under the hill unspotted, and this is gonna have to be a big. Ooh, so Sigo massive mistakes made. Mistakes we made. So CSA losing already a budget in a proxy position. Shifter staying with more than half HP. The rest of the guys, he didn't even manage to actually spot how many tanks went around. That's the big problem for CSA now. They were spotted by Shifter, but they do not know that there is only three guys behind Shifter. Now, and two, two chieftains we in see a one two-line push coming out here, though, for the side of DV 279, double 277, pushing forward. This is aggressive, and this could actually work with the current CSA positions, but CSA in return has taken the engagement on the hill. Sakalita coming in first with that 279, pushing straight on towards Shifter. He's dropped towards a one-shot already. He goes down to Fito in return to get Shifter, and there's only three tanks remaining here for DV on the top of the hill. Two more behind, and they should be able to take this out quickly, but they're losing so much for this. Mud goes down as well. Skurga is now getting focused out for the side of the AV with Delphin from behind and there's a lot of damage coming out. Will that goes down as well. That's an Amorak on the backside here. CSA losing so much for this push and Ghost, he's making a run for it. Ghost needs to run because there is no way he can survive. Delphin will finish off Joseph Conrad here. Ghost will run away behind the enemy lines, deep behind enemy lines. But I don't think this was a really good trade for CSA, to be honest. After losing that Bachak, trading 279 for only one Bachak, getting really shot badly by Devi guys and still they didn't even scratch the cheap and Zeno hold down on zero line. Yeah, Kvito now picking up Lukin as well, and Ghost is coming back. He fancies this one on one here against Delphin. He'll be able to clip him out, but that will probably not be enough to kill him unless he gets some major rolls. I don't think that's going to happen. Killer here taking the hold down in the meantime, and CSA down 5,000 HP against DV. That push on the hill module, it seemed out of sync, not combined. Ghost actually picks up Delphin, which is huge. And now Kvito coming in back in with Buzuk, and even with CSA having more tanks on the hill, they've managed to lose it. I don't think CSA even realized how many tanks were there. They, I think they thought there is maybe one or two less than there were. After that, it was pretty much GG. 5,000 HP, 6,000 HP, and advancing further in a distance. Divi doing really strong first round here on the opening. Yeah, Divi coming out strong on this uh, on this Himmelsdorf start here. And Danny is on fire as well. He'll be picked up by Killer in about two seconds. And a strong start here by Divi. Sigo there making a little bit of a mistake. Could have costed them. He didn't spot. He wasn't able to spot anything, as you said. And they maybe underestimated, actually, the amount of tanks that were on the hill. Yeah, it was like a really bad opening for CSA. Nothing to be done about that now. The round is done and dusty, did you say. Silka and a couple of more guys are alive, but uh, it's just irrelevant. This is a mop-up operation now. Svitman now, the last man standing this 27, and he took so much damage for that push. Saka, I mean, he pushed on towards Shifter, and Shifter was able to do, I think, three or four shells even on towards that 279 when he the pushed around. The entire 279 was destroyed by the time that uh, actually Bacha died. I mean, I don't know if it matters, but Will got Amorak. I, I don't know how much HP he had at the point he was Amorak, but they already lost more than they should for this hill commit. No, 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 like uh, after they lost uh, Bachat, that was a free. They lost it for 800 HP on uh, Shifter. Mm. Then uh, they didn't even spot what actually was there. The push around the hill, they had no choice but to ro go all from it upper side. It wasn't because very there was a, a big, big uh, number of tanks from mm -hmm. David down. So if people are wondering why look didn't they do a split, look they look would at those get those chieftains. Sniped. I think Fito and Buzuk, Fito and Buzuk were the two guys that were playing on 5.1k, 4.1k. Uh, weren't they both the guys that were on zero line? I'm pretty sure they were the guys that these They must have been because like you can't do this amount of damage on any yep. pa other part of the map. Yeah, Shifter getting 2k damage there. Uh, good stuff. Um, where, where's Will? I, wanna know, I just want to know how much he got Amorak. Seagull bounced on towards Will. That's amazing. Uh, Seagull bounced on towards the Shifter. I didn't even see the sh good shell. Pl how good did, play how by shell. Ghost, though. I mean, we didn't mention but him running away. And then instead of going down, because there was a 50B waiting down, which yeah. he didn't know, 
obviously, but he came I, back up. I think up. he was guessing that. Yeah, I think he was guessing. I think he was guessing that. Yeah. Also, like he was guessing, okay, they if they push me, they're gonna mm-hmm. get shot back in uh, by chieftains, and those chieftains can't really chase him that far. Like one can, otherwise it's a trade. And any trade for him, another clip, like it's an extra life. If he does that clip. Fine, kill yeah, me. He went back up and managed to get a full clip out again. That's two clips. Yeah, That's who cares? Like after that, he can die. He already done his uh, deed. Yeah. Like he's he's fine. So good play there. Uh, I just, it's just so really weird when you see that the game opens with a small mistake and spirals, and spirals yeah. so, so badly quickly. after that. Just like one little detail, like they I don't to know, push like one rock down the hill, you know, because when the snow goes. <laughs> they saw that there's too many tanks on one two to really deal with. If DV pressed the advantage on one two, mm-hmm. they would be able to take it. Yeah, it, it looked like Devi actually had advantage in most of the positions. Yeah, E3 didn't do anything, by the way, it's 500. Yeah, so in all honesty, here for CSA to be victorious in g- this game, they will have to have far greater presence on the top of the hill and uh, much more entrenched tanks down like four or five but differently displaced so they can let the enemy come closer and then survive longer and just wipe out the hill fast uh, if they're pushing hill i mean they did have some guys going from the left side which i think is a mistake in that scenario when the dv tanks are on one two like you said shooting yeah but they all went from up um I, if they're pushing from up, it didn't even feel like they were super together because you need to push those guys on the corner but you also immediately need to push those chieftains that are behind so they can't just farm. Yeah, that's why I said, like, it looked like they were actually lacking tanks. They needed to clear the 50 Bs. They couldn't afford anyone to go toward the chieftains. Even one 50 B managed to run away because they couldn't push from the lower side of the castle because, as you said, DV was present on the rail. They would have a crossfire. They would annihilate them there. So overall, it looked like they were lacking at least two tanks on a hill. At least. But, you know easy to be a general after so this is how it happened here they would probably not even push if they knew exactly what the situation was yeah i mean you could call us armchair generals but we don't really have uh you know how i like you, this how, kind of chairs. how do you call that in english hmm? the the way you rest your arm armrest jesus <laughs> oh my god dude. Oh, this, uh. it's good man you answered your own questions oh. so it's cool yeah, yeah, it reminds me of once upon a time when somebody asked what is the thing that you uh you you you, you bench on it's like <coughs> it's, it's, it's a bench. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, oh, well. Well, second round of Himmelsdorf now coming in uh, between CSA and Davy. We, 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 we expect CSA to pick up at least one round here on Himmelsdorf. Let's be real about it. Yeah, but this was, uh, this was their defense. So now they have to attack. Of course, we said already, Himmel is by far the most balanced map. It really doesn't matter from which side you are, but at least you can have the comfort of not having to attack. I think there's a slight favoritism towards playing from the south for a lot of teams Mm -hmm. because they feel like they have um, greater hill control. Yeah, it's easier access a bit. Like, uh, to be honest, this patch kind of uh, a little balanced it out with adding that little depression Mm -hmm. on a red line. But still, you can get uh, unspotted tanks. So we see a lot of uh, tanks going up here for DV. One, two, three, five guys down for DV. Uh, five guys down for CSA. Actually, it's a if it is a hill fight, it's an even one. And in general, if the north is pushing the south on the hill, the south prevails. Yeah, we just need to. <laughs> <laughs> we just need them like a, a southern flag making here. Let's see about that. Uh, they also have a 50B down and 279 on a rail from DV. So these guys can actually come really quick. To sniping position together with this 277 so in that regard they actually might be in uh, advantage but Sigo now much more secure taking over the position there not giving room to shifter again shifter to, the mighty budget armor yeah he had the gun on the bat that's the that's the downside of heat between these bats mm-hmm. like uh, neither of the two will get a lot of info though from this neither of the two really seeing how many tanks are up well that's good for csa if they want to play aggressive Ooh. It's gonna be a big, big fight here. There's so many chieftains though for C for uh, not for CSA but for DV here in that whole. Bachelor from uh, Devi left, so shifter left, and he left his heavies to play the control. He will probably try to like back up and maybe get another angle to shoot. Uh, oh. The exchange of AG mm-hmm. started, so both teams actually have an idea now how many tanks are engaged there. What the what happened here? What Mudruk? happened to Mud? He just disappeared. He's dead. Did he get blown up somewhere? Uh, I think he, he was he, on rail, man. He was on rails. He was on one-two line, and he just there died. was a 50B and 279 there. 
Yes, and Did now he gets spotted and this blown? is a big opening for Davy though because they are starting to pressure the two line immediately off of this, and this will force CSA into pushing the hill one way or another. They cannot hold their bait. One comeback, you you think this like in one tank does not make a huge it difference? Makes a huge difference, when, especially when he's holding a side, and he was the spotter and holder of the side. So now actually CSA has no idea how many tanks are progressing on one two line. Are they even progressing or they're rotating someone else? It's a big question you need to answer because you need to base your movements so, or based on it also. Tuxi took a lot of damage there though, crossing through the two line. He took about half. Where is, I'm trying oh, there's Matt. Right in front of Shifter. You see him on the left? Yes. That's his tank wreck. So he tried to cross and I guess the the 50B like the 50B 27, clipped him. Must have clipped him. 50, and 50B and the G3 279, uh, 277 yep. and the 279 probably all hit him. That's a that's a bad move. I I mean they're up in HP still, but probably got checked also, so he couldn't leave like that. But he, yeah, his HP just disappeared for us. Mm, so far though. I mean, the real move here for Davy is uh, they could always send the 50B to the bank, drive down 1-2 and get behind the Chieftain, in, and then you send the 277 and 279 forward as well. Let's not forget the big picture here. Davy is defending. That is true. That is so true. So Davy is in lead one tank, and they don't have to do a thing, and they are 1-0 up. Yeah, and CSA can't just leave the, they can't just leave the hill. You cannot he leave the hill because you will get shot in the back by the guys. They will certainly not just say, oh yeah, by all means, gentlemen, you can leave anytime you fit, see, see it fit, you know? So CSA is pressured to do something now, to make a play, to make uh, equal on 1-1, one, one, which would, which is really hard now because from the start, as Ducky said, they had like equal number of tanks everywhere and they are that one tank How is down. Killer this low HP against Fitman? He Killer is on 8 line, they've just been trading. And he is getting absolutely owned. Why is he even still peeking if he's getting so much owned, man? He just got owned, dude. I'm sure certain it's gonna be RNG blamed. Yeah, if you like, if you're two shots down against a 279, you just stop peeking. Sweetman is even an arty player. <laughs> 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 what are you? Uh, are you trying to say this makes it even even worse? I would say it is, man. Like Sweetman is either an all-around player who really plays well all the tanks. Or he's an exceptional example of a guy who knows how to play RT and tanks. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand how Killer goes down. To, I mean, personally, I don't know how this happens. But now, in the meantime, there's a move on the two line, though, for the side of CSA. Well, this is actually equally important as the death of 2-6-0 uh, on a one line. Because if Killer actually dies here, they will lose a really important position. Also, same as, uh, as uh, Devi. Uh, as uh, CSA cannot leave the hill, Devi tanks also need to keep their presence there. Maybe, because they are, if they don't want to attack up, they can always send one guy to patch the hole. But at the moment, you can see by their lack of movement that they're really, really hesitant about that. Look at HP now. Oh, dear God. Only one shot. Yeah, like, we don't even see. I think he's getting farm from the hill right now. NH3. Oof. He pushed up here by himself. Why did he do that? And he is now dead. But okay. Why would he do that? It's all even again and in favor of CSA. Because now Shifter is really locked on one two line. Do you remember yesterday, like, uh, CSA was actually in quite a number of situations being outplayed by MVPS, and then they would kind of come back by personal play in some moments. Like, team play between them, not the strats, not nothing like that, just personal play. Oh, Seagull is Seagull dropping made on the one shot. Seagull made a big mistake now. He crossed 1-2 line, got clipped by the 50B and got shot from the hill. As soon as I said something about it, Shifter actually brought his team back in a game. Nice pen here on Carlo. And uh, 279 is being cornered from two sides. He needs to be really careful because it is 50B down and Shifter on his side. The presence of Eight Seagull line. would be needed. I don't think he even knew Shifter was actually there. Sweetman is now pushing up towards Killer. He wants to trade the trade here. However, if Sweetman stays here, he is going to is die. Coming down from yeah. the hill. He's going to die within 20 seconds. Skrr guy is now coming in hot. Very hot. That Skrr will trigger the response from CSA, CSA and there will be a massive roll. On. Nice spend though from Sweetman on towards Killer. But here comes Skrr minus one. 
Gonna be minus two. He bounces that one, though. It's not that easy. He's trying to find a pan angle. Nice shot there. Sweetman's now ammo. Right? Needs to be careful from the blow up. Good angling here for Sweetman. Skirga looks for the words of Coppola. He doesn't get it. If he was Sweetman was a one shot, it would have been great for Killer. But in the meantime, we see the push around the hill for the side of CSA. Starting to pressure up there on the minimap. You can see that around the corner as well at the same time. But it's Davey is taking everybody on the left hand side of the castle. CSA is kind of pushing into nothing with all of those tanks. They're focusing on those chieftains. Magma is kind of left to fend for himself, but it doesn't really matter. Buzok is also still there. They're Starting to pick up those tanks around the hill and then they'll come back and play from the hole down. But still, CSA is up in HP. CSA is doing really well winning the upper side of the map. DV made a no logical choice to push all the tanks from the lower side because they have a couple of guys who can shoot the hill from the lower side of the map. But the Kupi kick crumbles both ways because CSA is also positioning their tanks. You can see from the yard they can they can shoot up. So this is exchange now coming back toward the DV. You can see there two, three thousand almost HP up. So this is going really well for them at the moment. Yeah, now this swings back all the way into the favor of Davey. Uh, CSA is left standing with five people. They had to make a play there because they won one. They lost one too. They won one too, and then they lost it again, forcing them into having to push the hill. And it's just a mop up operation at this point. It's little player mistakes that cost so much at the end. Himmelsdorf is not an easy map because of that. If you play like two teams that are equal in skill or similar skill, it's usually details like that that will decide. And in this one, it's a really huge victory for Davy, taking already first map 2 to 0. Ooh, tape trying to trade with Joseph. Does manage to pick him up, but here comes Karana, followed by Nico, followed by Zix. That's a little bit too many chieftains for Tape to deal with. He gets picked up by Nico, and it's going to be 2 0 for DV, but that was a very interesting round in terms of 1 2 development. Uh, Tuxi pushing up by himself, and the gap there, he got, took like half his HP yeah, and damage. We, we, and we saw stuck. a couple of guys making mistakes from time to time and uh, really putting their team in kind of an awkward mm -hmm. position that they have to do rotations and moves, uh, really limited rotations and moves because they're all in deadlock up on a hill. And uh, yeah, we can see the damage dealt here. This is good, like when you have 50 Bs in the top, like this is something what you want to do. But I, I must commend like Shifter in this game, doing 3.6 in his budget. I think really important place here coming in after the rotation from the yep. hill. And I don't think they even knew he was there on the rail and then putting that 279 in a really awkward position and so on. So, like, really good moves, also rotating the 50B down from the hill, that was uh, expected, but also Sweetman playing so well that he actually he made them have to do that. He killer. Yeah, he still. outplayed him by far, so, like, he's one of the guys who actually managed to Flow make 6.5K, like, really. No, but I don't think Killer has nearly the same as 891 <laughs> damage. 15 uh, and 2 pent. Yeah, uh, definitely superior performance there from Sweetman in 279, showing you that even in 279, the player that plays it does make a difference. Makes a big difference, and uh, you can actually bring your team back on the saddle with that. So, 8 line and uh, Tuxi losing his HP on the rail almost. I don't almost know if Tuxi was supposed to yeah. push up or not, but it's exactly the same scenario as Mud. Mud pushes up, dies. Tuxi pushes up. And then dies was at there one an point? order by the team? That's just what, what I'm interested. Like, was that 260 supposed to push like that? Because it looks like awkward, awkward to me. Because they still know there is yeah. possibility of crossfire. And and then and then CSA after they kill Tuxi, right? They 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 think like this. It's it's sim you know, what they were doing is they push up the 279 to get an angle on towards Shifter, and then Sigo wanted to cross towards Shifter and kill him one on one because he did knows he has no support anymore. But did but he know Shifter is exactly there? Was he yeah, 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 yeah. He he, oh, knew, right. he knew he was there, but he took like. 1.8, well, whatever it is. He didn't HP. even get the chance to shoot or shift. No, like he, he just died on the crossing. Before. The yes. 50B clipped him again. And the tanks from the hill also hit him. So, like, there is... I don't know. That's kind of a suicidal move for me. Like, if you know Shifter is there, that's suicidal for me. I would try to do something else. Maybe press more toward the 8 line where uh, where the guy already lost I, I honestly HP. also felt like that taking courtyard control was a possibility there for, for CSA. Mm -hmm. Because killers would have to go back. Yes, and then they, if they rotate more people like they did, the game would be a bit different. But never mind, those are like small details and uh, things happen. All these players are really good. Sometimes you can have like a bad round and like com completely redeem yourself in the next one. That's how it goes. Like we saw yesterday, guys do like 4 or 5k in one game and the next get blown up first, like nothing happened. Uh, so this is a really surprising result for me. I, would, I was expecting one to one on Himmelsdorf yes, of all of the memes. So huge lead for Devi, uh, potentially even a groundbreaking for them because they can take it more easy on the next uh, maps. They can take less risks than needed because Let's by far see. till the end, they only need 1-1. One, one. Looking at the maps, Redshire, 
coming out now, then Live Oaks, then Clef, all kind of maps. It is possible to take a 2-0. It's possible to take 2-0. But Redshire, we've seen it's been a hard not to crack for a lot of teams. CSA yesterday actually went really close, you remember? They kind of hard-pressed it, but uh, last moment decisions didn't win them the match, if you remember. They, they played against double RT, they had like presence, the map control, like two-thirds of the map was theirs and uh, the enemy was boxed down on K-Line and, uh, and around like that swampy area down. But they chose, I believe, <laughs> wrong side to press. Yes, indeed, that is very true. Uh, however, luckily enough for CSA, it's going to be Davey that is attacking first with double RD. CSA only having one. Well, that's okay. You don't really need two RTs all the time there. So it just depends like how many tanks you allow to get spotted. Like we've seen, you, you, we had teams in multiple games yesterday that uh, they were trying to use double RT and they had nothing to shoot for minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. I, I, I actually, I'm very sorry. Uh, it's not one, it's not two, but it's three. Oh RD. dear, it's uh, T92. The T92 just blended in with the background. <laughs> it looked like a heavy thing. CSA has to play aggressive <laughs> against this. They have to play immediate aggressive. Close yeah. the map off one way or another. So Dirty Clicker Dr. Nix is playing, the guy who has... Uh, Shifter and Ebion. marks on all of the RTs, oh, you, you and he would. plays only RT. I personally don't like the main FC or one of the FCs uh, on EBR. Like, it, it's... You want somebody to just be focused on playing EBR, I feel like. Buzuk and Shifter are playing EBRs. I don't know, man. Maybe maybe other guys don't play that well, so it's like a forced choice. Nobody likes EBR. It's the sad part about it. Everybody hates playing it. It's a risky, it's a risky job and uh, if you do well, rarely will people say, oh, you did a magnificent job. And if you do bad, it will be instantly seen, even if enemy just had a good RNG hitting you. I wonder if CSA will keep pushing hard this job. Or, or bail off of it at some point. So far, all these 907s are unspotted. Magma, Ooh, I don't think he realizes how... Oh, oh Buzuk, oh. <laughs> Buzuk, I don't think Magma realizes how, how closely he escaped death right there. Oh my god, I think these guys will continue because if they stop, it's gonna be really bad for them. They're gonna risk. Arty should start hitting. One, One Arty missed. missed completely. This hellhole here where oh. Korana and Magma are is not the best, to be honest. They, they need to keep pushing this. You, you can't stop, guys. Nalo taking a ton of damage. Buzuk was down in his EBR, but here comes the force from CSA. A little bit sluggish, a little bit slow. Korana and Magma between each other, trying to draw them out, but Korana is the main issue here. Zilka is the only one going for it. You cannot kill this position unless you commit into it. If Zilka dies here it's gonna be real trouble for CSA and he does and they needed to clear Karana they're now pushing under the hill as well and there is no real way to kill Karana right now Artie should be coming in two seven sevens are starting to take retake one two line and Davey with that triple Artie is still down on HP I think it was too early to pu push that position where Karana is honestly because you get shot in the back before these guys get pushed back from the top of the hill they should have just left him and sustained one or two shots in the back the rest of the team of CSA is pressuring now from the castle area in the middle it's a big brawl and a crossfire this is a good moment to take out that uh, corner, Korana, and start working on the rest of the guys. If CSA has the rest of the EBRs, now would be a time to go and YOLO swag on those uh, GCs because I think there is a huge gap they can use between the cap and the hill. 2277s seven are just not going to be enough to kill EBRs for to the U and a 279. You can see here Saka and Dani and Cosmo coming in as well. Tuxi just surrounded in a crossfire Ooh, and trying to... Ammo recall, so this is a gangbang in a castle, man. <laughs> this is not working out for Tuxi. EBRs coming in, EBRs doing damage. Corana now goes down, you're right. They found an opportunity now to focus them out and that's going to be Tuxi down and out as well. And Davey with that triple already needed a slow game and CSA was not willing to give it to them. Yeah, I think this was a huge risk playing three Artis again against the experienced team like CSA. This is not a big map, especially they didn't see 907s coming. That was a really huge advance coming in there from CSA. A bit sloppy after that, but still. Nico doing good for his clan, taking three kills in here, but that's just kind oh, of... Uh, oh, 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 rot him. <laughs> burn, it, baby, burn. I think he was on 2K HP, he just got penned. I don't know by who, but it definitely Hard hurts. Shots. Yeah, which one of shot. the RDs though? Uh, does it even matter? <laughs> a little bit. Seagull jumps off a cliff and dies, and it's just five tanks left. They needed at least double RD from CSA to uh, to make this work. Like this is like from the moment of the push, it was completely one-sided. They were a bit stopped in the medium area, but that gave also chance to everyone else in CSA team to just approach for close combat, establish the cross li crossfires to. Control all the high areas in a map, man. When that happens, you are done. 
Yeah, if they spotted the 907s earlier here for DV, they could have maybe retaken one two line with all their 277s, but they were so late, they were already surrounded. Yeah, this, this was like, from the moment they pushed, it was done. Like, also, unless they deleted half of those 907s mm -hmm. straight away, it would be a mistake. Also, I really think that it was a mistake to chase a guy in that corner. Because, like... It, well, technically, Magma should be there as well. I, normally, I, normally you want to put two guys there because when one dies, he shields the other, and you can't yeah, actually yeah, kill yeah. them. That, that's that would be actually even more mortal combination for David. But chasing would be a mistake because they're shot from entire yeah. team from the hill. So until you wait for the rest, like you take some position, you take maybe one or two shots uh, on the opposite side of them, and you wait for the rest of your team to pressure the guys on the other side of the hill, so they can't snipe in the back, and then you can make your play, send one or two guys to deal with it, or push other side and just ignore them, whatever. Yeah, Magma, Magma being there, I don't think he did much either. Uh, Buzuk, but then it goes super aggressive in DBR, so he didn't see the 907s, but good stuff there from CSA, and, and like the stopping for a second was not worth it, because they took more than they should have. Mm -hmm. uh, if they committed, they would have taken less, pretty much, if they just went straight with the mediums, but I feel like Buzuk should have also spotted them earlier. How much did Korana do, I can't see? Is he the first one? Yeah. Yeah, he's the first one. So he's the medium from the corner we yes. were talking about all the time. And he's the only guy who had actually constant shots from the entire Davy team. Everyone else was more spread out and uh, not really in a possibility to do something like that. And also the worst part is also that uh, they allowed uh, with playing like that CSA to have even a numerical advantage on two parts of the map, in the castle and in the, that deep area. And the guys that were in between couldn't really help after the first shots that much. Yeah. Um, in, in that scenario, Buzwick needs to spot the for, for it to actually work for Davy. They would need to see uh, the 907s going mm -hmm. under earlier. And I it think was really awkward that they didn't see them. I think like, they have uh, to take one two line and sort of hold it at least because otherwise, once CSA took all the positions they do, you do not win. You just don't win anymore. It's impossible. I really didn't expect that they will go there unspotted. Yeah, it Buz was a good play. Buzwick did very passive runs, very, very passive. Kind of interesting. Usually you see DBR who is slightly more aggressive. Yeah, I would expect him to cross on other side when he sees nothing. Yeah, well, I mean, it is what it is. Um, it is the risk of playing with three Ardies and, and two EBRs. It leaves you vulnerable for if the team doesn't. Um, if they had, if CSA had two Ardies, it would have been way more difficult. Also, let's not forget, guys, uh, this was a defense of CSA. Uh, the only reason, we were talking a lot uh, yesterday, uh, you can pick a lineup and you can pick a tactics and draw it on map tactics or... Uh, Scrum or whatever you whatever you use, but when you see enemy lineup, you actually that's the only moment when you know what will you do. They saw three artists and they knew if they wait, they're gonna die. Yeah, I don't I, I don't know if this was their initial strand or not, but probably not. <laughs> probably most likely not. Probably not. But three artists waiting, no, no, it doesn't work. Go. That's it. Unless you are able to deny all spots. It, the difference with it, between strat like this with three artists and uh, normal clan war is in clan war there is a fog of war. So mm -hmm. until artists actually start shooting, you do not know what's going on. And by then, yeah. it's usually too late. And sometimes you have two artists shooting and one tracing. Yeah, but by the time you realize what's going on, it's usually too late for a push like this. But here, where everything is known since the, let's say, it's not even when the game starts, but from the training room. Come on, man. Okay, so it's, it was a big gamble. So you see initially EBRs, there's three for the side of CSA and... Uh, you can see Davy is being very defensive about it. They have no uh, intention about pushing 1-2, but a lot of times on 9-0, they may try and take it. There is, however, nothing to really push on. They're playing with double RT and double EBR. Again, Buzu can shift her. One EBR difference can actually be a huge difference here now. Like, depends, of course, how it's played, but as example, if Davy loses one EBR, they will be crippled completely. Uh, shifted there, giving, giving one, but receiving one in return when you're, the enemy has three EBRs is not the ideal scenario. It's a no-go trade. He needs to get out of here, though, because he will get hit by Ardy at some point. I yeah. mean, he was buying presence, he was buying time for his 907s to come there unspotted. But what will you achieve with that? Because, uh, in honesty, CSA doesn't even want to play that side. That's a different story. I mean, they do have Frolly over there. Yeah, but he's there a spotter. Because Arti can shoot if you pick too much. And also if you push him, you get sniped a lot by the guys from the B7, B8. Usually this is the moment where you stand, send two, three 907s through the water mm -hmm. to uh, get under. Pushing from 9-0 is always super hard. It's way easier to push from uh, under. Buzukin this is uh, really, really risky. careful. Because you can get shot from the This from is the really risky. Yes, yeah, this is really risky. Oof. Lucky. Lucky, very lucky. Yeah, I would not go back there, Bazook. It's better to take a passive spot in the field now. Maybe he will hear your uh, guidance and do it. <laughs> the voice. The voice of reason. 
Um, I hear voices, guys. Oh, this is a big, big, big boy rotation, even mm-hmm. from Davy, bringing all their 907s back. Now, the real question is do they have the uh, cojones to actually plummet down one, two? But Davy is defending, so why would they? It's Shifter, you never know. <laughs> to be I honest. Mean, if they actually do it, it will be a suicide, as far as I can see. Oh, they stopped. I really wanted them to keep going. Oh. Do you want it to do that badly? <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted them to try it. To be honest, I would have already. I would push on the river. Can you imagine a random arty spot around Titus now? A, a random arty shot. Yeah, that would that would be unfortunate. That would be like really unfortunate GG kind of shot. Frolly is on uh, 600 HP. That's a 907. You were saying like that was a proxy spotting on D0. If you remember, guys, for CSA, so he had to run away all the way back to the water on B0 and take a more passive uh, approach there because he was shot by Arty. There was not, no one else. To I want to see do Killer's it. position. Like I kind of want to see Killer's position in the 279 because it's not something we see all the time. Arty comes in with blind fire or k- kind of no tracing. S- yeah, tracing. Okay, so Killer is here. It's not really an area where we usually see... Um, stream snipe, stream snipe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have 10, mi- 10 minutes delay, Buzu, guys. this is so aggressive. Like, I really don't think you can keep getting away with this, mate. For real, though. Like, yeah, you are going to die at some point if you keep doing this. As lucky as every EBR, getting only wield, but you don't get only wield if Arty hits you. I don't like this from Buzu. I feel like he could just die at any given moment. He could just get triple topped and die. Like this? Yeah, I just don't understand what he's doing. Like this? He's dead. Like this? Yeah. I, just, I, just, I don't understand, Bazook. It's what not you like we didn't say it like a minute ago. He doesn't listen to voices in his head. The voice of reason doesn't seem to be one that uh, he is interested You're in You're not today. always a crazy p- person if you react to those voices, you know? Yeah. It's uh, called Sixth Sense in a game. Once the enemy takes the castle, you can no longer challenge E3. It's just that simple. You just can't. It's not only that, they don't even have middle under control, so there can be shots from other side also coming from EBR from opposite side and so on. So there is many things that can go wrong. Now we were saying already, they have one EBR less and uh, Shifter was already on lower HP and Buzuk doing something like this is bringing them uh, really without a spot. They did buy a lot of time, so there is uh, five and a half minutes remaining, but if they lose Shifter, they will completely lose any possible spot. There is, there is approach. Someone was watching a stream yesterday, Ducky, and your advice is how to approach through the water <laughs> and get a city. Now we will see how will Devi appreciate your advice is given yesterday through My the match. My issue is Ghost right now. I mean, CSA doesn't really have anybody holding the angle from 9-0 line. But he's gonna get shot from behind, so Ghost here is has to push forward. He, I, 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 it's a dead tank. He has nowhere to go now. Oh, he has to go forward towards the rock, but then rock he's gonna hide it slowly. So this I hug the rock. Rock is your only friend. You have your yeah. teammates are yeah they abandoned you. I don't understand that. I, I well, they're just getting farmed, man. Yeah, that's the thing. You don't leave anybody at G5. There's a counter rotation from Devi coming in. They are pushing a bit toward the hill on the right side. Mm-hmm. So that might do them some good, but I don't see how because they still have to deal. There is a Chieftain coming in from other side, if you can see where Frolly used to be. And they might end up even in a worse crossfire than they were. We'll see what these 907s from CSA decide to do. The one crossed under the bridge now. Um, Four people are here, Chieftain and three 907s. Mm, there's there's a total of five for the V, I think. Two Chieftains, three 907s. But I think it's just one Chieftain, but can't see clearly, to be honest. Corona taking quite a lot of damage here. Half HP lost to a really insignificant peak, I would say. You should really rely on other people spotting in that, that kind of moments. Frolly is sitting with his 600 HP deep down in a ditch. There is a counter push coming in from Devi. Sakalito is waiting in a cooldown, protecting the Arty in a crossfire in Frolly, but it's only two guys. So there will be an immediate counter push by the rest of the CSA guys through the water line on the other side of the map. You can see CSA pushing straight down the five line with their 907s. They pick up Shifter in the EBR. They will find another 907 there. There are still two Chieftains holding. There's one more 907 in between the buildings. That is Magma. Dexter here. What can he do? He puts spots out Titus. He's going to die in that RD for sure. He's down and out. Zix now trying to hold in his. 907 CSA is just driving in between the lines of DV and they don't care whatsoever to pick up Nyx as well. That's the second already down and out. Ghost goes down. Frolly finally gets picked up by the side of DV. HP is still kind of even, but the positions are far, far in favor of CSA right now. But they need to push on towards these chieftains with their one-two line tanks to make this actually work.
This is it, man, because they still have double arty that can work on those chieftains. Chieftains are attacked from all parts of the map. So we have now a stretched out force from Devi on the other side that pushed the hill and that is winning that engagement, but they lost everything else. So Magma picks up Nalo here, so the city is still in the control for CSA, but CSA still has that K5 oh, position. Saka is still alive, man. Saka is indeed still alive in that Chieftain somehow. You can see Zilka here is going to get a good shot on towards Skurga when he reloads. He does. Tape now dropping low. Tape actually going down. This is not as clean as it should be. Zilka, he needs to be careful because Joseph is refocusing on towards him. He takes two shots for that, though. Gives one towards Skurga. Joseph now coming forward, and they haven't won this king line just yet. It's not over. There needs to be more pressure towards these two chieftains here. EBR is actually yolling back so he can shoot them. Yes, they are taking out Silka. This is not something that should have happened. That really one peak too much of the 260 might cost them the game. HP really close, but CSA has an advantage of 1200. And you can't even say it's about two artists because they still have only one alive. Yeah, that's uh, the HP still. Possible for either team. Joseph here s stuck in between a rock and a hard place. He actually picks up Seagull from that position. He goes down now. Kvito follows Tuxi, kills Mud, kills all over the place. It's 1.7k HP against 2.8, and this is scrappy, very, very scrappy. And for CSA, they have Lucan, and they need to use him. M the thing is, though, Davy still has those 907s, those DPM monsters that they can utilize. Yeah, the problem is here for CSA, they do have this RT, but they have only two EBRs, so they're not main fighting tanks, and they now actually have doing? to take Vadim. that point. Vadim. Oh dear God, what did you do, mate? He tried to kill Chomi, he tried to kill the 907, but he should have just waited for Lukin. Lukin now has to be forced to drive into a crossfire unless the RT can pick up one of them. Adani still reloaded for nine seconds, and there's only one minute 17 left on the clock. Lukin here coming in strong, he wants to pick up the first kill on the 907, picks it up. Good clean, play. secure. Chomi now peeks out. He misses. Looking, doing well there. Ardy aiming as well. He picks up Chomi. It's now a 4v3 in favor of CSA, but the time, one minute Mojo and looking, he's a chieftain. It's a beautiful time, but We've it is not that quick. We've seen this scenario yesterday that CSA played again Reshire ticking off in last 60 seconds. We do have three guys Run to the hills, you fools. <laughs> my, my Run, you my fools. Side. And we have one EBR on CSA and two tanks. I would say this should be decent amount of time to delete it, but they can't keep press keep pressure the cap. That's the biggest problem. Ooh, Tuxi spots out Cosmo. Cosmo go down. He had to go into spot. And that Chieftain, it is a nice It's going to be a time victory but again for the enemy. It's too slow. Like in this scenario, <gasps> it doesn't get there. Radim, though, in that EBR, what on earth was that? I can't be only one thing happening. There was I'm mistakes happening in a brawl before. They never should have lost Silka in this 260, man. Never ever. Good, good, good call from Joseph though. Today he just took the shots from behind and pushed straight on towards Zilka. He managed to even killing Sigo. There is a mistake. That Sigo should not be able to die against Joseph. There's two EBRs. How does Sigo die against Joseph? A time win again. CSA having the victory in their grasp and again not taking it on the red this side. Was a cursed map for them, I, I would say. I feel like I can be hypercritical on Davy just because I can, uh, and that was just like, I don't know. I don't know what to say of it. Like, Buzuk, that's a big mistake. I, I don't know if it's intentional. There was a bunch of big mistakes but in the Ghost? start, but they actually kind of made good plays toward the end. Yeah. And some of the players excelled at personal level and brought the victory back Joseph to them. Joseph did very well there. 4.1k damage, holding on K-line. No, no, those two chieftains actually really bought them, let's just say, simple shitload of time, man. And they did a lot of damage that actually brought them back to the game. Like, they were supposed to die so much earlier so much earlier but you know they survived Magma CSA even survived in between the building as well they the thing is if you want to kill magma you might as well make sure you kill him or not send anybody at all because now they lost i think it was nalo there nalo was over there so they just mm -hmm. lost him for free like unless you're gonna go secure the kill don't send anybody out in the at all it's not worth it well it's truly one truly 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 cursed map side for CSA. <laughs> <laughs> like two days in a row to have a victory like at your fingertips and just lose it like that it's a shame. But they are a good team. We saw yesterday what happened after that. So I would be really, really, I would brace myself if that was Davy now. Now we move on to Live Oaks, however. And yep. if CSA does a repeat performance of yesterday, 15 0. Yes, 15 0. Uh, That's going to be a big slap. I, I think Davy was watching, so they might avoid that kind of scenario. I also hope that they're smart enough to not do the MVPS esque commit on Kayla. Well, if he, or, or at least if they commit to commit. Yeah. I, like, I, really commit. And at least have somebody at the house in the beginning. And really to commit. <laughs> yep. Yep. So.
We will see. I still, I, I'm not convinced on shifter on EBR. I'm very sorry, uh, but uh, I, I, I strongly am against FCs, main FCs, even being on EBRs because I think that tank requires like full focus to even play properly to begin mm -hmm. with. I don't know, man. Like uh, you know better situation in Devi, being in Devi, so you know better who actually can play uh, EBRs, and uh, it's a it's a big gap. If you don't have players, you feel confident in playing them. It depends if you want a 30 second EBR or a 45 second EBR. Personally, I feel like I'm like a 33 Is second. Is there an option three? <laughs> I personally think like I'm like a 33 second EBR. Boost looks like 40 seconds, and Shifter's like 22. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. Well, hey, 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 he survived almost the entire match now. So. Yeah, I just have flashbacks from uh, Believe in the campaign. Mm -hmm. You know, no tanks on the elite front because they're all locked. We have one EBR. One? Uh, it's, it. it's Shifter. <laughs> Dead after 35 seconds, man. What's great. On Prokhorovka. He went all over right. the rails and he's like, oh, I wanted to spot deeper. And so he decided to drive on their side of the city. People live and learn. People live yeah, and learn. Yeah, it was great. I, have re I was really happy, dude. Next time he will maybe be a 36 seconds EBR. Hopefully. Who knows? But uh, Live Oaks coming in next. Uh, we've seen various performances by teams. Uh, not too many matches played on it, but some are really, been really important. Super impressed by anybody's Live Oaks except for Nomis. The, 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 the I, I would say both both games on Live Oaks between BGVP yeah, and Nomi were good. Think, like the, the, the way Nomi, that yeah. BGVP yeah, won true. and same that Nomi won think, right next to it I was really Nomi good. I think Nomi had a really good reaction. Yeah. And BGVP had a very good initial strap. Yeah. So I would say like both of these approaches were really good, considering they were done from the same side, northern side. Uh, Which is surprising enough. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like everyone hates it, but I kind of like that side over there. And uh, we've seen like exceptional brawl between MVPS and CSA, but it was ex exceptionally one-sided. One <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you don't see 15-0 often. <laughs> we're about to get into Live Oaks though. And already I can tell you, there's two RDs for one side, one for the other. CSA is playing with one and Davey is playing with two. That usually does kind of say that, you know, Davey should be playing a little we slower. We shift in EBR. So how many seconds is Magna? Magma? Magma is a god, so like three minutes. Three minutes? Oh, wow. Subtract like two and a half minutes. And then another 10 seconds, and that's about it. So you get the 20 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the clock is running. We will see in 11 seconds what's Magma doing. He is going well on his way. <laughs> it's going to be really hard to die. And it? it's another um, commit from CSA down line zero. Very uh, similar to what they did before. Similar? Same. I mean, you know, there might be one or two changes, you never know. Maybe different player in Chieftain is going to the house. Who knows? That is well, true. Still, they have a double EBR, one Chieftain there, one RT, and the rest of the gang is committing down, but soon enough they will realize there is actually no one there to meet them. It does look like they watched the yesterday VOD, and they didn't really want to bother with that kind of gameplay. On the other hand, they're playing super aggressive toward the city side, leaving both RTs in deep, though. That can be a problem. In Oof. this kind of games, there is a possibility to lose them there. Magma and his EBR now gonna try and get out of this one. In the meantime, though, Davy taking a lot of city control, and I do not mind this personally for Davy as much as I do for CSA because they have the double ID. Right now, they're sending a chieftain down in the deep with Arty. I was thinking, like, if something bad happens, you can just YOLO the, 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 the BRs and clear out the Arty's here easily. Magma taking some uh, damage. He was lucky he was only wheeled first time, and now he took uh, proper damage. But he runs away alive. There are already two 907s from DV on position on K2, taking the houses, so they are protecting a uh, rotation from CSA. Another chieftain is joining them, so now CSA would really need a humongous amount of force to actually commit there. 907s joining I don't like Cosmo's position here. Once the chieftain gets towards the rails, he just peeks him. Yeah, this is uh, not the greatest. Magma. Magma taking quite a lot of damage there. I don't know, was it even needed? I know they want a spot, but this is a risky one. He doesn't have to spot when the chieftain is next to him, though. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, why is he playing a hold down with the NBR? Oh, big already connection on towards Cosmo. Actually, dropping onto 404 HP. You can see the little wheelie boys has no wheel left, so he's kind of slow. No driver, also. Mm hmm. Yeah, this position from Cosmo. I don't think he can leave because the STRV is co uh, is covering. Mm -hmm. So he's dead. He needs to wait for a moment where his heavy is actually come and someone Ooh, takes the over his position. Though. The SRV is getting spotted out shift and needs to be really careful. That is the worst thing to happen right now. 
Yeah, they're already sending 1-2-6-0 towards Shifter and Shifter is down on his STRV. There is no crossfire anymore whatsoever by David. They're just holding the forces frontally. Are they enough to actually counter push? Cosmo dies by the hands of them. Uh, Titus is actually finishing him off. Delphine is getting tracked and shot by so many tanks by DV. Uh, but can that actually make a big difference? Yes, it can. Big, big connections coming out there from Davy. They're trying to focus out these two 60s over here. Asa even committing. They're going to commit on towards him. They want to kill him. Here comes the Arty shell from CSA. It's a big one. Here comes the Brunt of the Force Magma leading the charge in the EBR. That's not really what you want to see. Here comes the rest of the times. There's so many CSA players in position, though. Driving in between. The mud goes down. Kurana follows. They're trying to refocus now. Great stuff by Froli and Radim actually driving up. Trying to establish a new angle of crossfire. And it goes left here on the downside. And I don't think that he's going to be able to make it out of this one. And I think that this counter push from Davy, it's not enough. It's not going to be working out. It looked good in the start, especially taking all the damage on Delphine. But guys, you forgot. They have almost the entire team there. I think someone kind of miscalculated a bit. And the uh, aftershock of this was really easy to be seen. After they did initial damage, they went in a crossfire from CSA tanks. And there was no way to go out of that. There is a 5k advantage now for CSA. They're taking out the second RT currently. Like, as soon as the seagull comes off the reload, never, never mind. mind. <laughs> Saved by the bell! Buzu comes in the last moment, actually, to help his teammate. But that should not change the course of the battle, because there is still too many tanks alive for CSA, who are holding all the positions all over the map. Yeah, this, uh, this SRV dying like this is... Uh it's something al always seen. When team approaches that fast, that close, like, and you don't control completely everything everywhere else on the map you will get spotted there there is no way not to get spotted i mean double the hp anything is possible <laughs> i'm just kidding it's not uh zix goes down five tanks left standing for the side of dv yeah they do have some hp but just a number of guns in the game alone will be enough to secure this for csa and they did the good move i mean i really thought this strv would have been safe and and farming but in reality he fired one shot i think happened everything but Yes, and he, yeah, um, he, I, yeah, you know, it's just you, you, Shifter should know that what happens when you get spotted there. Yeah, you win some, you lose some, they still have one more game to come back into it, but this was their defense side, next they will have to actually attack. Three tanks, two, uh, two tanks, one tank remaining, I cannot even finish the sentence. <laughs> Well, Skurga is going to have to finish the game, though. Dexter puts him out of his misery, and that is CSA on their attacking side of Live Oaks, making it 3 to 2, and in a quite good fashion whatsoever. They played it out well. Cosmo, I don't think that was Considering they played completely the same strat from yesterday without any change, uh, yeah, I would say this is a great success. Yeah, but last time MVPS fought them in the river. Now they had to go to DV's river to actually kill them. Advance. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second part of the strat. Davy couldn't see that because they didn't watch it yet. This leaves us with the possibility if uh, CSA actually managed to take their defense side of Live Oaks now, it will be even Steven, 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, that is, that is it's a possibility. It is a very We said that these maps actually bring that out uh, much easier, especially Live Oaks, than the rest. So to be honest, if CSA misses this one, like they had a chance already on the Redshire. It, they came really close and uh, they have a chance now again. But if they miss th this one out, uh, I'm not also, sure. Also, I don't like Magma okay. leading the charge in the EBR. Like, you know, I, I understand, like, the glory of the leader going in first, and it may motivate the troops. However, in World of Tanks, that just means <laughs> one less gun. Yeah, EBR going first is... I would use EBR going first only on maps like uh, Malinoka, Westfield, and so on. You know, when mm, you already yeah, surround yeah. an enemy, and you send EBRs to do damage from distance before you charge in with the rest of the tanks. That's it and to pinpoint where, where are they. Like, that's the only way I, I would send EBR first, like in an in a all-out brawl, no way. But as you said, he already outlived his 20 seconds by far, so it's okay. All right, so guys, uh, we will have a small break because this is a uh, best of nine and we are already in a fifth game. So I think uh, our lovely duo from social media is waiting for that. Hello, Hello guys. Hello, welcome back. Thank yes. you for the Passover. Good time for the uh, the casters to be able to have a, a small breather, I think, and get ready for these uh, these close games to continue, and the teams yes. uh, to maybe readjust, have a discussion on their tactics, and try and regroup and uh, try and get a clear winner on this one. But 
I am pretty sure they're making their way outside the building just to get a little bit yeah. of fresh air because <laughs> uh, we, we we're dying here. We have some really large fans in the corner of the office and I think they're about to just stand there in front of them doing this uh, <laughs> to try and cool down. Um, so yeah, I believe you have more news to share for the just code. Just a reminder, so I saw three codes or you guys found three codes already. Um, final countdown action time and kiss them goodbye so probably you already got some reserves and that's it and okay. we're going to have more codes so stay tuned watch the matches and make sure to find those uh, probably you are going to get inscriptions maybe some more reserves and by collecting five of those you are going to get a garage lot and a style and if you collect 10 of those you are going to get a premium day so uh, one of the reasons that you maybe haven't found as many codes as you'd like right now is we have one code per map, not per game, per map. Uh, and of course, we don't want to be showing the codes all at once in the first five minutes. That's everybody right. goes, redeem them all now. We're done. Yes. And then, no, no, no. We are going to, of course, tease you whether you like it or not. We are going to make sure we, we spread these codes out a little bit. So don't blame the cameraman. They're doing... You can blame the, the Phil X, actually. <laughs> yeah, everybody should blame Phil X. He, he loves right. it. He you loves can it. spam him yeah. uh, with comments. I don't know if he's... Some Please give more codes. Yeah. That I'm sure he will <laughs> love it so much. Yes. Uh, well, something else that we have going on is the Shield Blast uh, PC giveaway. Make sure to sign up to the campaign. You know the drill. And we are going to close the campaign at 7.30 CST today and announce the lucky winner later after the finals. If it's not likely. me, it's rigged. I'm going to keep saying it until I win. Okay, let's see. Let's see <laughs> if, you know, that helps. The oh, the amount of clips from that segment, the, 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 the next one along, yeah, I think I counted at least 15 clips of me, me everybody wanting me to win this. So Yes, but you have to remember that you should name your clip <laughs> with something Please meaningful. So much. Like, why are you picking that clip? Yes. Or what's the reason behind it? So uh, I can tell it's improved vastly for the second game. Um, we have a lot of clips with names. Uh, one of my favorites, of course, was uh, Mojo and his uh, favorite songs, for instance. Uh, on right. I'm not going to spoil it now, but w when it's revealed uh, on there. One is Daki rapping again. Uh, various uh, different iterations of that, such as I didn't know Eminem sent Daki for uh, rapping <laughs> as a play in one of the memes and things like that. So some really good titles, but there are You're still... That gives me an idea. We should maybe create, or you guys should create a, a remix of okay. Daki, you know? Yes, um, definitely. Something cool, something nice, something funny. <laughs> yep, yep. Daki, Daki rapping will uh, will make his day. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty certain. So make sure you name your clips. It makes it easier when I'm going through those to get featured. I will go through all of them anyway. Um, but when you name them, it does make it a little easier to kind of see what you're clipping for. Some of them are just clips of people bouncing on tanks. Usually there are clips of us for some reason, just talking about just clips. So you get clips of clips, which is interesting. Um, and yeah, it's making sure if you're going to clip something, guys, please name it. If it's exciting, that's cool. That's awesome. You'll get featured. Uh, we haven't got that many for game one, but game two, there are so many cool clips, which is pretty awesome. So when do you want to show them? Probably during the next break? Yeah, during the next break. Okay. Once uh, we have a winner through uh, these two teams, then we'll show that and then we'll get ready for the very final finals. That reminds um. me that we have two winners from the previous question. So maybe you can explain the answer to that question. Okay, so uh, the answer to that one, as people may have seen when the chat was utterly destroyed with flipping and I gave it away so much because it's, it's really obvious. Uh, the thing that I tend to do in nearly every game, I don't know how, I don't know why, but it happens. There are clips on our Twitch channel of this. Uh, I tend to flip my tank often. So we do have winners announced on there. Uh, th so there you see there from YouTube and from Twitch. We have the in-game name for the person on YouTube. We don't have it for the one on Twitch, I don't think. But if you make sure we have those names, then we can get you your fuel in good time. Uh, so it shouldn't take too long for that. Uh, and yes, one of the, some of the other answers, for instance, apparently was singing. Um, yeah, I yeah. saw that. Uh, I have a tendency to sing things when uh, I'm, I'm getting really, really 
a lot of things are happening. And I also, in the office, Achina didn't notice that when uh, I come into the office and people are saying good morning, if I'm in a really good mood, I end up singing good morning. Uh, and it freaks people out a little bit. So the chat, I've managed to pick up on that. And you know, So it wasn't singing, it was flipping my tank. Uh, and I'm sure you're looking forward to asking your next question, which will be really, really obvious. Yes. So <laughs> I think uh, our video team is ready to show the lower third with the second question that we have. And actually, you should ask that question because... Okay. So is this one's going right? to take us a while to pick the winner. But what is Echidna famous for doing during the streams? It's usually when I'm on stream. What is Echidna famous for doing during streams? <laughs> this will be interesting. And it's yeah. really obvious. Yes. Well, let's see. Okay. So I think that we are ready to go. But before that, I would like to say hi to the German community. I went to Milan stream and I say hi and they were happy about that. So guys, have fun. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much. Good luck, Mojo and Daki. Thank you very much, Iki. However, I will only rap it if it's in a collab with you. We just need to make up some, some rapper names. Uh, I don't know, it's just a smiley situation there and Flippaboo is doing really well, man. Yeah, he's, uh, I mean, he's the lucky one of, of, of all of us, to be honest. I, I feel that corner is uh, much uh, cool, calmer, you know, like in, in terms of heat. Yeah, you also get like a free ventilation. <laughs> yeah, that's actually the thing. That, honestly, I feel like Iki, for how much he loves me, should come stand behind me and just like, for the whole, for the whole game, just like wave. Mm, you need to provide a palm tree, you know? I can f I can, I'm willing to find a palm tree. I bet you are. Back uh, we are, guys on a match between CSA and Devi. And if you just tune in, it's currently 3-2 in favor of uh, Devi. Of Devi. So it'd be great uh, if these, oh, that's, I love oh, it. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank Finally you Finally some Thank service. Thank you very much. <laughs> Can you do like, this a little bit here? Yes, <laughs> that's, that's great. I love it. It actually feels really well, man. I'm really not would, complaining I, about this I would, at all. At like all. You can keep doing it the entire it's, day. It's if great, you wish. I yeah, love it. Ah. I love it. Thank you. you is it too much to ask for a massage now? Yeah, oh, that'd be great. <laughs> uh, where's Phil? I need a back rub, please. Yeah, Phil, uh, my, my shoulders, mate. Like, it's uh, it's getting rough. Uh, actually, that was great. Mm, we Finally some air, man, after a <laughs> couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say we wouldn't be surprised if it goes 3-3. Yeah, this is uh, what we said uh, that might happen, actually, after the performance of uh, CSA in the previous game. CSA will be defending now. Of course, on Live Oaks, it can go all around. But uh, it does look like they know what they're doing, even with the simplistic tactics they are using at the moment. I feel bad for Kim, you know. Everybody's check, and then there's, I think, is that Slovakia? It does look like that. Okay, just making sure because... Like the name is definitely North Korean, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he infiltrated. It, it doesn't look like that. Well, you can see mainly, I mean, completely, Balkan clan, you're the only intruder there, I would say. Uh, but they went international, right? You have like one international team now. In DV? Yeah. We had like two during the campaign. All right. International teams. It was, it was, a, it was a, how to say, very hit or miss performance. Okay. The guys try, so, I guess. And you need the presence. Sometimes great. Sometimes even better. Well, Czech team, of course, CSA, uh, CSA Army. And we saw that one intruder from Slovakia, I guess. Hmm. Uh, these guys are be, have been here, we said already, like from the very start of the game, like one of the oldest clan uh, from the old Grey Alliance, so-called Grey Alliance before. <laughs> I remember that, actually. Yeah, they were like a, like a plague holding three quarters of the map back, back in the day, as I far remember. as I remember, between four or five clans. Between but them and one SBP, one pad. SBP, one pad, X, and yeah. uh, so on. So these guys were like the major force back then. But CSA is the, is the only since that time that survived so far and still at the top of their game. Yep. That's important part to add. So lineups. There's a lot of 277s here actually for DV um, coming out. There's four of them. 279. Double RD for CSA though. Double RT for CSA. And T100 instead of EBR. T100 played by Nalo. Did they run out of few EBRs? <laughs> I guess they want to do a passy spot. Maybe they want to use the T100 passy spot in the lower side. Uh, maybe he's going mid. Bed. Yeah, maybe he goes mid. Yeah, I think. Yeah, he is. As you can see, an EBR is doing up, upper active spot playing only two lights uh, i guess they're scared to play with more lights because they have double rt so they chose to have that kind of spotting and play with rt they also did a smart thing in my eyes uh, they split art in two positions one ok one t92 he, he will have a rage and a bank Oof. and the gc in the Ooh, hole sigo driving right there not that great wizard gives him one sigo is not getting a lot of info just yet 
Um, he has to be careful here. He is not seeing the majority of the team from Davy, which is crossing Ayla right now. Sigo is in trouble. Yeah, he's Sigo here. The quite a lot. <laughs> Buzo getting a bit greedy here, mate. You know they have double arty. They have quite a lot of time to aim. Sigo getting wheeled. He's on one shot now. Will any? Is he still spotted? If he faded, he has a chance to survive. <laughs> By a nick of a time, a clicker. Doctor Nix, a dirty GC three marker. He. Manages to finish him off. Cast curse right there. I, I would curse. say if if they stopped following with him with the camera, he would survive 100%. So that is minus EBR. Buzuk is on 109 HP, but he's alive. <laughs> Let's just 109 HP EBR can still be very very annoying. Still a bit greedy play there for one shot. Yeah. On on Sigo who was spotted. But they have established city control. At the end of the day, Sigo would probably not survive if he yeah. if uh, Buzuk didn't. Shoot I don't him. think Sigo showed us the greatest masterclass of driving there. Today in general, or just in this round, we we'll give him the benefit of the doubt for the other ones. To be honest, today in general, he had a really bad day, overall. <laughs> but Tigo special. Maybe he should go back to one thirteen. But we will see. Th things can happen. So Danny and Sweetman are playing the Artis T92 and the GC. They still have the T100 light. EBR will be greatly missed because EBR in this situation can be used to spot the rail part in lower part of the water so he can see the rotations on time, maybe even possibly run away, God forbid. Now they actually have to leave 1907 there. This is such an old spotting position. It is. Not many people use it anymore because it just doesn't provide much. But you can see the rotations from the lower side, uh, which is something that BGVP did. So you can counter it with uh, spotting from there, because unless you actually send someone physically to dig him out, you cannot find him. It's very slow from both these teams. The CSA is like, we're not moving anymore. This is it. We're out of fuel. Yeah, they're defending so they can afford lack of fuel. On the other hand, Devi needs to fill out where the enemy is to make actually a proper they, they pressure. Know they know that there's nobody in C2. They know that there's nobody pushed up K-line. So they kind of know that everything is between D to K. I guess they're just afraid of going somewhere and getting surprised by like a massive trap because Buzuk didn't actually spot whatever crossed one line. I actually don't like the amount of tanks CSA has on E2. I think it's a big weakness. Like that area can be easily pressured. Yeah, um, D3 is open for Davy if they want to take it at some point. So I think the biggest weakness that uh, CSA has in this def defense currently this. The question is only will Devi actually realize that on time because these tanks are not going to get self-spotted. So Killer will have to do pretty much all the work since the uh, Buzuk is on 100 HP and they cannot risk his life for something like that. And there we go. He goes and tries to see what's going on this side of the map. I one shot coming in. Killer? Uh, he found one enemy. Yeah. I don't feel like he needed to take even that one shot, but okay, he gets to D3. So he's going to be spotting that out for Artie. Kill, killer. Second shot in, in Killer. Okay, Killer, calm down. Proxy spot is enough. All right, relax. You don't have to kill them. <laughs> you just <laughs> need to spot them. Uh, I feel like he's very eager here. Killa, to, uh, killa, killa. To make something happen. Trilla, trilla, trilla. I <laughs> do think that Danny will have a direct line of fire on towards him, though, with that T92. He does know they have two Artis. I bet he does know that. Yeah, they both hit the top of the hill, actually. So it's not that easy I'm for you. I'm not sure. I think it was only one. No, no, they both fired. Like, they, they both actually hit around the same oh, right. area. Like, you see that? It's a double yeah, splash yeah, yeah. there. Yeah, that would, that would be... That would, ooh, ooh, Zilka getting tracked again, man. He's getting fired from the city now. So Davy pushed up a little bit with those tanks up. Getting a little bit of free damage. Skurga, Tuxi now going on. The Skurga is getting tracked. Skurga is getting tracked again. Tuxi needs to go in front of him. Skurga is going to be dead here before anything Arty happens. will be out of reload very soon. And these Tuxi and Skurga will be in huge problem actually now. Ooh. Buzu came in. He found Nalo. So that's actually a good trade. This is a good trade. Trading 100 HP EPR for this. Tuxi and Skurga actually managed to make it because they got despotted in the nick of time. Really, really good stuff there. And now Davy does have that 907 there and H8 supported by a 277. If they spot these 907s running away, they're going to be doing a lot of damage on towards them. T92 should have an angle yeah, to he hit should. here. GC, not for sure. I think Danny... It's going to be a hard angle Danny just T92 fired. Also. Danny just fired on, on, onto Killer, so he does not have a reload right now. That was a mistake. He should, for, for, he should force and focus these two guys. Yeah, they have nobody that can really kill these tanks right now. Like, Skurga and Tuxi are very unchallenged. There's not much that can be done about it. I feel like Tuxi could be playing a little bit more proactive and even trying to get some shots, but, you know, if he peeks like this, you can see he exposes the whole top of the turret, which is all easy pens, but the ID is doing significant amount of damage on towards that. 
Yeah. And there is a connection by RTV ex- expected on Tuxi. Fortunately, Škrga didn't uh, actually sit close to him, so he didn't take Ow. it. And now we have a situation we've seen from BGVP, if you remember, with their 277 stuck. Two of them are really one shot. There is a huge counter push that Duck is pointing out from CSA coming in on one line. They already eliminated Killer, but there is a huge crossfire coming from Devi in that part of the city. Will it be enough to hold them off? I'm not sure. There's four Nano 7s pushing. They already stopped. There's about seven Devi tanks, I think, in the area. There's five on your screen, two more coming from the side. So these Nano 7s, if they keep going, they're going to be in trouble, actually. I don't think they can win this. They're trying to focus out. They need to kill two seven sevens now for free while they can. Don't think it's gonna happen. I feel like the 907s have reached now, and now these 907s are a little bit of a freebie. In the meantime, you can see Davy pushing up in the southern side of the map, trying to take out that 907 over there. There's still a 279, and the Chieftain Shifter goes down for that push. Yeah, actually. he can't. Man, he's in a crossfire between 907 from one side, 279, Chieftain, 907, and he pushed solo. You saw on the map. He was really, really far away from his teammates. Now, this is not a good moment for Davy. Davy will either have to counter push 907s in a city and try to prevail there, but they will be sniped, and there is double or the, to win the, they can't win the lower side of the map. Well, we'll they don't have the plays left because both 277s are one shot. Well, they are going to try and pick off these 907s under. In the meantime, the 277s, Tuxi and Skurga get picked up by the CSA side. Freebies has no longer anybody is in supporting towards them. They are now starting to converge towards the city. Davy needs to actually kill these tanks. These double RD are just going to continue doing damage after damage after damage. Nico and Zix here. I don't know if they're actually going to be able to win this trade against two 907s. Yes, 277 hits hard, but does it hit hard enough to make this work? Ghost pushing forward. Karana on towards Mud and Rod some micro engagements here. Kvita comes in with a kill on towards Mud. Radim is now going to be the next one to be focused in the meantime. Zix and Nico slightly winning their engagement, but could turn it any second. Radim is going to go down here. So that's another kill picked up. The HP is within 1,500 of each other. But I don't think that DV is doing this well enough to actually make this work. Another nice shot from Delphin there on towards Nico. Nico should get it, but Delphin will do or should do one more. He actually goes behind He's the building. behind the house. If Arty actually he doesn't have a reload yet. Nico, will he make the shot on Delphin? It's actually really crucial in this moment. Oof. He does spend the shell. Sweetman is on reload. There we go. Sakalito actually finishes that off. So if he's Sweetman, he shoots something else. Dan is on 30 seconds reload. It's still close, but in one moment they had almost identical HP. Now CSA suddenly has 3k advantage while I was talking this. Yeah, this, um, you know, Tuxi and Skurga taking so, Tuxi taking so much damage there and then being forced to recommit into the city. Ilya the minion is getting focused out by Artie here. Saka's pushing forwards. He wants him. He takes him down. And that is good stuff there from CSA. Just four tanks remaining left standing for the side of Davy. And what we predicted might happen is happening indeed. CSA is turning it around in Davy's faces and going to make it all even after six rounds. Even Steven here. I really expected Davy will actually, actually make a play around E3 to position snipers from different side and work with Artie from distance and you know to grind the tank the hp of those three tanks down like put one guy in hold on close to them when they are pulled back so they can't uh, like can't see yeah you have double arty maybe shooting that one tank but that's hit and miss and there is one arty and couple of tanks they can find angles on these guys and then you push in one moment not push 277 so early i think it was a bit premature there was... Uh, and good reaction by CSA, by the way, going that one line. Yeah, repushing one too, very good, but also in the south, some dubious plays being made. Let's be real about it. Yeah, they underestimated the number of tanks that CSA actually had there. I don't think they counted that well. Crossfire by CSA was brutal. 907 in forward, two heavies in a back Chieftain and 279 plus a 907 on a normal STRV position on F4. I mean, Shifter just disappeared. Yeah, he just literally just drove in and died. I mean, you, I don't know how else to describe it. And the it. other two guys were not even close to do nope. anything about it. To and then honest. they had to run and take damage from Foley, shooting them from behind. Nyx doing 3.5k visual damage. So Nyx is a good RT player. There is not, nothing to say about yeah. that. But this match is almost done. I mean, uh, although the camera is back on us, yeah, we like to be very much on it. The, the game is still not done until the RT kicks the oh, bucket. Seven, six, five, four. Nyx is going to live three. To Never surrender. Uh, it's over. So <laughs> <laughs> CSA make it all even here. Three He's not paying three. the repairs. This is this is the ideal scenario for BG underscore WP. To be honest, the more these teams play, the more tired they'll be, the more strats they gotta use, and the you know, just this, the, the the ideal scenario for them. It's a good scenario for them, but it's a good scenario for CSA after true. that. He must have also I would say the only loser in this scenario at the moment is Davy. True, true, true. Three to three. Moving on to... Cliff. Cliff. Oof. Good map always. 
Yeah. We've seen various things. We've seen uh, one of the most interesting thing was by far uh, pushed by BGVP, 15 tanks only, no Arta. And uh, I would say a bit disastrous Look at the reaction. Though. Look at the damage he did with that ID. Single ID, dude. 4K. And then look at... I watched him play, man. He streams from time to time. Like, he's really committed only to RT, you know? Yeah, I, yeah, I know. Sadly, he, he sends me, like, clips and, and links Dirty clips. on TeamSpeak <laughs> with him, like, RTs and, like, one-shotting stuff. And yeah, <gasps> If you want to learn how to play RT, feel free to go to his stream. That's for sure something you can learn. Like, if you're in that kind of perverse things. <laughs> but he's really calm. Like, I watch him and he's not nervous in randoms or whatever. Like, he comes, oh, I have a good angle here. I need to commit here, you know? So he has the feeling let's say it like that you know like in counter strike you have a feeling for a sniper or something like that for artists you need to have a feeling how long will your shell actually travel and where will it land it actually makes a huge difference and it's not that easy yeah you also have to enjoy eating while you're playing you get that benefit <laughs> also so it's it's a double do not advertise rt do not advertise it that much and the best part is if you see like the kills are or still mojo on the enemy team it's like totally ignore us because we suck <laughs> please i'm usually on the red line anyways the enemies i um i don't want to even talk about my <laughs> games against rt uh well it's 3-3 currently cliff is going to be interesting i do solemnly hope that they v will go very aggressive and i, I want to see like a good old uh, clash it is three to three here this is something like csa has the only big clashes here like they played against mvps yesterday now on cliff we will see devi and csa clash for a victory or a possible tiebreaker which would be on serene coast which we haven't seen a single time yeah serene coast everyone uh, was banning it yeah, my whole idea about playing Serena is to go C1. You win C1, you win the game. Everything else is not important. So just go heal and what go happens, C1. happens. Go C1. You win C1. Flip a coin. Yeah. If, they don't, if you don't go C1, you know, just turn everybody around the other way. All right. We will see if it comes to that. It's still far away. Like, Cliff can be taken both sides by either DV or CSA. Uh, the first game we're going to watch is defense of CSA. Doesn't Did matter. Did we see CSA play Cliff yet? I'm not sure I can check, to be honest. <laughs> I don't think so, but I'm not willing to put money on it. No. <sighs> Should I put money on it? They actually banned it in a match uh, against MEPS. Well, I know that Davy prepared to click. Black book, black book, black book. I've seen them play on it. I don't know how convinced I was about it, but I've seen it. <laughs> so I've, I've seen their preparation for it. Was preparation better than the performance yesterday? Yeah, 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 debatable. <laughs> Actually, debatable. I saw them lose. It sounds quite very convincing. I saw them lose a few times. I mean, honestly, though, no, if you playing against somebody else, the more you lose, the better, because you can learn way more. Unless it's not like stomps, you can learn more from losing than you can from just absolutely stomping wherever you're You learn nothing is. when you stomp anyone, someone, so basically there is no lessons to be learned there. Like, you either too good or the enemy is too bad, so there is nothing to be gained one of the two but uh yeah as you said like Davey had some trainings before this tournament i don't think csa actually did uh so they're relying the just only other team that actually did was probably bgwp they trained also yeah i'm pretty sure all i right. don't see why they wouldn't all right i don't think they did actually but okay i like mean i think they're the most committed team so I, at least like trainings between themselves at the very least I have no bloody idea because I actually didn't ask them. We will actually debate about that with them later when the time comes. Uh, at the moment here for Cliff, uh, I'm just hoping that Devi will not go into some kind of uh, suicidal mode now because they lost two games in a row. As you all may have noticed in the games, uh, us Balkan people do get slightly temperamental when something goes wrong. Slightly. 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 Okay. Yes. And we get slightly vocal in those moments. Slightly. Yes. So <laughs> I just hope like these guys will kind of snap out because they have a good core of a team. And there is a bunch of guys there who should be able to shake off that kind of atmosphere and bring them back into the game. One Chieftain for CSA, two for DV. Nothing really out of the order. Wait, no. Mojo, you, my little eye is seeing something. I don't see a single light on Davy. Exactly. This has to be a push. Like you have no yeah, other option. There is nothing to be done. Let's see. Let's see what this brings. Seagull is actually going to respond to It's a rather blind push also. Yeah, you will not. It's commitment. You have to actually commit. 
and be certain about it's it. It's like a kung fu movie. You imagine your victory already. CSA is going for the half half split though. Yeah, they just put all the heavies yeah, on the right and all mediums. If DV <laughs> just plummets down the middle, CSA instantly loses. I'm saying they instantly lose. They have to push one two immediately. Take it. Sigo takes a lot of damage. But you see those five guys that are down? Sigo, he has a really bad day today, man. Like whatever happens, he gets shot all over the place. So these 907, we'll see. Yeah, Four they're committing guys. immediately. Yeah, that's good stuff here. Will DV continue committing? Are they just going to fight on the corner? It looks like a corner fight so far. Not really wanting to commit into far. Sweetman getting focused out in this 277. Can they actually pick him up? It looks like he's in trouble. Sweetman gets struck, gets held. He's driving backwards now. DV's committing straight through with their whole team. You can see Sweetman falling. Silka It's going to be the next one here as they continue the rumble. On towards Zilka. Those tanks in the middle. Saka, Delphin desperately trying to get back on towards those rams. You see the 907s from 1 2. Now coming back, trying to get back in towards the fight. But DV controls the middle. DV controls the fight right now. They have to make this. Where Delphi needs to go down. You can see Joseph there with Ilya and his stuff still controlling the middle very, very well. They need to focus on tanks now. Lucan goes down and then they need to hold the middle and get back in towards it. This is a huge brawl coming in. Devi, as Ducky expected, pushing in with full force, trying to overwhelm the CSA. CSA being late like 10 to 15 seconds, I would say, to actually do something about it. But now they're coming in because they're controlling the middle side. So they have only Arty to shoot them in the back. Both of the other guys from Devi are on a lower side, having to brawl still between a crossfire. And then let's not forget, very important fact is there is a 907 on K5 by CSA who can shoot in the back still. 2,000 staggering HP of difference here in a, in a, in a favor of Davy. Joseph's in trouble there though on that ramp. He's getting focused out by Nalo. Nalo just about misses Mud now getting focused out between the rocks. That's Ghost and Nico from the side. Tuxi coming back in. Nico pushing forward. He wants to become Mud. He does. In the meantime, we lose Killer to 1-2 line. We have our own little fight as well. The HP is still 2,000 in favor of Davy. Yes, there's an RD in there for both these teams. So that's kind of negatable. The ram comes in from Chomi. Picks up tape. And now Derek is going to be the next one to be focused down. And Davy have just about done it. That straight up middle commitment well not from the beginning slightly delayed nix picks up delphin on the ramp which would have been a trouble for them but nix comes in with the secure zix is not going to be winning this one two engagement unless he sets will on fire which i don't think is going to happen but davy managed to do it anyways <coughs> so far though it's very interesting that seagull and then he <laughs> took that much damage and i understand that csa tried to set up a uh a trap in one too, but that delayed everything by so much. I don't think it even if it was a trap. I think uh, like CSA needed to see a spot to see where the enemy tanks are before they actually move. Because if they instantly push one two line, they can run into in this entire setup on one two line and equally lose. Yeah, but it slow. It's slowed this them is, down this, so this much. is like a Gordian knot, if you know what it is from the mm -hmm. history. Like when it was presented between Alexander, like uh, a knot that cannot be untied. You can only cut through. So. CSA in this kind of game, when they saw there is no light in Davy's setup, they had only one choice to make. Like, will they commit or not? They chose not to and they fell into the Davy's play. Davy doing the hard commit there. I feel like Joseph on that ramp, yeah, I understand he wanted to go save, but I do feel like he should have fought Delphine. Like, he almost got killed by Nalo. It's just a little micro kind of stuff, but it usually, like in this scenario, Davy does not have an EBR, it's an extra combat tank, it's 2000 HP of it's actual combat. It's also they are pressuring uh, less number of tanks with more, so yeah. it's bloody so, approach, it, but eventually you will take over the buildings and eventually you will take them down. And Sweetman instantly died. Yeah. There was no STRV or something like that or Leopard, it was 907 uh, sniping from the back for CSA. So 907 is a decent tank, but it's not the best rest of the sniper of them all, I would say. So it's not the great greatest support they could have, better than none, but still. And I, I believe, like, uh, position of, as you said, of Sweetman was a bit no, too open. No, no. They should have been more to the houses. Yes, yeah, Sweetman, zero, by the way. Just straight up that. Um. Should have been more to the houses. Also, Sigo took, like, 1,000 HP on a start. Even EBR, uh, sniping from the side, he can hit 907s for 400, 500 uh, This is damage. Malo, 17, 13, 9. Yeah. It's really not that easy in a 907 because you have to be shooting heat almost. I, I think he was the guy in the back. Yeah, he's the guy in K5, but it's not that easy for him because he has to shoot heat yeah. because it's 277s, 907s, and you know how random those can be if you just shoot yeah. APCR on distance. And then he has to be able to lead, not hit tracks. It's uh, it's so much easier <laughs> in an STRV. It, it could have been better for them. Nico had really, really, really good performance. He kind of has a steady performance through the matches that we've seen. 4K here. Every shot uh, connected but one, so quite good. Yeah. Um, Surprising, I would say. A very I, aggressive I, thought, I, 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 I would say CSA kind of flunked it here uh, from the start of the game.
Yeah. Um, I don't even know if Davy really needed to commit down. I mean, they did and it worked, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't even know if they had to after killing Sfitman. Yeah, I think so, because they had an advantage. So it's like if enemy gives you some something, like, why would you take just, like, a finger if you can take entire arm? Even then, Sfitman, like, driving like that, when you know the whole team is... Sigo did spot the whole team, Yeah, that's, much. that's what I said. Like, uh, the, the mistake was done on several levels. Like, they had to spot. They had to make sure where they are. They cannot just blindly go, like CSA, since they were split. But if they did that, I think those heavies needed to play a bit more cautious and not approach on any open area to take every possible house, rock, you know, every everything that will prolong their survival for maybe 10, 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, because as long as you live, you can do another shot and your teammates around you, like from another part of the map, can do shots, like it's even more important. So yeah, it's small mistakes. Like we've seen uh, a lot of these moments on uh, Himmelsdorf, as example, it was like a lot of, uh, small mistakes that, that are done, but when you gather them up, they pull a much bigger weight toward the end of the game. It's a harsh judgment to say. You cannot blame a game on one guy. It doesn't end like that. But everyone bears a responsibility as a player. That is that is, that is true indeed. Now, let's see if Davy continues this aggression they have shown in round one into round two on Cliff. Four chieftains, actually. That's more than we usually see. Yeah, well, we've seen the slower setups, to be honest. And if you don't want to no, press... There's no Leo, no SRV. Yeah, I guess they will just leave a 907 in the back. Because they do have an EBR and they do have an RT. Depends, man. Like, maybe they will try to push again, you know? I I think they will go pretty much full middle. The postman always knocks twice. Who knows? Maybe it works again for them. 907 again going for them only on a 1 2 line and everyone else pressing toward the middle. It does look like Davy wants to end this match with a bang and um, to, to just do huge pressure towards CSA. But to push this side here, I'm not so sure about that. This side is actually trickier to push than the other one. Well, we'll see about it. There's again five tanks from CSA in 1-2, and there's a 14... Well, sorry. There's 13 tanks from DV actually driving up, and this 1-2 is going to be very slow again. What is going to be the move here from DV? Did they cross back over if they take 1-2? Because I don't think CSA should be taking it. They're giving them the, the opportunity to DV to repush. If they Nalo, Nalo spotted them. They also have... Oh, <laughs> big hit by Dr. Nick Sosigo. How much? Uh, half of HP, he was in a position we were talking behind, like D3, D4, you know, where you position a Bachat and so on, but Nyx actually dug him out from there. That's a big difference, because that tank can do three shells for free every time when the enemy pushes, go back safe, and then do three in another. Like, that's actually a big loss. Oh man, Sigo really has a bad day today. <laughs> <laughs> well, so far, Nyx picks up one, so not good for Davy. There is, however, my biggest concern is those five tanks that are currently locked in 1-2 for CSA. Yeah, they're not moving at all. They're waiting for something to happen here. I wonder what would be a trigger. I, I would think like uh, being spotting so many tanks by now would be a trigger for I mean, them to move. I feel like right now the issue is they were they're not even contesting the middle whatsoever. They push those five guys down. The V crosses with what six. What timing are they waiting for? Are they, they waiting for the enemy to commit actually on the right side and yes, then to push? Yes, they have to wait for the V to play aggressive 9-0 and then take 1-2 because they... In the position that Davy was when they were in the middle, they would just cross six tanks over and go kill them. Yeah. Because CSA could never do enough damage to stop it. So they're going to try to kill the 907 for free on F F3-4 position. There they go. Here they go. Here, here they go. Coming but to also that guy, you can see, his positioning is completely different now. Yeah, he he's behind the whole down. They can't push that. Yeah. So he's not playing dumb. He's not just waiting for enemy to possibly do that. So that's a good read by Devi also. There is a bit of advantage here. Uh, 1500 HP for uh, Devi because they killed that light. Uh, and we can see a pressure now coming in from CSA. Devi is rotating back on time. They gave up on a push instantly. They saw them. They knew it would They're take They're going to still repush it. They're still going to repush it. You can see the movement mm -hmm. on the minimap. Look at it. And it's a big group. It's a risky judgment, I would say, because there is a couple of guys from uh, CSA out of the battle, but they can still take a huge damage in the back. Well, here we go, though. It's going to be Davy trying to cross over with the majority of their force killer leading the charge. Buzok hits the statue. This is not a museum, mate. This is a battlefield. you got to go on towards the tanks. Corona will free from the bottom side, and they will have to make this commitment here. Magma is going to lead the charge, and he's going to get focused out. They were so far away. They took so much damage on the crossing. Magma is going to disappear in one, two, three. 52 HP remains. Kvito now pushing in as well. Gets Amorak, repairs immediately the brunt of the 
AV force pushing true. Now they've lost a lot of HP. Magma goes down. Killer goes down as well. Karana now pushing from the bottom side on towards them as well. Shifter trying to farm them on the side. Buzok is going to be the next one to be focused out. Tape and Froly now coming in with more tanks crossing over. Tape actually gets tracked. That's not ideal. Kind of blocking his tanks. Now the HP, however, is swinging majority in towards the CSA favor. A CSA is doing really great job farming them in a side. I think it was way too risky move by Devi, who is actually defending. You know, the shield on the cap means defending, and they're defending by attacking the enemy. So it sometimes has the merit, but this was just foolhardy. As I said, already CSA saw them on time. They went down in hold up positions. Show them in a the side, show them in the front, counter pushed. Like, you do not have... I don't know, exponentially infinite amount of HP to work with. You have a limited amount you can see up. And that's what you can do. And now that says there is a double advantage for CSA in this game. Yeah, this is, this is not happening. It's going to be a tiebreaker. The closest match of the semis, as we predicted, is going to go all the way. Is it going to be CSA or is it going to be Dave V? Well, this round definitely going in favor of CSA. That repush, it takes so long. If you're not actually in the middle, it takes forever to get across. Hey, we're gonna watch the tiebreak. We see there is an effort coming in. Joseph is doing more than 3,000 damage here, but it's just simply not enough. CSA will take this round, and it's gonna be a tiebreaker. It is going to be a tiebreaker. I think that was uh, difficult stuff here for the side of DV to actually pull off. Um, I would much rather have them play a slower game around the hill than this. I don't think they were forced to do this move. They already had advantage that that light, they should have just made normal rotations and bide their time because they were defending. This was a bit harsh. Not needed. Yeah, um, that, 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 that repush takes so long. I mean, if they're in the middle, then fine because you take one shot crossing, but now... It was I just like you take, uh, as we said, like they sh take shots from the ramp in a side. You take shots from the hold down tanks in the front hold out tanks from, who are from this side, start pulling backwards to draw them deeper in a crossfire. And you don't push with 15 tanks on them. You can't, you still have heavies in your team and things, so it's only mediums. And these tanks that even arrive there, they cannot really push as a single unit. There is a first or second guy coming. We saw those two first guys got deleted like nothing. And then comes the second force from CSA in your back. How do you deal with that? Uh. I don't, I, I don't think repushing there was the right choice, but they went for it and we saw how bad it went. Um, the thing now is though that in terms of uh, mental advantage, CSA won the last round to bring them into tiebreaker, they have the mental advantage. And also CSA, we know they have the balls to play the tiebreaker. We already saw it with MVPS. There is no hesitation there. We got an information that uh, Devi will defend uh, in a tiebreaker. So okay. the tiebreaker we said is Syrian Coast. We haven't seen it a single time. I hope they're prepared. So this is a premiere, guys, in this tournament. A first time played. Well, we know first how the last tiebreaker team. went for uh, for CSA. Yeah, they. Uh, we said it like it was like really unfortunate for MVPS because all the rounds before were brilliant and really close, but that one ended up in 15 to zero, man. That was not pretty. I wasn't. Um, Serene Coast. I want. I really wonder how well prepared these teams are for Serene. Who knows? It's not really a standard map. I mean, people do play it on uh, Clan Wars and so on, but I would not call it even remotely a core map. No, it's uh, it's it's been a very... I don't know, people have tried m lots of different things on it as well, but majority... Fr North seems to like not favor going towards C1, South seems to go favor towards C1 in terms of actual fight. Well, Davy is playing the South, so they might actually do that because they are defending. But, I don't know, overall, I, on Serene Coast, I prefer when people split a bit, you know, they play the water side a bit and so on. I don't feel like CSA is the kind of team that will just drive to C1 with 13 tanks. I mean, they might surprise me, but I don't feel like they're the kind of team that goes to C1 with like 13 tanks and it's like, let's go. Uh, for me, it's, it's too big of a risk because you can actually get capped. And it's no way to be certain to spot the entire enemy team. You actually have to send an EBR in up front really deep for that, which is quite risky. And Sigo does have a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Sigo, man, just getting focused on and bullied, dude. Like, it's really un unnatural how much uh, they're actually getting shots at him. Like, and this arty shot at the end was like, really, like, I think he was like, like, serious. This was really? the, the <laughs> this yeah. last game was the game where they had to slow it down, though. Mm. Well, still, 
Uh, CSA coming in uh, in this tournament, sometimes like with their own merit and really good plays, sometimes enemy making mistakes like this and giving them gifts. And CSA by no means is a clan to say no to such things. When you give something, you pay with interest in addition. So we are watching like a really close game, 4-4, four to four, best of nine. And the uh, next game that we will watch and sitting decides the winner and the uh, last finalist of this tournament. And we already said yesterday, uh, the winner of this tournament, beside the prizes that were stated, is going on Wargaming Fest in Minsk uh, somewhere in September to fight against the best uh, CIS 19th, clan. 19th, I think? I'm not sure. Hmm? 19th September, I think? I'm not sure. I can't remember. But it will be all due noted when, when the time comes and so on. The important things, whoever wins, represents Europe. Against... I don't know. I want to see Korm make it this time. We've seen Tornado a few times now. Well, mm. I want to see Korm. Who knows? I mean, obviously everything depends, right? Um, these teams take a little bit. I don't know. Like, I, f I feel like, you know, I don't want to be the bearer of this kind of news, but they V, they're so emotional. I don't know if they can recover from going into tiebreaker. Honestly, I don't know that that push in the cliff was really good when they did it first time, but I think they overdid it in the second game. There was no need. They had for to that. slow down. They just had to slow down. It's it's the point. Some of the members they have like a few minutes now, so some of the older members need to kind of put the foot down and say, okay, chill. Like need to focus on the game and play at their own or own pace. And uh, I'd say they had a really great opening in this game here. So it's just like something they allow themselves to slip from their own hands. They had a match win. They had a match point there. Well, I think the teams are almost ready. Sorry, I was completely distracted looking at I it. was thinking, like, what was Davey playing last time I played with them on Syrian Coast? Mm, C1 push? I, um, <laughs> I think I played mainly Serene, and I drive, like, 13 tanks to C1. Every time? Pretty much, dude. Just two seven nines. Okay, C1 though. I, <laughs> I mean, look at the amount of chieftains they brought. There's three nine sevens and EBR and RD. Rest is chieftains. Alrighty. Slightly less for CSA. Yeah, they have a couple of 279s, don't forget. 279s are a real problem to kill when they reach C1. Yes. Because they go high and you can't pen them. Um, you can explain, like, not many people actually have 279s and not everyone play the Gold League. Why? Can you tell the people? It, ha it has a belly. I don't know how much armor the belly is, but it's enough to where if you shoot through the track and hit the belly, you can't overmatch it, so you don't pen it. At yep. any given point. Also, and when the, the tank is pointed upwards, the, yeah, the upper hole gets a better angle, which pretty much means zero percent uh, of chance. And of it has of four tracks, so you can't shoot it between the tracks because there is nothing between except tracks. Mm, there is a, like a super tiny spot. Yeah, like you, yeah, good luck with hitting that, right? Yeah, I mean, if you track him, you can hit it. It's not super easy, but it does look like both these teams are actually going to C1. C1 Mojo. best tactics in Europe, guys. No problem whatsoever. <laughs> One tank left in each base, 907 for Davey Oof. and 279 left for CSA. Everyone else, Davai. That is going to be a big play here. We're going to have to see how this works out. Buzo got a lot of information, though. He knows the 907 is down. I think these teams have... Uh, actually, Davey has, like, one more tank here in the scenario. You, however, have to play aggressive. You cannot be bullied down. That's the main thing here every time. It's you like have mines, to the man. Ground. You cannot get bullied down from the middle. If you do, you lose. Delphine, Zilka, and Will are taking the force front from the CSA. Shkrga, Magma, General Zix, Chomi are counter-pushing from other side. Zilka is taking a lot of damage. He's on one shot already. Here comes the fight, or he's Chieftains facing off against each other so far. Davy getting a little bit of the advantage and towards it. EBR chasing EBR. There's Bat Niners. The 279 is currently out of the fight. Though. Davy is starting to make an aggressive move. They're pushing forwards. Magma is getting focused out. Drops towards 84. Is forced to back off. This HP is almost completely even between these two teams. It's just going to be trade after trade. 907 is now flanking from the bottom side. That's Nico and Korana. How does CSA react towards this? Is there a reaction even coming out? Danek and Cosmo are actually dropping off. HP is dropping on CSA side, but it's dropping more on Davy. And Davy does seem to be in trouble right now a big hardy shot comes out another one from Davy as well 2000 lead now Asa is the first one to fall and it looks like CSA is currently leading this engagement oh but they all just lost two tanks and Davy lost one there is two three thousand advantage for CSA but the damage is going like up and down on both sides like equalizers magma still surviving on those 80 HP it's not a thing to be neglected CSA actually dropping now below DV coming back into the play but Froly if he reloads he will actually finish up Nico 
Charlotte falls down. There is a pressure in the base of CSA. How will this end up? Art is just lost on CSA side. The most important part right now is Shifter farming in the side. The Chieftains are now playing aggressive. They're getting flanked by the EBR. CSA is trying to hold on here on Dear Life, but they don't have enough tanks. Ghost picks up Mud. Nyx picks up Dexter. And here comes Joseph. Here comes Rose. Here comes Skurga as well. They want to make this commitment here. Ghost goes down towards it. That's only 600 apart, but the gun in the game, Mojo. Frolly has so much HP. Saka has so much HP, but they're not really contributing enough. They're far back. He even misses that shot. Joseph goes down now. Saka is getting flanked as well. I don't think they can hold on at this point. Sweetman brought... Uh, Sweetman drops off here, looking down towards the one shot, and Mojo Shifter from the side is putting so much pain on towards them. Yeah, it's a huge problem for them. That one 907 left in the base proved to be better than 279, who's much slower and cannot do that much in the engagement and rotation. Can you imagine, like, we were talking about, like, one uh, rock, one snowball that can make a difference in the game. I guess Shifter was actually that one in this one. Yeah, Shifter coming with so much damage from the side. We'll have to see in the post stance as Kurga picks up Saka, and it's gonna be Davey. It's been a close close game. It's been a hell of a fun game. C1 was the name of the game, but the positions, especially Shifter, has 3.3k visceral damage on the screen here. That is a lot from the side. He got in between those buildings and he started pinging them from behind and that really swung the odds in the favor of uh, really hurts Because he can finish off the tanks, he can pressure them. Also EBR won for DV. So they, he and Shifter won against the other EBR. They managed to take the RT, which is in these moments when everyone is on 50 HP, 100 HP, yeah, 300 HP. Like you can get not Bombardier, you can get a quadruple Bombardier in that kind of a moment. If Frolly was there, they would have probably won that, but Frolly went towards the, the middle of the map to help out against Corana and Nico and Sigo. The last man standing is going to fall here as well, and it's going to be Davey in overtime. Uh, Sigo is like, I'm out, boys. I'm going to take a swim. It's really hot. Yellow submarine. <laughs> yeah, well, unluckily enough for Sigurd, it takes a few more seconds and it will be DV 5 to 4 to pick it up. And it's been a close one. At one moment, it didn't look good for DV, but then, you know, switch shifter from I behind. I actually thought that uh, they will have the game, like the CSA in one moment, but DV managed to really outplay them. Like toward the middle of the engagement, they although losing so much HP on heavies, they were losing the heavy. Yeah, heavy and then line. They, they slowed down and on then the shifter the, farm. Yeah, and the rotation came in. So that was a really good call. It, you could see that they actually made some uh, improvement from the last game. And congratulations to Devi by far now, because uh, this was as close as it gets. And it, it was sold in tiebreaker, as it should between such good clans. Yeah, and it's going to be a unicum here for Devi. They, I don't think they've ever made a finals in their life, so it's going to be their first ones. That's gonna be uh, it's gonna be rough for them, but Shifter coming in strong there from the side with a lot of damage. He was very significant in that fight, especially because the chieftains can't angle towards him and angle towards the other chieftains. Yeah, but you always have to worry about, about one game at a time. Like uh, Davy opened strong, they were winning Himmels or 2 0, then they ended up on a kind of a bit of really bad foot after the games, being 3 3, then Cliff. They already had a match point, they threw it, so I, I believe at the end of the day, they do deserve this because they did show more than CSA but I would not underestimate the contribution of CSA here, they were playing really sturdy, well, good tactics overall, good clash to watch for all of us and I'm actually satisfied I'm good well, This was a very good semi-final between CSA and DV and CSA giving us all the content, Mojo, first against MVPS, <laughs> now against, uh, against DV, especially on Redshire yeah. um, So, so far it's so good, and uh, now, soon-ish, soon-ish, uh, we'll have to see BGWP against Divi. The wild predators and the wild delicious wishes. And the wild predators in their first tournament ever, bring Whoa. it home. Will the predators be find the Divi hey, delicious? Man, they must have, that, that's going to be some sweet hoodie if they do win, Bulgarian wild predators. Well, that's uh, too early to say, because maybe it will be delicious hoodie, you know. That's so true. It's but a one-on-one -on -one team. Like, of course, by experience, we will all put uh, Bulgarian Wild Predators, uh, first uh, Bulgarian champion ever. <laughs> uh, but uh, our social media segment is ready, and they are eager to say something about all of this. So Hello. I'm still doing this. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to have to keep doing this. Do you need this one? This is better. Th th that's far. Better looking, <laughs> but I won't steal it from yeah, you. You don't want to look <laughs> fancy? Feminine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so awesome games coming from there. Really, really close. Our first tiebreaker, I think, for today. Uh, I think we had one yesterday, but no, that was really close. Had some awesome clips from this game.
Uh, we have some clips from game one, but not that many compared to game two, so I think that's mostly down to the amount of battles that got played on there. Uh, we had some really good engagement in chat. A lot of people finally got the code that they're looking for by now. Yes, by the time finally. you right. get to our stage, so uh, congrats on the code. Keep you out for the the next one. Yeah. Uh, I think we've there got are one already or two more. Four, four out there, and we have three more that we will be sharing after this break and okay. later on so if you collect five of those you are going to get the garage lot and a style and if you collect ten including the ones from yesterday you are going to get a premium day awesome that's, that's pretty cool I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to activate them myself but i usually have to go through all of these clips so no yeah. joy for me well i haven't activated <laughs> anything i mean the code is limited to only 5k activation so we know that there is a lot of people watching the streams right now so you oh have yeah. to be super quick and redeem it fast because otherwise it's gone yeah there are there's more than five people uh, five thousand people watching at the same time yes. right now so you have to be really really fast yes. when you see those so maybe next time <coughs> i don't know we may increase the number of activations Maybe if you think they're popular let's enough, see, but let's see. we need to hear that in the chat if you if you'd like to see more activations for the codes on yes. there. Probably uh, they want to see more. Probably, I can't imagine why anybody'd want to have more codes. <laughs> I mean, that's it's such an alien thing. Most people are like, "No, nah, yes. I don't want codes. I don't want free things." Now they want fuel. Now, now it's all about the fuel. Fuel everywhere. Give me the fuel, please. And the codes of fuel, which we are working on. Uh, we do have two winners from the last question, which was. What is fa uh, what is Echidna famous for doing during streams, usually when I'm on there for some reason? Uh, and that uh, was, of course, throwing confetti or launching confetti or I sprinkling confetti. I just could have had a cup with some confetti right now. The confetti's back. I, I'm going to go around the office, <laughs> anywhere around where Echidna kind of hides things, confiscating the confetti and burning it all. <laughs> so <laughs> you much did confetti. that once, but, uh, yes. you know. I thought I'd managed to get them all, and then I f no, no, there was more confetti to be found. So there are the two winners on the screen for people who uh, were got the answer correct and chosen at random from the chat, both YouTube and Twitch. Congratulations. We do have another question to ask for people uh, who maybe have been kind of checking out yesterday's stream, might have picked that up, or if you've watched in previous other streams on our channel, will probably know this already, which is... I would prefer to actually ask this later. Oh, you want to ask it like you want yes, to tease? Yes, because let's go for the clips. You want to go first. through clips? Okay. And th because I know once we ask this question, everybody's going to get crazy in the chat and they <coughs> won't pay attention to anything else. Okay, so you want to come. ask this after the clips? Yes. Okay. So we have. I'm going through the clips still right now. A lot of people have started to name their clips better. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Well done. There are still a lot that just say World of Tanks, Clan Rivals, Tournament Day 2. Uh, these take a little bit longer to go through. Uh, most of them do comment on Daki's awesome speech and fast talking skills, which is cool. Uh, some of them are talking about Mojo's uh, song choices and uh, little rhymes that he has, which is also pretty cool. Uh, so keep up the good work. Try and keep renaming them and uh, we'll try and pick people from there. So we're going to be showing the clips from game one soon once our video man is ready. So uh, let me just find this window for you. Uh, just waiting on the the, uh, the video person to just catch up. He's uh, he's, he's, he's busy uh, at the second, so uh, as soon as it's good to go. Uh, on the screen, you can see here where Camil was just rushing down on the uh, the one-two line in his EBR. Uh, this is where Daki got a little bit excitable, where he managed to spot out the enemy EBR, clear out the line, and surprisingly survived long enough to uh, try and counter the STRV. Now, it did result in a, a different tank dying on a three spot rather than the STRV. Uh, but it was actually something that allowed the rest of BGWP to kind of push up and keep getting that line, and it meant that everybody knew where to aim at the STV in future. This clip, you can't hear the audio, but you can maybe guess this is where Daki had the awesome moment where he forgot to say armchair and knew uh, what armrests were. Uh, this part is where you will see uh, Papa Pawain uh, climbing the hill in a bat chat. Apparently this is uh, really, really hard to do. I say apparently, I've never done it myself, so I wouldn't trust myself. Uh, I would probably fall down. Uh, you can kind of see where, I don't know if you've got the clip coming up next, where they tried to have an EBR going up there, but it failed. Unfortunately, Papa Boyan got picked up trying to climb. Um, no, sorry, he killed somebody else trying to climb. Here is why Papa Boyan had to try and result in climbing, where poor Camille had the free hill, he was sorted, he was ready to go, everything was in the bag, and then boop, hit the <laughs> rock and had to fall down. So Papa had to uh, 
pick up the piece and uh, try and climb backwards in his bat chat. He, I, uh, as far as I remember from that clip, he managed to get all the way up to the top. Uh, got a fairly decent game from that with a little jiggle and wiggle going with his bat chat, sometimes going backwards and forwards. So he managed to do a really good job of this and it helped him control that section of the map. Uh, so hopefully that one, uh, we've got two clips for that. That was clipped quite a lot from that game. Uh, just because poor Camille. And then this is the part where BGWP were pushing around and it looked like the artillery round was going to control this but they managed to get a nice crossfire from the bottom pushing from the left and from the encircling moment where Nomi just absolutely annihilated. And this was where uh, Daki of course had his another uh, Rap God moment title where everybody was talking about how quickly Daki was writing but this was actually the moment that helped uh, BGWP secure this game now where Nomi just got caught in an absolute crossfire on there. So that was the last clip from game one. There weren't that many clips. Uh, only five in total that people seem to uh, actually want to see. We have, on the other hand, from game two, I'm already at 10, and that's before I have two more games to go through. So clearly that a lot more people were excited and uh, encouraged by uh, the BGWP game. So what do you think is going to happen next? What do you expect to see during the, the following games? The following games, uh, honestly, I'm not entirely sure because BGWP have come in fairly strong today, um, but you never know because, yeah, you, you never know with these. Sometimes the experience kind of wins out in the finals where they can get to see a lot of the uh, the enemy tactics, etc. But it's always a chance that uh, maybe a less experienced team might bring something new and fresh and just catch people by surprise. Uh, but you, you, you never, never know. As soon as you say, I think this will happen, then they usually do the exact opposite and you look like a fool. So you, you never commit to that. Uh, I think I might know who Daki is rooting for. I'm not sure who Mojo might be rooting for, though. Who do you think okay. might win? I don't know. I think the BGWP. Maybe. I can't imagine why. <laughs> Nobody can. Nobody can figure out that at yeah. all. Uh, so just going through the clips on there, and I believe we've gone through this, we've gone through that, we've gone through the giveaway. Have we shared the Chill Blast again? Not yet, uh, but we can take a look at the PC because it's so <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I know that you want it, but no. Yes. So yeah, so if you want to get this awesome custom made PC from Chill Blast up to a value of 2K yep. pounds, pounds, then you have to sign up to our campaign, follow our channels and refer friends for the chance to win that. It's awesome. We are going to pick the winner later today. The campaign is open until 7.30 CEST and the winner is going to be announced probably right after the final. Mm -hmm. So make sure to be around. I'll, I'll work on it. I'll try. I'm sure I won't <laughs> be going anywhere in time. Yes. Um, I, I know uh, Mojo and Daki are probably going to be waiting for us to go across there and start fanning them again with their executive VIP treatment. But uh, I, I'm pretty certain at this stage those should be the one. They, those guys should be coming over here with the the palm leaves and fanning yeah, us. Yeah, they disappear. But that's true. Yeah. They should come to us. They and should so be the one doing this. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel it's unfair with this one. Uh, so I'm just looking at the clips again. I've got a few from game two. Poor Seagull is picking up a, a fair bit of uh, comments from chat that were uh, telling me he's a bad boy. Because at the minute, one of the regular comments was that poor Seagull today has no, that no matter what he's done today, every time he's gone somewhere, he's managed to get shot every single time in every single game. Bless him. Every time he's tried to do anything, he's ended up getting shot or destroyed quite early on. I think one or two times he's managed Same to get Same when you, out. you know, you end up being flopped. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, pretty much. No matter what I do, occasionally I will find a way to flip uh, flip my tank. Uh, and I know uh, Dr. Nix, who uh, Ducky was not too happy about comment, like bringing up too often, has managed to carry a lot of their games today with uh, his artillery play. He's managed to have some really impactful moments on there and um, get some last minute snipes, I, I think is the way to do it. I know it's artillery, but he's managed to really time those last hits pretty accurately to uh, help control the ends of matches. Uh, yeah. Of course, I'm just looking through some more clips, and uh, there's the uh, the codes. Everybody's clipping the codes and the, and the, course, and the banners and the course. codes. So that's everybody's making sure that they can see the, all of those. Um, and yeah, I have got plenty to go through now. Uh, and as you can see, more of Daki rapping things. So uh, we we all want to hear and see more people requesting a Daki rap remix. Yes, even th the, that's e what I want to, to yeah, actually say. We, we want to see a Daki rap remix, even though he says he wants a shout out. Clearly, Daki needs uh, needs some encouragement for this uh, rapping video that he has going on there. I'm curious to see how this goes. Yes, it something <laughs> also with this uh, Daki got the way the emote. Yes, <laughs> yes. And the wins 
yeah, everything there you included. Go. Some more Daki spamming chat with Mojo uh, alongside. Uh, Mojo has had some wonderful moments at the moment where he's uh, make little puns going in there with the songs. Uh, Oops, I did it again, for instance, was one of those. <laughs> uh, so th that's been clipped a few times. Make sure you check those out in our clip channel. We see all of them. Uh, and when you get to see those, you will see why we're kind of looking for better naming system because 90% of them all have the same name from today. That's true. Uh, so it takes a while to go through. You can sort by views, but you will see some from a few years ago. So if you want to focus on this weekend, uh, create and sort by the uh, time that it was created, and you'll be able to see the ones from today and from yesterday to focus on, as well as any from Friday if you're interested in seeing the home front one, where I didn't flip a tank, thankfully. I didn't flip anything. Um, you can see the games from yesterday where Chitna uh, played a KV2. That, that's another moment where... Oh, well, let's, <laughs> let's forget about that. <coughs> Why? <laughs> no, not for, we can't forget about the KV2. Yeah, well, that was a great lesson, actually. So you got to learn how to defeat the TOG. That's true. That's true. Well, one, one of the tanks that I like to play at the end of every stream, because I like it. Yeah. So, yeah. No, no. So that's okay. Uh, we have this. I'm going to check on my chat right now. Where is the fuel, Ikibu? So when, when Slim Cop gets to this stage in 10 minutes in the past, uh, the fuel is on the way. Uh, the people who win will eventually get the fuel. You can check out the fuel from yesterday's stream, uh, yesterday's stream, Friday stream. It's all one big day at the moment uh, on that one. Uh, I want to say hello to everybody in chat. Keep chatting, keep engaging. It's awesome. You are all so cool. Keep on asking all the questions, the codes. Hello to everybody in YouTube as well. Keep up to date with the questions. It's really cool. Thank you to all of our mods doing... Uh, <laughs> Doing an awesome job. Sorry, just w watching Raven making some awesome comments there in the Twitch chat as usual. Raven being amazing. As always. As always. Always. And so where's the fuel? I Get just see that they found another uh, code, actually. Yep. Yep. So they're finding all the codes. Yeah. So this is the fifth code of the day. So make sure to redeem all of them <laughs> if Please. you haven't. Make sure because you Because you will get uh, made in uh, the USSR style and a garage lot. Okay. So okay. super cool. Plus the, what is it, um, a cadaver inscription. Okay. K Sorry, yeah. what was it? Cadavia. Cadaver. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm sure one Are of us pronounced that right. Are you trolling? No. No? no. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> I would never <laughs> troll anybody, ever. I'm innocent. All right. I yeah, completely. except for the confetti part, I am sure that you are planning your revenge. Not confetti, it's glitter. I'm definitely planning glitter. So we're almost ready. Ichina's okay. worried about okay. the glitter. Yes. There's going to be a glitter bomb. You'll see. I will see that. Okay, let's ask the question for the, you know, the next pack of fuel. Or okay. you want to the call it? Fuel. So let's see. What's Ikebu's favorite tank? That's the question. So if you answer correctly, you may win some fuel. I feel like I'm in my back teaching days. Were you paying yeah. attention to what I just said? If you were paying attention, you may know the answer. Yes. It was only a short while yeah. ago that I said this. Yeah. I definitely feel like I'm teaching again with this. So yes. yeah. They will know. They will know. They should know. Anybody yeah. that's watching regularly will know because it's the best tank in the game. Hands down. No questions asked. Uh, but we're almost ready to transfer you back over to the Rap Master Daki and the really, really awesome and cool Steel Mojo. Get it? Get it? Cold Steel. There we go. <laughs> Bad pun. Bad pun. Terrible pun. Thank you very much. Enjoy your last game. Well, Iki, I'll, I'll, I guess i got to wait for you to write me a rap, and then we'll put it on a track. Maybe like a, this one. What do you think was the best tank of them all? Best tank of them all? Mm -hmm. In the game? Mm-hmm. I just like... I, was, I, I, <laughs> needed, I needed a second. <laughs> I was collecting my thoughts. I'm like, is he talking about the game or what? 279. Like tractor. I actually have like 300 games in that thing, man. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I, it's actually, it was, it's, it's just like bashing. I think this is the only thing you can kill like 10, 11, 12 enemies easy. Yeah, man, just put the binos on that, that gun, pew, pew, pew. But these teams are going to have to pew, pew, pew against each other as well. BG underscore WP against Delicious Vicious for the finals of the Clan Rivals Tournament. The, the winner of this does not only get the, the the money prize, obviously, they also get the trip to the War Gaming Fest in Minsk. So we have BGVP, aka Fame Under Disguise, is Grinches from Bulgaria, Wild Predators, and they are trying to lurk upon delicious, vicious Devi, a Balkan clan. First time in finals now, 
and we will see what can they show us. We'll have to see. Um, We've seen quite a match between them and CSA now, and uh, Devi won fair and square in a tiebreaker and uh, overpowered CSA in those last moments. And even like that, it was a really close game. There is um, downsides and upsides to playing the match before. Mm -hmm. The upside is you're warmed up. You, you're literally just going from game to game. Yeah, batteries do get kind of <laughs> exploited a bit. The downside is it's Davies first finals ever, as far as I remember. Against a really experienced team. Yeah, so... Like we were talking about guys who were winning everything for the last two years. Yeah. They don't have much time to prepare. They didn't have much time to prepare for this match specifically. They should have prepared beforehand already, obviously. Yeah. So we'll the have main to the main problem with this is usually when you play some maps, they will have to recycle or have plans B, and that's it. I'm excited for Ensk. I am uh, very curious to see. I've seen some some replays, Mojo, and seeing as there's delay now, anyways, it doesn't matter anymore. Do we know what's banned yet? Um, I think it was because Serene Coast and Live Oaks. I think right. I'm pretty sure BGWP banned Serene Coast from what I saw and uh, Davey banned Live Oaks. Yeah, so we're still waiting our lovely secretary to bring first, us there. First <laughs> map is Ensk, so there mm -hmm. is that. Um, and I'm curious, Davey practiced this map a lot actually. And yeah, we've we also it. seen a couple of games, by two games by, uh, by uh, BGWP playing on Ensk. So I believe they even recycled all the time. So it's going to be interesting to see will they actually change in this match or they will just go with their play no matter what. Also, as we said, like uh, they do have presence of Shokish and uh, Stefan today and they do look much more confident. So it might be uh, that we will see even some different plays. Of course, we don't see like uh, guys like uh, My Story and Insane in their team and we can't see someone like Alpha who is also didn't play a campaign so on but most of their team is here out of those 15 guys. So just a quick look, like I said, BGWP uh, banned Serene Coast and then followed up by Davey banning Live Oaks. The first map then is Ensk. The After that Live Oaks, it's a good choice. Yeah. First map being Ensk, second map being Proko, third mm -hmm. map being Cliff, the fourth map being Himmels and the tiebreaker is gonna be Retro. Our last map, Himmelsdorf against BGWP. Hands down, guys, you're brave. <laughs> I'm gonna say that. Well, uh, we'll have to see how Hemos goes. I, I don't know if it comes to Hemos uh, and Davy is down. I don't have. Uh, that's much what I'm faith. saying. Like that's really brave choice. Yeah. But uh, it was not their choice because, uh, based on the picks, last map pick had BGVP and they were just leaving Hemosdorf out there to hang. Yeah, there's like no a way. Sword. I mean, for BGWP, you either pick Hemosdorf as first map, I think, or as last one, mm. because you know. You're confident on it. You've, you've won so many games on Hemelsdorf, not just against European team. Yeah, they can teams. allow themselves not to pick it. Yeah. And it was just the last remaining death of a Redshire. Why would they play Redshire over Hemelsdorf? <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. There is no single reason for them to do that. So Davy was pretty much out of the options. What will be tiebreaker? Tiebreaker is always a map that just left out. You ban one each in best of nine, four are picked, two each, and then whichever stays, that's a tiebreaker. That's how it goes. There's the rules. Predictions. We have to do them predictions hmm. I know what I predicted in the uh, in the in the prediction game and I'll be very honest uh, I'm gonna go with 5-2 for BGVP I predicted against AV and I predicted 5-2 for BGWP and uh, that's only if they play Ansk and Prohorovka correct if they start slacking there it might be even 5-1 I just need I need just need video team to cut this out. <laughs> so no I man, it's an honest assessment. I know. I I, based on the I, I picked seen. a bit my heart, my, my head and not with my heart. But to be honest, I prefer to stand corrected when these things happen. Yeah. I really prefer. I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna be like, oh my god, Davy. I think they're uh, so amazing that they're just gonna swipe away this BGWP team. I do believe solemnly believe that they can bring something if they bring their a game they can make it close they can maybe and that's a mm -hmm. maybe big maybe win if everything goes well for them this is the best opportunity they'll, they'll, they'll ever get i think to actually win i'm gonna say it like this uh, uh great teams are not made overnight that is and true. we are talking about team that's been playing together or against each other uh, in gold league before then in a clan and so on so they have the guys from bgvp are there a long I, time. I understand. Like the amount of cooperation between them is simply 
high level. I understand. But at this point, Davy should have some sort of decent cohesion between their players as well. If well, they definitely have the huge desire because they are still together and uh, they are playing on this level and they have desire. To, they overpowered even their own mentality and managed to win a tiebreaker just, mm. just now. So that's a big plus. And that's a big morale boost, I would say. And I hope they will bring some of that game uh, into this one. But uh, in a game against BGVP, every mistake uh, they manage to make uh, will cost a lot. Like, really a lot. Yeah, uh, I'm very curious to see Ensto, because like I said, between these two, two teams, I've seen some replays between uh, Davy and Russians, and it's 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 so weird how Russians play, man. It's, it's honestly Have they actually managed to get Russians team to play with them? Yeah, it's, nice. it's honestly incredible. Like they, Who did they, they get? Um, I don't remember. I think it was Pounds or something. I don't know. It was mm -hmm. the clan with Liquidator in it. You know Liquidator, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they were in incredibly aggressive, incredibly fast, and they did some incredibly weird stuff. That worked incredibly well, actually, for what it is worth. Some insanely weird pushes, which nobody on EU does. It's just so weird. But then if you think about it, it does kind of work. And it's kind of weird in a way. All right. Like, uh, I can just say from really old times when I used to play Gold League, when we were practicing with the Russians, it was pretty much as everyone else. One side bashing. And then you watch the replays and you see what the hell happened. <laughs> Like, <laughs> what's, what's the mechan mechanic behind the game I didn't understand so far? So getting a, a new point of view, like people always say, okay, this is meta, but if something is meta, it doesn't mean it's the smartest thing on the world. It just means someone just didn't make anything smarter yet. Yeah, that is, that is, there's always new things coming out, which I like, but we're getting into the first round here between Davey and BGWP on Ensk. So far, the lineups, Mojo, decent amount of TDs for both these teams. No real surprise. Five of them on BGVP side, four of them actually on Devi. That's actually less. We even saw plays with 60 Ds and so. Uh, Failure playing on his VK 701K. <laughs> We've seen that also before. So let us see. It does look like BGVP is playing something very similar to before, sending most of the tanks to the right side of the map toward the rails and open. Yeah, you can see BGWP. This is kind of similar to what they've done before, I would say. Leaving some tanks behind, but mainly rail focus for both these teams. And you can see already a big force of Davy actually crossing over towards the field. So far, these teams seem to be running a similar-esque strategy. It doesn't look like they want to give the field to the BGVP. They've already seen the results uh, of that in previous matches. So all good for me. It does look like it's going to be a big brawl in the field. It does look like that. There's, uh, I think, four Chieftains for BGWP moving towards the zero line. Already damage being traded so far. The engagement going in the favor of BGWP slightly, though. Buzuk takes some damage. Tuxi is taking some as well. Now, that's a 268 crossing over. Zeke's taking some damage on that cross. Needs to be careful there with that 268. Even a little bit lucky to take no more for that. But so far, initial trades definitely BGWP's. Yeah, Tuxi needs to be way more careful here. If he get, yeah, I mean, I think like uh, BGWP will start HE him really soon. Yeah, Shifter in the meantime takes Shifter. so... Shifter goes down. He went so over-aggressive for no reason whatsoever. What the hell happened there? I'm not sure, but that's a free tank towards the side of BGWP. You cannot be making those kind of there you go. things. There shells coming to I way. think Papa loaded some more HE since last time. Yeah, I, I would say, like, it looks like... Oh my god, 12. Yeah, they just want to take down this 279 slowly but surely with HE. And it seems to be working out so far. And it obviously they're more prepared for that than uh, Devi from this. Oh, Shkrga also dies. That's all the guys on zero line, man. It's just they're getting deleted. Like, this is H spam all the way. A dirty play we've seen. It's a hellish spam, man. So far for BGWP, this is amazing. This start is great for them. Shifter down. Skurga down as well. 6,000 HP up. Can they even come back? Fail. Yeah, Minion is next, man. Like he's on 240 HP. That's it. Like one or two more HE shells and he's gone. Yeah, That's already three tanks in full field. Once they lose that zero line pressure, I do not believe that there is a recovery option here. If they have no one on A0 now to cover it. So complete push from the building side and then followed up later from the zero side from the BGVP. That's going to be it, man. Like they have no potential for rotation. A massive push on a rail. No, they don't. They can't do it. And there is even pressure. Look at this. Two line BGVP sending tanks because they realize there is no one in front of them. They know that most of the force of Devi is engaged there. There is no one to do a, like a massive brawl in a city. Once those tanks actually collide, this is a full pincer attack now. 
Yeah, Buzzrock here is going to be the first one that's in trouble when they actually do push the city. The HP is only 5,000 apart, but here we can see that Ghost Tony comes around the corner, gives one free shell to Buzzrock T57, now pushing up. Magma is relocating. He wants to watch this. He spots out Camille, should be able to at least get a shell in towards him. They need to be careful with this commitment here. It could cost them a lot, but they're up so much HP. Yeah, Gastoni give one shell there to over the rail. That 260 is in a really dire situation. When he dies, they're gonna lose a complete spot there. You can see, like, gradually, Davy is just getting slowly pushed back everywhere on each part of the front. They're just getting boxed in, man. Yeah, they're down still. So much HP. Buzuk is one shot. Tuxi is one shot. Asa gets absolutely deleted, pretty much. Down towards the one shot as well. It's about 10,000. Well, oh, this is really less. promising. Show me getting focused out now together with uh, Luna. And Papa Pavio in there. Chomi's gonna be the next one to fall. Then Asa goes down and Davy coming out in this round. I'm not sure what the plan was, but it was definitely an unsuccessful one. It's not a plan to go down with a zero. There's the still chance to kill someone, man. But Duxi is now falling down. Zix and Nico are holding the corner of the map. I mean Nico is the last line of defense there they have at the moment. When he falls, that's it. Yeah, Zeke's there. I don't think he's having a fun time. Killer now trading out with that T57. Ghost Tony comes in with the kill. And I don't even know if they'll be able to pick up a single kill here for the DV side. He's a high chance to kill Camille in the city. Ooh. He's between Chieftain and E4. Consumes a one shot. Maybe they'll get at least one. They need to pin that. There we go. We do not want to lose 15 0 in the first round. <laughs> oh, dear God, man. Well, small victories, baby steps, you know? Yeah. Uh, that was uh, a stomp. There's no way to call it. There's no... Like, I don't know what Shifter was doing there. Um, I saw him approach and he didn't take a single point of damage until he came actually to that position. And then the farm just started, man. He was deleted and the two chieftains behind were deleted and then just that was it. Just like a domino effect. Yeah, they did not have enough uh, tanks on field to actually realistically contest that. It's not only about the tanks on the field, like if you watch the BGVP more carefully later in the game, you will see they have the zero line, they have a crossfire with them, they have other angles, and not only that, like they have a bunch of guys who are ready to suppress other positions who are supposed to help, you know, these guys, chieftains in the field. So it's not like that easy of, a, of an effect. They were just like gradually grinding them down, like a really big, brutal grinding machine, and that's it. No ending pain. See that the damage pretty much very spread between BGWP. Those three guys you see there. They're all zero, they're all zero line. Yeah, they were all zero line. Well, where did nine damage come from? from one? Uh, <laughs> I guess one of HE shells. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> one HE shell for nine damage. <laughs> probably I mean, a turret of a chieftain or yeah, something like it's, that. Uh, yeah. it's, it's something, I guess. I mean, that VK actually doing 3.3, not bad whatsoever for, for, uh, for that kind of tank. Failure. Mr. Radio Voice himself. Failware could make a podcast and I'd listen to it every day. Easy. Yeah, I mean, easy, like the best voice in the league, man. Uh, if you never heard him on TeamSpeaks, guys, like just rewatch some of the old words and you will realize who he is. Anyways, uh, pretty, I would say, convincing first opening for BGVP on Ensk 1 to 0. If it goes like this, uh, I'm not sure we're going to even fit with our predictions. But still, Davy can uh, recover and uh, maybe take over the next round on, uh, if not Ensk, at least to try to do better on the next of the maps, like, uh, I don't know, on Proc. Proc should be a, a much better map for them. Well, uh, Davy really needs the second round on Ensk. You do not go or want to go into a finals being 2-0 down. That is the worst case scenario, especially with a Proco where realistically you can say that the defending team should be able to win in a lot of cases. Um, so that's like typically a 1-1 map, you would say. Um, so then they go into Cliff 3-1 down again. So they need this second round on Ensk. They really, really, really need it. Yeah, we all know it, but you know, you get what you deserve. As we say it always, they actually need to take it. They can eat it as much as they want. BGVP are not kind of guys who just say, yeah, yeah, we are just like nice guys, merciful. We're just going to give it to you, you know? You never know, right? Sometimes people like sharing. I don't think they care that much. <laughs> I mean, you never know, right? We can pretend it's uh, summer Christmas. No. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to happen either, but it's always nah, I heard Melanie Trump is trying to do like Christmas decoration in the summer, you know, mm. now, but uh, I don't think this is White House and so on. We're not going to go that way. So really convincing victory here for uh, guys from BGVP. Like, I, we always kind of give them an edge and so on, but you can see the difference in experience here because there was like not a slither of hope for Davy in this game. 
uh, maybe they will learn something from it and uh, make a different kind of commitment. But I'm interested in what because when I was watching this game, I literally saw they have no response to anything. Like they know the positions and they know what positions are supposed to do, but how to actually cooperate on high level between those tanks and what to do, that all just came down. And they were just farmed everywhere. So it's not like you, you, you report a single problem on a map. Yeah, we have a problem, we're losing HP here, or we're disadvantages here. They were farmed by chieftains, but that's not the only place where they're getting pressure. They were losing HP all over the rail railways also. So we actually saw, was it? It was tier VST that, from the similar style, actually managed mm -hmm. to win on the rails. But they did so much initial damage, if you remember. Yes, but at the end, trust uh, still collapsed, and we are still saying like uh, they played without Shokish and they played without Stefan. Which is not the case today. They're also playing with Coach Tony now. Ah, uh, Tony's playing also? Yeah. yeah Alright, yeah, yeah. so... Yeah, yeah, we saw him. So, a lot of problems here, <laughs> I would say. Uh, it's not like always the best players win, but the best cohesion does. Uh, it's gonna be a high level for Devi to reach, to manage to beat them. And I would say, like, uh, everything that happens today, everything they uh, manage to take, that will be a good one, because they already had a really rough road to get here. We'll have to see now what both these teams bring out. We've seen BGWP play from North, and if you remember, they pretty much played with 15 tanks on the field. They were pushing super no, ultra no, no. aggressive. They had, they had presence on the rail, and yeah, yeah. they had a bunch of tanks. They they don't, I don't think they had anybody really in fast. the city, though. Yeah, they had no one, I think. One tank, something like that. Just spotting. Let's see the lineups. VK again. 3279s. 60Ds on Davy's side. 3E3s. We have to see the the spawns of these trees. They're actually super important to see where they spawn. Well, we will see because they spawn from the opposite side, from the lower side of the map. This is BGVP. They already have Nile spawned. We were talking about that. You can't play field if you just like have tanks spotted all over the other side of the rail. Well, it's definitely a different kind of strat here for BGWP. They're not going full field anymore. They have a lot of tanks actually in city. Mm-hmm. You see Tuxi here. This is here. Like more like a hold at the moment, and they're just waiting to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. They do have a decent amount of times going towards zero line, though. There's three chieftains over there. Gostoni should be able to get a shot here on towards the E3. He does connect, even engine. That's annoying. So far, just the initial rail straight, but BGWP has control over the field if they want it, to be honest. And there has to be some sort of city push coming out here for the side of... Uh, oh, Ilya got really lucky here that Tony didn't actually connect him. Yeah, I don't like this hold right now for um, for Davy. They have to actually push out of it. They're already getting surrounded super early on. This is a very good counterplay from BGWP. They yep. might not know it, but it's very, very good. Let's also not forget one more thing, guys. The southern side is actually attacking side. So in this game, BGVP is defending. It doesn't mean they, mean they don't need to play aggressive, as they are, but their role is defense. And Davy is playing completely counter-attack threat. Completely. They're almost completely surrounded in a corner right now. I don't really like these positions. Mm. whatsoever. Svito is taking really a lot of damage now from two sides because they still didn't counter the windows on D3, D4 position, so there can be shots from there, from the base, from the side, below the tracks, you know, like a little bit of here, a little bit of there. Josef is also really uh, tracked there. He barely pulled back on one shot, so two of those TDs are already on low HP, and we even haven't seen the half of the force of BGVP move a single finger yet. Yeah, and they're doing so much damage. Already extending their lead by about 3,000. Joseph is down towards a one-shot. And only now, only finally now, does Davy start pressuring the city. Yeah, Dupre is on 1k on rail. Also, Silence dropped on his Z4 uh, on 600 HP. So that's some progress for Davy. But still, uh, the 4k HP when you need to attack, that's a actually a big difference. It's not like you have a setup of fast tanks against mouse tanks, you know, so you have it natural. No, this difference was made in the last two minutes. You can see now Davy is starting to pressure up in the city, but what they don't know, BGWP has a very, very good established crossfire there. I don't think they can actually push it and make that work. 
You can see Skurga here coming in the window position. That is all nice and well. But still, they need to find an opportunity here to make a difference. And I don't know where it's going to be. HE against the 279. A little by little. It's going to take a while. I don't think he has enough HE for that, man. It doesn't look like it. Those six more will take, like, how much? 150 more? E pretty much. I mean, oh, there is a big one. Oof, 99. Mm-hmm. Still 3,000 though, Mojo. I didn't think they needed a little bit more than 99 to... Uh, hey, maybe he does like 500 with those five. That's going to pay off, you know? Ooh. Never mind. We can see now, though, the flying coming out from the south. Davey will have to react because there is a heavy that pushed them behind their VK, behind their E3. They're actually trying to re-push the rails. That is a very brave and risky move. I don't know if this is actually going to work out. They need to take out Tuna from the game here. Can they do it? He's down down towards the one shot now. Four and E4 at least. Karana now pushing across as well. They pick up Phil. Where to pick up Tuna? There is still a 3,000 HP deficit here, but they are at least making some sort of move. Is it going to be worth it? Is it going to be enough? I don't know. I don't think so even. Corana falling now uh, also Shifter being on one shot also Ghost being on one shot but at least they do not want to die cornered as rats so I would say going out and trying to do something and take the fate in your hands is much better than just waiting and being shot off one by one well they are mel melting now all over the map 6000 HP advantage for v BGVP so I would say it's a bit too late to be progressive in this kind of the game they should have done it from the start and uh, at the moment, BGVP is just, uh, as I can see, calculating how to end this game. Yeah, it does look like that. Vala takes a big shot there from the side from the 268. Magma goes down and they will lose in the south here. These Chieftains just have too much HP to really make that happen. Dupree will pick up Shifter as Annihilator didn't. And that is Dupree finishing him off. Ilya will go down just after that. And that leaves the base almost completely exposed with nobody to really hold full it. HP, man. Like he's pushing the back of the tanks of Devi and he's unscratched. Yeah, and uh, this was very slow from Davy. Very, very, it took them forever even to push towards the city. I, I'm not sure, nerves or whatever, but it took forever. It reminded me so much of TRVST. When it they didn't were look like they, they knew what to do in these moments. They just gave the field for free and didn't do anything for a while. And then it looked like they got kind of angry with themselves, you know? And uh, they just decided to push and what happens, happens. And you know what happens then? <laughs> So it's now just two men left standing. Well, make that zero as Skurga and Buzuk go down and BGWP in a spectacular fashion picks up 2-0 lead here. And there is going to have to be some major reaction from DV if they even want to get back in towards this one. 12k advantage of HP, 2-0, Ensk taken already. That's a big uh, problem for uh, DV. Now they're going to go on Prohorovka, which should be much better map for DV to play, not compared to uh, Bulgarian wild predators, but uh, just for themselves. So they might feel more at home there. Well, Tony coming out there with a lot of diamond. Tuxina 268 actually doing very significant as well. Um, but, you know, in reality, there's too many low numbers on the side of Davy Magma doing zero, while the damage is, again, very reasonably spread between the boys from BGWP. Damn, it's hot here, man. <laughs> that is very true. Failware, however, in this game, not having the uh, greatest performance in that VK. Look at this. Tony, Papa, Consume, almost 4K. Like quite a lot of big hitters there. Kaizo, who plays the, the rail. Yesterday, Kaizo was, for example, deleted on the rail. I remember that very well. Mm -hmm. But today, I guess, they kind of overdid the mistakes made and everything and the support is much better and greater in that regard. So, quite a dominant map uh, for BGVP. It's not something like we as commentators, commentators even need to state. Like, it was really obvious that they are the ones in charge from start to the end. And uh, to be honest, if Devi wants to be a, a worthy finalist, they have to show some uh, guts and some brawl here. Yeah, they have to show us something on Proko. They are going to be... Defending first, so there is that. It's a slight advantage, but we've seen BGWP know how to break a passive mm -hmm. a passive Prokurovka. So if you're DV, I don't know if you actually just want to sit there and wait for it to come out. It's going to be a lot about the lights and how lights perform. I haven't seen Izne also play, right? He's not in the team. Yes, yeah, so Izne is also not playing. Like one of the standard lights for, uh, for fame is not also playing there. So they're totally not in a full lineup and still so dominant. 
I mean, he he didn't play with them the last tournament either. I mean, he was in the clan. They mm -hmm. didn't ask him to play, so I guess they didn't ask him for this one either. I don't know. I know he streams a lot. I, I watch him often, so I guess I, I, I'm not sure he always cares, cares about this that much. So that's the question. Anyways, that doesn't matter here at this moment. We are watching just the players who are interested to play this and uh, won this, won the victories. Uh, Prok Prokhorovka being talked about it. What do you expect here? Because you know Devi much better than I expect a very aggressive play, a lot of 9 sevens. Do you think they will push even from defensive side? What are they playing first? Let's see. They're playing defensive side first. No, they're attacking. They're attacking. Oh, never mind. I don't know. I, I, I expect them to push on both sides. I'm not sure. It's, it's kind of suicidal to push against this team every time, you know? I don't know. I just I think that's the way that Shifter likes to play Prokhorovka. It likes to play very aggressive. On attack, I don't know, though. On defense, I think they'll play passive. Mm -hmm. On attack, I think they'll play very aggressive. Okay, I hope so, actually, because, like, uh, I have a feeling lately in Prokhorovka, if you don't establish, like, map presence in the start, it's really hard to do it later against a decent team, of course. Like, if you don't... We've seen the trades yesterday on EBRs, and uh, if you make actually good plays against uh, BGVP EBRs, you can actually take the dominance of the map. And that's the chance that Devi should have. Now, can they do it, and can they outplay? This is not like a personal play maneuver. This is not like EBR against EBR. This is like a team effort. Like, can they outplay them and put them in position to be shot by the team? That's another question we will have to see when the game starts. So, um... I don't know. I don't think BGWP will change too much in their Prokhorovka approach. Um, they are on the defense. They could they could change it up now. They've played very defensive already twice from mm -hmm. Proko. Um, they could change it up into something more aggressive to try and throw them off guard because Davy does have did have the time to see those Prokos and to think about how if it comes down to it, how would they approach it? How would they break it? Mm -hmm. Because when you know the positions, the standard, the standard reactions, it doesn't make it easier. It doesn't make it easier enough for them to actually figure it out. I'm not sure. Well, there's nothing about us to be sure. We're gonna see what happens. How many spotters teams have? How many artists they have? Then we can pretty much deduce what they want to do based on that. Even that can, of course, be a complete face <laughs> hand dealt by someone intentionally to lead you off. But there is only so little combinations on the map that you can take like no matter how you imagine the the, the playing tactics on a map uh, it's more or less like a chess before it starts you decide based on like what you think is more most balanced for uh, players you have in a team for what's current meta what's this what's that and then you have like a certain amount of options that you can work with and everything else can be a bit stupid and suicidal to be honest <laughs> So we're going to see what these guys want to do when the game actually starts. Uh, DV needs to pick up this Proko 2-0. If not, I feel that they'll be done. If they lose this round, it is going to be a very bad spiral. It could actually end up with... I wanted to say, like, if Ensk and Proko, and, like, especially Ensk, if it starts this bad, this can go with a zero. Yeah, that's my that's my worry as well. I know you, you can't say it, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's what I meant with a bad... It's a nice way to say it with a bad spiral. Yes. Right. A bad spiral leads to a 5-0. It's hard to say for your clanmates, but that's how it goes, man. Eh, if they lose, they lose. They win, they win. It's I mean, you know, I don't I don't have an impact on it, so they're playing. If they if they if they win, they win. If they lose, they lose, so be it. Well Akuna Matara. <laughs> In the movie should be out soon, right? It's already out, actually. Really? In cinemas. Yeah. Alright. Davai. Anyways, we're getting in towards this round of Prokhorovka. And I think I might be wrong because Davy is playing double RD. All right. And it's definitely not the really fast approach on Proko. So double EBR and two RTs played by DV. And we have three EBRs and one RT GV, no less. For VGVP, we can see who wants to play more proactive stance. Double RT can work only if you have actually spots on the enemy tanks. If Buzuk and Tuxi get suppressed by three EBRs of BGVP, those amount of RTs will matter absolutely nothing. Does it look... It does look like a very similar start here from BGWP. Not much seems to have changed to from honest, what I, I see. I think we, we need to pay attention to the right EBR of Devi, who is going to heal more than to this one. But maybe this one will actually get shot. Tuxi 
Tuxi is actually Ooh, in a big Camille, danger. Camille's trying to go for it. He's down towards... Four, like, yeah, he's not going to get the Ardis for this. He's not going to find the Ardis whatsoever. He goes down immediately. But that does let Papa take the G1 bush. Will they figure that out? I'm not sure, but this was like way too risky. I don't, I'm not sure that was needed, actually. They like, should really. figure it out when these 907s get spotted crossing. Because still. it's easy to hide Ardis. Like, oh, oh Tuna no. also. Tuna also getting caught out. So minus two BRs, they do get one of the RDs. Can they get the second one though? It's still not worth it, man, to trade one RT for two EBRs on this map. That's like nonsense. The second RT is still alive right now. Titus is still living. He actually lives. So two EBRs for one. The G1 bush though. I really, really, really want to know if they can figure it out. It's just a matter of can they figure out their perma spotted. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the biggest difference. Like if they understand their perma spotted, they will know. Oh, Tuxi needs to be so no. Tuxi goes down, that's All right, terrible. That's, that's a problem. Now you have like one EBR and one RT, and on the other side you have the same. So pretty much Camille and Tuna kind of paid off because they have more of the map dominance now. Wizard puts a nice shell in towards one of the 907s. So oh, that's silence. They still don't know about the G1 bush. They're still not aware. They do have enough tanks, however, to hold one too. Papa is a very crucial position right now. Already aiming on towards him as well. Tuxi dying there was really bad for the side of... It's uh, not much guys to p support, to be honest, uh, on Buzuk here. Yeah, but if Stefan peeks that, I think there's Chieftains on the rails. I don't think he's going to be happy with that one. Ooh, Niall actually gets spotted out by an I-7 and takes a lot of damage as well. Not good there either. Mm, Niall in his STRV. It's usually Shockish playing them, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I think Shockish is the most reliable player for something like that. But you also want him on a Chieftain. Right, so they just swapped the places. Well, Nile was the top damage dealer in uh, STRV in the last game anyways. So, Nile is taking over the position back on a one line, so he can control the middle. I-7 managed what to kill the push? silence on 907. What he pushed over there? middle. He just pushed over middle by himself and died. Stefan is on 600 HP. Buzuk is also. That RT, like Luna, really has to focus his shells, but Magma and General Zix are actually pressuring towards Stefan. Stefan is running away. He's on one shot now, being heavily pressured. There is a high chance they're actually going to finish him off. Magma needs to be careful here. Sitting on top of that bridge is going to make you take a lot of damage. Be careful with the 907. Needs to back off. Takes one. Stefan, barely alive at this point. Barely. Barely surviving. But this is ideal situation for it's Davey. Awfully... Awkward plays coming in by B BGB. Yeah, they're just moments. doing so weird things. I, I'm not fully comprehending, but it's good for DV. They're reacting to everything quite well. Um, now the 907s are pushing 9 line, and then there will have to be some sort of reaction for BGWP, or they will get surrounded. They are in deep, deep trouble. The Stefan will fall for free. I think here, yeah. failure is no support. There you Fail go. Stefan goes down. Failware is also just going to get peeked on by the IS-7s from the middle. He will be forced down. There's a Chieftain, by the way, in F7. So if they even push over middle, that should also be countered. The only thing is there's only a 907 and an SRV in 1-2. But they, they, there's too many Chieftains close. You see where Chokesh is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like there's too many Chieftains close if they no, even push down 1-2. As long as that 907 is alive on H1, they can't really do anything about it because they don't have enough tanks to push that side. This is uh, good stuff from DV. I mean, they've taken 9-0 line out. Even mm -hmm. as weird as BGWP is playing, they're making the right moves according to what they are. It was a bit gifted. It was a bit gifted by BGWP. I, I think that opening was way too risky for something like this. Yes, uh, Davy has like two artists, but they could have played way different. And, and there is a farming on the middle tanks, as you oh, said. Oh, Kaiser trying to run away in that Chieftain, but I don't think his little legs are uh, quick enough to get out. He takes so much damage down to 68, gets struck, gets held, gets taken out. Shockish just about made it out, and it's more aggression coming out of it from Davy because they see the one-two line push. They know they have to react. They know they have to do something. Skirga goes down. Not a real surprise. Shifter is still there in the STRV trying to do what he can. It's a 3,000 lead. They need to clean up these tanks in the base of BGWP, though. They need to take them out of the fight right here, right now. Oh, now Shifter, if he falls, they will have no defense of that side of the map. Only EBR will be left to deal with, with Papa Pavian one on one, more or less. So if he actually takes out Buzuk, he can take out the RT. And then BGVP is st still not out of the game. They still have a lot of tanks that can do the crossfire. Now BGVP, RT is dead. Titus missed his shell toward Papa Pavian. Papa will now choose, will he shoot the I-7 in the back or he's gonna go attack and far. Tony falls on the other side. Here we have a bunch of uh, mediums from BGVP Life, three of them, and two TDs, but they're in really dire position. Yeah, they're coming back now with all their 907s. So on towards Corvana. Corvana just driving forward. He needs to be careful. He actually manages to bounce the 268 shot, I think. And it's closed off here. They still have an HP lead. They take off the pre. Finally, that's important. They need to flank these TDs because Vala, yes, he has 2000 HP, but he's only a turtleless TDs. He can only face one direction. Yeah, he is really weak from all other three sides. Feely being on one shot is really bad for them here. 
the only guy with some significant HP now is actually one of the 907s and Papa Pavian in his EBR. But Papa Pavian, yeah, he's a Rolling Stone man, but he's not a Superman that of that magnitude. Annihilator gets annihilated in his STRV as the DV tanks are now pushing forward. And even after this ends, a weird round coming out from BGWP, but DV reacting accordingly and doing the do, taking out the tanks from BGWP. And it's just Papa Pavian left standing. Yeah, they definitely did the deed. And uh, actually, good play here by Devi, exploiting every mistake BGVP generously made in this one. Yeah, I mean, I did like the play from Papa Pavian getting in towards that G1 bush. It was risky, but uh, it worked out. I liked it. Uh, they got Tuxi for that as well. But then Silence pushing over the middle of the map? Suicide? I have no idea what happened there. And also he, he drove over the rails. Like, he drove over F6. I mean, sacrificing Kamil, I guess... The only reason why they sacrificed him is, was actually to put Papa Pavian in that bush. They wanted to kill the Ernest as well, but guess, I guess Tuna also went super but aggressive. We as didn't you see said, him. like Stefan lost so much HP on zero. That's he silence, probably, by the way, there. You yeah. see the 907? He probably peaked, like uh, Stefan probably peaked up, and he lost so much HP, ended up on 600 before they even pushed him. And uh, they had to drop entire side, and that pretty much le led to a really bad cascade of events. Yeah, I think they, you know, weren't sure of what to do. Um, they didn't want to play the def defense again that they played before. I, I said, you know, playing the same thing time and time again, it does leave you vulnerable for mistakes. Joseph picks it up, and that is Davey picking up their first round on Prokhorovka attack. So at least, you know, no 5-0. Man, this is good for them. Like, they have a chance to play the defense and actually win it now and maybe come even Steven with the BGVP in this match. Like, that would be a really great comeback for them. I wonder if they're going to camp or not. That's the real question here. I'm not certain. I wouldn't know what to tell you, but, like, playing overly aggressive from this side, as you can see, does not always pay off. So getting carried away with a victory can usually be a trap for a team that is not certain. Well, at least they, the one round is a big confidence booster, but this whole round... I mean, even if they get the two RDs, I don't, I don't personally know if it's worth to get two EBRs out for that. I no. mean... No, no, I, I mean, I really, I was thinking they will use their EBRs a bit different just to clear the two EBRs of uh, Devi. And I think they could have done it before uh, actually the some huge impact from RT. They didn't even need a single tank on the middle for that. So I know, I'm not sure about this. I, I'm, I don't know what to say about this. I didn't like this game that much. Well, Ghost doing a really good damage. 3.7k there for Devi. Nice amount of shots. 12 pens of 16. That's pretty good for this kind of thing. This was pretty straight out fight, I would say. There was no really ingenious tactics on any side. There was just like reads, what you need to do. There was no like marvelous blind shooting on certain positions and so on. Like the only trick we saw was like Papa sneaking in into that G1 bush and no one realizing it. And no one will probably realize it until the end of the game, <laughs> I like stream. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, it didn't bring them the success they needed because the response from Davy or the rest of the map was the more than appropriate. The was not worth it either. I mean, you no, said no, there's losing, no losing, losing tank. You there said was there's like not much support, but like IR seven on the middle, it's like that's four ninety, and then like one chieftain shell that's already over. Uh, it's already nine hundred. Yeah, he overpicked definitely there. I mean, we didn't see it, but he was full last time we saw him, and the next time he was on six hundred, and Buzuk was also on half. But who cares, man? You lost the entire side of the map because of that. As Buzuk much as I think Stefan is amazing. When he gets put more in a role, I don't know what role he is, but when, when during the campaign, uh, when they were playing, when, when he gets put more in a role of decision making, it seems like it does does uh, suffer on his performance. Yeah, it's much easier to, to be honest, like even when you play or I play or anyone else, like you can be an FC of any magnitude. If you actually... 30 second wonder, mate. Yeah. <laughs> if you actually get the chance to just play and assist another it's FC, completely different. you can play five times better because you actually see your tank. <laughs> you actually see your tank most of the time, not just the minimap. And you see minimap and you can tell the guy who is under the pressure as a leader what he's missing then. That's like, for me, that's like 10 times easier role. Like, hands down. Well, we'll get into towards the um, second game here. I can tell you what I think is going to happen. And uh, I do solemnly believe that it's going to be a lot of 9 sevens. <laughs> you remembered something? I know something. I, if they play that strat, at least, uh, it's it should be a lot of 907s. 10 minutes delay. 
please do share. Uh, three nine zero seven is going towards the hill. Everybody else going six. Uh, I think. Wait, wait, what was it? I think it's three nine zero seven is moving towards the hill. Right. Rest of the nine zero seven is going six line. Some chieftains in the mid. Uh, and if you see a lot of tanks cross towards the rails towards the hill, you push mid. If not, you push down rails. It's like a nine zero strat. But if you see a lot of tanks, you just push mid. Yeah, we've seen this strat before. It was done. I not on this tournament now, but it was done before. It was done even in Gold League, if you remember. Like variation with less number of tanks, but pretty much the same concept. Uh, it can be powerful, and it does uh, need enemy to be split to work. Because it's if enemy is focused and he has like four or five tanks down, you're so dead. We'll see. I don't know. Like, uh, that's what they were trying, and it, it worked very well, apparently. Because it does. I think it's only. I don't know if it's with one EBR or with two EBRs. It could be just be. Could be with one. I'm not sure. ABR is a really big game changer in all the tactics. Like in last months, like uh, the game completely changed after the wield tanks came out because like the what you what you thought was a fast spot before done by T100 or a Bacha turned into a slow spot. Turned into a, a snail spot. Like you can't even compare it anymore. Now, like when you see a T100, oh yeah, you can kill him so easy. Now before, uh, uh, like long ago, they were just running away all the time. Like now, if T100 uh, runs away, you ask your teammate, like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what's wrong with you? <laughs> Why are you not keep hitting that? It just feels uh, it's so much easier to hit T100, though. I must say that much. It feels so much more more easy. Before, you could get away with some stuff in T100. Now you just die. And Bachat? <laughs> Bachat is kind of irrelevant in this meta. It's like shooting a TIE 5 while he's putting. It's uh, so hard to realistically hit 5 out of 5 with a bot to actually make it work against 907s. They it's amazing, like if you imagine like before you, people were using Bachat as a main spotter, man. Like active spotter. How cookie crumbles, eh? Yeah, I just don't think that the Manticore will be as much as it used though. Hmm? What? The Manticore? Yeah, I haven't seen it. It's terrible. Really? It's absolutely terrible. <laughs> it's the Does it have any good side of it? It has great camo, but I think the max possible damage you can do with it with all its shells is like 9,560 or something. It has like low that. number of shells? Yeah. How much? Like I, th I think it was 16. I'm not sure though. 16 sh shells on a light? It was increased to 20. It was increased to 20. Oh, gee. A 20 oh, shells. Gee. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, <I'm gonna laughs> so so they, they have a life expectancy for that uh, tank. He will not survive longer than 20 shells. Yeah. I, don't, I personally uh, don't like it. It's very confident. There is probably going to be people that do like it. I don't like it. All right. I don't know, man. Like, uh, if a tank is so limited in options, I don't think anyone. No, like they it. changed the strat. I think. Why? Oh no! I mean, I'm not a fan of this. Have they three EBRs? Buzuk, yeah. Tuxi, and Shifter now playing it. You're not a fan of when Shifter plays the EBR. I know that already. Doctor Nix is their most reliable alt RT player. So there he goes, and we have Luna on GVE on the other side and again three EBRs Camille, Papa Pavian and Tuna. Tuna actually had a quite rough time also in EBR, especially on Prokhorov. Well, it could still be what I was saying, but just different lineup from what I've seen. I will have to see. We'll have to see if it's done. It's not, it's it's still 9-0 push. They have two seven nine as far as I can see. Yeah, he's in one two by himself. Mm -hmm. Just a lone lone wolf left to fend off. I like this. I like this this move from Shifter here. Shooting Tuna, uh, I like that personally because it doesn't expose you towards the rails. Well, he's a e single EBR from uh, that side and uh, he knows that Tuxi will anyway spot the hill, so he doesn't need to cross. So that's okay. It's an okay advantage of one shot also. I like, if, if, if I'm Tuxi here, I like to go a little bit more aggressive, but it, it is what it is. But we saw yesterday that it doesn't really pay off always. Yeah, but you can kind of quickly check how many tanks are on the rails, but yeah, it doesn't really matter in reality. Tuxi tuna. needs to instantly move because he's going to get blasted from... Oh, he didn't pen Tuna here. Lucky Tuna, but Tuxi not so lucky, taking one shell from the side. Not anymore, though. Whoa. <laughs> Neo. That was close. Is that you, Neo? Yeah, that was close, bro. There's going to be the 9-0 push after. You see the STRVs closing up. The 907s are already there. Mm -hmm. uh, Tuxi needs to prevent this... This, this 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 group of tanks are being spotted though. He has to prevent them from being spotted. He, I, I think he just wanted to fade before he does this. Nice connection on Tuna here. Tuna does not see the 907s, but they do know there is a bunch of tanks from BGVP actually covering that and also from the middle. I don't think there's enough though. When this tanks drive down 7 line, they will prevent anything. Woo! 
Ooh. That was a direct shell here coming in by Luna. Ooh, but on the other side, Luna. Tuna is also on 50 HP. And there is a push coming in. General Zix, Korana, and Dr. Tweet over the top of the hill, followed up by STRV Ghost. And the rest of the guys from the middle of the map. Let's see how will that happen. Here we go. Niner Seven is now pushing down Corana, Zix, and Quito. Tuna is still alive, but he has to drop off. Failure it takes immediate amount of huge damage. The rails are now coming into effect. I don't think they can immediately push this. We'll see. The middle push is going on at the same time as well. Corana and Quito, they're actually going. They want to take out Failure. One more shot. They do it. Nice shooting there from Davey. They're pushing on towards the middle. They're pushing on towards the Chieftains. It's actually working out so far. Consume goes down. The pre goes down. Kaiser is now going to be the next one to get focused down by all these guns from Davey. They pick it up. And now it does look like BG, BGWP is kind of surrounded in this area. They still have a lot of HP to go through, but they could maybe make this work, Mojo. I think they actually have the map control now. That's quite obvious. You don't have to be very general to see that. Now they need to slow down the game and start working with the numbers and everything. They have Davy can definitely come back into this game, but they cannot get greedy now. Now is the time to slow the pace down and start working with everything you have all over the map. EBR on the 1-2 line is coming behind the enemy lines, but, but he's, already he's already chased. He's already ready chase. This is the big thing they have. The Chieftains in the middle, they can fire on the guys on the lower side of the map. Beautiful stuff there coming out. It was the tactic after all, the 9-0 push. Not surprised. I mean, it's kind of unfair because I already knew what was going to happen, but well executed nonetheless, blocking off TBR from spotting uh, and then with the 907s and pushing 7 line, pushing middle at the same time. Very good stuff. Uh, Papa and Buzuk fighting here their own one-on-one. -on -one. Papa down. is up on 5 HP still. Buzuk didn't pen him. Buzuk on 75. But still, we have 7,800 HP for BGVP, 10.3k for Devi, and much better positions. Okay, Shifter manages to pick up Papa Pavian. A little bit uh, risky there, but nonetheless working out just well. They have a significant lead, not just in tanks, also in positions. You can see Killer here is in a 279. I wish, I wish Silence a lot of luck with that. Uh, it's personally a 1v1 I usually run away from. Uh, I don't know about him, but he seems to be going down one to line. Um, yeah, I, I like that. I, I, I like taking the initiative. No, this is actually amazing. Like coming back from uh, such a humongous loss on Ensk. There is no other way to call that one. This is a really great comeback here. And uh, I would not even say this game was totally... There's nothing to say. This game was taken by Devi. By their own merit, by their own strat, by their own plays. They won it well deserved. And we're going to have uh, even Steven, as you said, 2-2. Two two. We're coming back in the next part of the match. Niall the Rust guy surviving for BGVP just died and magnificent 8k advantage for Davy. Um, so far we saw BGWP dominate on Ensk mm -hmm. like really hard just just clean wins let's be real about it. That was completely Davey had to fight really hard for these pro at least the first one they had to fight really hard for to get. Mm -hmm. The second one it was a good round. It's we can it debate about the first one, how much BGVP made mm -hmm. mistakes or not, but this one was pure, fair and square, w debut victory. What really works in this case is the EBR being Tuxi up the hill, all the Chieftains, which is kind of a mistake, uh, were in the same dip. You know, you have the left side dip, mm. the middle dip, and the right side dip. From the right side, for them, close to the rails, you can shoot the hill. Now, when Davy did push over on towards the middle, all those Chieftains were there to try and shoot the hill because you can't. So where normally you'd have to push one or two chieftains and then go to the next dip, which is really hard because you get covered. All three of them were in the same position, which allowed all the chieftains to peek over and just kind of remove them. I think Tuna is put in a hard position replacing a guy like Isnet, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I don't know why Papa is not... I mean, he is playing EBR, that's, that's no, no, the Papa issue. Papa is playing, no, no, but, no, no, yeah, is but you have three EBRs. They don't so have one is pa Papa, one is Camille. Yeah. Usually the third one is Isnet. Uh, today is Tuna, but... You know, that's a nor not normal role uh, he plays for a team like this. Joseph doing really steady performance today in uh, Chieftain. I've seen him he's in many games. Good. He's very Like, very he's good. very standard. Same play. with Skirga. I, I, like, if I have to point out people that... You say Skirga. 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 Yeah, the two people that need to be performing here for this Davy team is like Reich, Skirga, Skirga uh, Ghost, mm -hmm. um, Joseph. Nikod. They, yeah, if those people are like doing the damage... Because they're also, I think, like especially Ghost and Reich, uh, Joseph not as much actually, uh, are very, very emotional. Mm -hmm. So if they do well, they're very happy. If they don't do well, they're, they're not so happy. They take it kind of badly. Well, I guess there is someone there to calm them down because they're doing really well at the moment. <laughs> that puts us into Cliff. I, I did not expect that Davey would win 2-0 Proko. 
No, me neither. So this came as a kind of a pleasant surprise. We are coming back into the match that we already saw. Well, let's say, let's face it. After that disastrous sense, I already saw it done. But I stand corrected constantly by players that when I leap so much into the future, I'm not such a fortune teller. So that's good. That's okay. It's good that they, uh, you know, we were all, we were honestly already writing their death notice. That's how it felt like. Yes. Like, you know, it's like the gravestone was here. We're starting like, yeah, here we go. PGW. I already started the button on CNC machine to do it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Dearly beloved and everything. Uh, here rests Davy. Well, not so much. Hey, at least, at least they'll get an upgrade for their badge because they have bronze badges. Mm -hmm. They'll get silver badges at least now. No, that's before the entering the match. Now they might even get the gold. It's that far fetched, true. but there is a but there is one a thing is secure already. The other one, however, is yeah, a hypothetical. They need to work for that. Uh, Cliff, hmm. between these two, I don't know. I, I wasn't like I didn't really super like either of the two cliffs that the they they have shown. I don't know. Um, I did I did think BGWP's cliff was better though. Yes, it did look like that, uh, and uh, we've seen Devi yesterday played quite sloppy. There is no other way to call it uh, against uh, Nomi. But uh, as I said, like Devi looks today better than yesterday. Uh, they're better in the matches. Also, they played a really hard match against CSA and prevailed at the end. Goes for them. They will 2-0 down now, and they actually came back in a match. So that says a lot. It says a lot that over time their mentality improved. They're not so childish players anymore, like maybe a year ago. They learned how to maybe cope with some problems and differences and come back into the game. That's actually a huge thing for a team who wants, wants to succeed in anything. Well, looking at the lineups here, Mojo. BGWP, no Artie. It's a scenario we've already seen. DV, however, going with an Artie. Yeah, they have Tuxi on EBR, Dr. Nix as their RT player on standard. And we have Camille Eater on EBR and we have Tuna on a butt shot for BGVP. BGVP being on attacking side from the north. So far it seems very similar to what we have seen before from BGWP. Actually not true, I stand corrected. It's uh, fully up with 907 EBR and 279 down. So slightly different, because last time we saw the 277s also go down. It's going to be a mid-fight. It's going to be a huge pressure from the middle. It looks like that. They are spotting aggressive with EBR. We can see that uh, Camille is going from the lower side to spot where is the majority of enemy team. And he sees that there is a huge bunch of it. Also, Tuxi is shot. Was he set on fire? No, no, he wasn't. No, but Camille gave him one, but has to be forced to back off. Now, that's very risky from Camille there. I'm going to be honest. Ooh, a lot of misses now, and now comes the middle engagement. We'll have to see how this one goes. Magmas takes the initial bronze. Chieftain's coming in as well here for this side of Davy. They have one more. They ha Actually, they have even amount of times because there is no ID on the side of BGWP. And look at this aggression coming out on the corner from BGWP. Can they make this work? They're starting to trade here. The Chieftains are now in position for Davy. Though look at those high ground positions, Mojo, from those Chieftains. I think they might be able to make this work. The IDs are about reloaded in three seconds as well. And the HP is dropping really quickly here for the side of BGWP. I mean, they are trading on the corner, but can they make this work? I'm not really sure because when Arty hits here, it's going to be a huge splash. Let's see. It's going to happen any moment now. There we go. Tuxi actually takes out silence magma takes out Camille. this is actually going all the way Devi way much of those chieftains from the side skurga and joseph are just laying down the pain right now onto the side of bgwp from all angles ghost joseph skurga from the side they wanted to take the corner fight but the tanks i think were superior for the side of dv and they're actually making this work no oh, this is a complete stomp coming from this side and there is a counter push here i can see you're barely holding your own man the your clan is actually winning this engagement on a cliff that is supposed to be a hundred percent bg VP map, but not anymore. It's going to be three rounds in a row for DV. I didn't think anybody expected this. I don't think I expected this That's either. That's an injection of their morale in the ass, like compared to Nitro Rocket, man. It's going to be 3-2 for DV after this round. BGWP changing up the strategy. I do like it that they decided to change it up from what they had before, trying to surprise. But, however, those chieftains from DV did a lot. They actually did a lot. I, I think they just knew we have one RT. We have pretty much even number of tanks. Mm -hmm. We should hold any how we can and just work art, work with RT. And that RT splash in the center of the tanks. Yeah. To be honest, they were already up even before that. Mm -hmm. But that was just like a nail in a coffin. The thing is, 
right? I, I knew the strat beforehand, and Magma told me, and I agree with him, is that the Chieftain is not that much slower than a 907 if you're fighting mm -hmm. the middle, but it's so much more advantageous than a 277 or a 907. Of course, because, because when you get there, you need to cool down. Because a, what he showed me, and it, it is true, there is the far left side rock, mm -hmm. the far left side rock where you can put, where they had two Chieftains, there was Joseph and Skurga, um, it allows you to be completely safe from the ramp. Mm -hmm. And then there's another, the, 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 the rock right of it, it also allows you to be safe from the ramp. Yes. So you can all focus on the corner and the ramp guys cannot actually return f the, the shooting towards you. And BGWP on that corner wanted to fight, but it's really hard when there's 907s one side and then chieftains that you, you cannot pen. It's not happening. They have a hold down. Well, this is what happens when you really, really hardcore want to win something. Then you go in training rooms and you find actually the positions that work. Apparently, David did that and it paid off handsomely in this game. They're actually for the first time in a lead after a disastrous st start of 2-0. to They're actually taking three in this a row. Is like said, this, is this is like a shocking no, one no, already. It is surprising. Not meant unsurprising. This is very surprising. It's shocking for me, but... I think they well deserved it. There is nothing dubious here. I didn't think here. they could do it after Ensk. I'm not gonna lie, dude. Like after, I, I would be super pissed after Ensk. Like I, I know myself very well. I'd be so triggered. Well, good for them. They actually managed. I'm to surprised Shifter it. is still <laughs> tall. Right? Like, have you ever played with Shifter for more than two battles? No. <laughs> you, 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 we once lost our RD in the beginning of the game, and we spent the next eight minutes being pissed at our RD. <laughs> oh well. Poor guy, poor guy in RT. Anyways, guys, like as usual, per, uh, best of nine battles after the fifth one, there is a short break, so we will be with social media duo and uh, they will have some stuff to tell to you. Thank you very much. Hello, Hello welcome everybody. Thank you for the awesome Daki and Mojo introduction. Again, composed all the way through. I'm amazed they're able to keep this calm and professional through this heat this whole time. Yes. We yeah. are the ones that complain all the time about yeah, yes, that, actually. They hate. Poor video team are just like, yes, yes, guys, we know you're warm, but uh, I don't know. I feel I feel it's a little warmer here than it is yes, over there. Yes, this That's is the hot excuse. corner, actually. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I feel like this is an oven, actually. Yeah, so hot in here. I do have this PC just by my legs, blowing a really nice amount of warm air underneath yeah. the desk. It's like, it's awesome. But yeah, so this is our last social media break. Cable needs to go away. And uh, we have some things to talk about lots of things so to talk about yeah first i would like to you know talk about the bonus cups that we had been sharing during the whole evening yep so we already shared six of those bonus codes we have still one, one. that we will be sharing very soon what, what, the worst one <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> so each code is limited to only 5k activation so make sure to be super quick it includes an inscription or a reserve. The yep. next one is going to have a reserve. So it's going to Kay. be super nice for you. If you collect five of those, you're going to get a, a style and also a garage slot. If you collect 10, including the ones from yesterday, you are going to get a premium day. So that's very nice. Yep. And you still have some time to sign up to the Chill Blast campaign. Sign up, follow our channels, refer friends, and you may be able to win the PC uh, up to the value of uh, 2K pounds. Yes. Yeah, yes. so basically it's not the... The idea is for you to go to the, their page and select the, the pieces that you want. Yes. So you will be able to build your own PC. Just up to the value of exactly. So yeah, just making sure that you don't go over too much. Uh, I imagine you end up having to foot the rest of the uh, the bill, but it's fine. So yes. 2K and you're, you're good. Yes, we will be announcing the winner of this at the very end of the stream. Probably our amazing casters are going to call your name. So just stay tuned. Anyway, the, the game or yes. this match yeah, is yeah, yeah, super, yeah. super interesting. Yeah, I'm... We I didn't see that coming, I no, suppose. Uh, the, the DV pulling that one back was, was a huge surprise for me. Um, Especially on cliffs, uh, I was very, very surprised. And that camel bait was perfect. Everyone's like, "Oh, what's he doing? You're lowing, suiciding." It's like, "No, no, no! It, it, it's perfect plan." Yeah, and it, we got purposeful. more material for that remix. You know, <laughs> we're yes, waiting for we're it. We're waiting for it, Daki. <laughs> remix. So, yeah. Okay, so we do have a bunch of clips to show. If you, yeah. if you've all shared on there, so some of the clips yeah. that I've selected coming from the channel will be coming up shortly. Hopefully, I can remember the day, the reason for all of them, because there were so many of them. 
Uh, okay, so but before then, we have the answer and I believe winners for the yeah. uh, the question on the last one. The answer being the TOG, of course. The TOG 2. I mean, of course, of every course, stream ends in the TOG 2. Uh, best is tank in the game, no matter what anybody tells me. It's still amazing um, and very meme-tacular. Uh, it's a whole lot of fun. The winners that were announced and pulled were, are on the channel right now. Um, I'm seeing a couple of chat. I'm waiting to see everybody going TOG. The, I, I don't think any chat has ev ever had that many people spamming TOG before. And luckily yeah. they all stopped on their own. So that They was really cool. know you. Yes. I, mean, I am impressed. <laughs> uh, so far, I haven't flipped the TOG yet. <laughs> but I'm feeling that this is going to be a challenge eventually, and I'm sure I'll manage it uh, sooner or later. Wow. But so far, I haven't managed to flip the top, yeah, so that's that pretty cool. That reminds me that you have a new nickname now. Flickyboo. F apparently, Flickyboo is the way for. So, uh, okay, so we've got the winners there. Yep, I'm making sure everybody's seen them. We're all good. Make sure we uh, you, to give us your in-game name if you haven't already, if it's different from the one on there, we will manage to pass those through for you. Uh, and while you catch up with everything going on, take a little breather, maybe cool down if you're as warm as we are. We're going to go through some of the clips in the games. Uh, starting with... This should be what was a push from CSA on uh, Himmelsdorf on the hill. And we were thinking, oh, it's going to go really well for uh, CSA. <laughs> In the end, it turned out to be actually a pretty bad trade. DVI were managing to really make their guns count that were on the hill, and though that CSA did manage to secure the hill victory, uh, CSA just really did lose too many tanks, and even picking up an ammo rack uh, at the back of the squad moving around. Uh, though they did manage to kind of secure the hill, it meant that DVI were really able to kind of dominate the rest of the game on there, and Ghost making a heroic runaway. Just run away! Run away! Saving his hit points and making his barrel count later on. Uh, I believe we're going to then move to the later on in that same game where Daki makes a comment of where you can see how the, the rest of the game fell apart there. Because CSA lost so many hit points on the hill, it allowed them to have this moment where they not only managed to secure the bottom hill, but poor, uh, the poor 260 picking up a fire there and going down very quickly, picking up the game really, really well despite the aggression from CSA. Uh, it should have really gone to CSA that game, but they managed to get an unlucky ammo rack and DVI were really pulling it around. Uh, again, we're moving on to this part, so you can see it from a, a slightly different angle on the second game on there. Uh, and this is where, again, people commented on uh, Daki's really fast speech skills. So it looks like nothing's happening here um, uh, and everything's okay. And then all of a sudden you see this object 260 in the left corner at Delta 1 disappear and the poor guy got uh, we can't we, I'm not sure yet I haven't seen whether it's an ammo rock or something else but he absolutely got annihilated in one shot so again that affected the rest of the battle going on there uh, and you can see where DVI were then able to just keep controlling on the map on the hill and trading out again uh, and securing uh, another mines hill you can kind of see that really concentrated fire uh, when it really counts playing coming in and play with the BGWP game round uh, so we have the next game ready. If we have time, we'll share the rest of the clips. We're going to move back to the casters with the uh, the players ready and good to go. I think they're raring to finish this game. So uh, thank you very much, guys, for watching. Uh, good luck in the finals. Make sure you stay tuned for the last code. Thank you very much, Iggy. Um, yeah, that was uh, the Himmelsdorf. And Himmelsdorf, we will see between these two teams. Yeah, but we still have one round of cliff remaining here. Uh, both of the teams had a couple of minutes to refresh. Same as us, it's hot here. I it's not it's just the you. game, it's just like really all the reflector species and everything goes straight to us, man. Like, I think it's you. I mean, you know. Yeah, I'm overheating anyways. So, whatever. Ties off, everything. No rules, no gloves. Uh, What's next? The shirt? Maybe. Oh, <laughs> depends on the result. <laughs> oh, that's a sub only stream right there. Yeah, there it goes. Uh, shocking result so far. Three to two for Devi. Really good to see something like a straight underdog coming like this a straight after losing two to zero on Nensk. Now we need to see what will be the response of the guys from B BGVP because obviously it looks like they took a bite of a harder apple than they thought. Yeah, maybe getting a little bit too relaxed after Ensk could be it as well. Could be, but after losing two games on proc, that should not be the case, mate. Yeah, that's, that is true. That is true. They need to get back in towards this one. Lineups, Mojo. One EBR resigned a bat, however, for the BGWP lineup. Yes. Uh, Go to 7-9. Let me see. Tuxi playing again. Uh, EBR, Dr. Nixon, RT, Classic Luna back on RT. Camille on light, same, and they have Papa in a bacha. What will a bacha do from this side? That's uh, an interesting thing to see, actually. Will he try to climb up? What do you think? 
Um, from the other other uh, position. But look at this one two line commit coming out from uh, BGWP though. Mm -hmm. This is something they haven't done so far. This is a huge commitment on that side. So a couple of tanks toward the middle. STRV in classic camping position. And Bachat Bachat is definitely following EBR to cover him and maybe to climb. Papa already tried to climb last game also. That's true. Camelator here dropping off immediately. The whole one two line push is spotted for the side of BGWP though. How does Davey react? Ooh, Ooh, good connection show. here. Good connection by Luna. And almost the same response here coming in by Nyx also. I think BGWP actually went towards the wrong corner. They went towards the left-hand corner, but it should be on the right-hand corner because BGW, BGWP is going to get acted by surprise here because Davey's going straight through. They drove towards the wrong corner. They're not in position to even shoot. They're chasing down this 907 immediately for the side of BGWP. That's Philly getting chased down. They cannot chase him too many times, so he's on fire. That's definitely not helping towards this one. And now there needs to be a reaction from BGWP. What did they do? They all went to wrong, the wrong corner, Mojo. I don't understand why they did it. Like, it's normal when you climb up, you do go straight from this side here. So I'm a bit shocked here. But at least for them, they are RT safe and they can start doing damage. Their own RT should be safe for most of the time. Papa Pavian is down in the ditch, so he can only proxy. He cannot even think of committing to anyone. But the real danger is because they might lose an STRV. Now STRV is pushed by EBR. Also, there is EBR from BGV pushing toward the RT of Devi. Here comes the repush, though, in towards the middle. That's the main importance here. Magma is not even caring about EBR. He doesn't care too goes down, Stefan goes down. Can't BGWP make this commit work because it doesn't look like it. All of the guns from Divi are on one side. They're driving kind of in between them. They were on towards the wrong corner and now they went towards the wrong side. They're getting focused out. They're down 8,000 HP and can you believe it? Divi is actually looking to put themselves on towards match point with this commitment. I still can't call, call it just yet, but the HP lead mojo, it's significant. It's huge. It's a huge, I would say, 8,000, almost 6,000 now. There is a still brawl going on, so there is no RT to shoot him in the back, but there is still a matter of that 907 behind their lines. Ilya is on one-on-one -on -one here with Dr. Failer, so there is no back spotters here anymore. There is only 907 from Devin behind, and he will be pretty much the judge of this team. Magma needs to be careful with the play from behind. Failer from the top, trying to do what he can. He peeks out, he gives Skurga one. Vala is in a committed position there as well. He needs to be careful. This is still not over. You can never count this team from BGWP out. However, there's only six of them left standing, and there's a lot of HP for Davey. Mojo, I think there's a lot to talk about this one, but let's see how it goes out first. Ilya fighting off against Failer there. Nico coming in with the pain from the side. Another gun goes down. Down. It's just four left. A nice connection there from Kaisa on towards Ilya. Fail where fighting, trying to do what he can. He tries to do the very best, but is it enough? I don't think so. Two people left standing. Kaisa, he's burning as well. Fail where and Kaisa, the last two standing here. Fail where bounces, and now it's all but over for the side of BGWP as Davey in spectacular fashion picks up not one, not two, not three, but four rounds in a row. This is pretty much bloody unheard of so far. I would. I would rather bet my right hand and my right eye than thinking that this was happening. Bro, I am seriously confused. You, like, I'm really glad I didn't bet anything like that because now I would be blind and if crippled. If you drive in 1-2... Well, I'm kind of blind already. If you drive in 1-2 and your opponent is not in 1-2, you need to drive towards the right side corner. Yeah, I don't understand they that. They all drove left, dude. Every single one of them. I don't understand it. <laughs> like, what kind of fake info came, like fake news came there that they way see nobody for, in one to two. make them do that? I don't understand it. I don't understand. I mean, Davey did the right thing, driving straight through. Yeah. Yeah, it was the best call, man. Like, you have an open highway, why wouldn't you take it? I don't understand why they all drove left. A team at this 3. experience... 3.9k on Chomi, like, really nice game for him, but this is like a blunder of BGVP, man. You you do not drive left corner. To lose two games on Cliff, I can understand even maybe you, Brock. Maybe like one like or Brock two Brock is guys. a good mech for Davey. They played for a long time, they like it, it's fine. But to lose two games on Cliff... Kudos to Devi, really, like really for taking this victory. I'm not, sh I'm not sure victories. who is leading right now. I thought it was Consume and Shokish, but I'm not certain, 100%. Um, but it's just such a big mistake to not drive towards the right, because if you do, you can actually... Tuna did only one shot of damage with STRV. He was cornered immediately. Hey, what is he supposed to do, though? Yeah, I'm saying, like, he was cornered immediately. There was nothing. Like, he did one shot and that's it, because they already lost the 907 proxying the light tank and so on, like there was just a massive amount of death coming and there is a lot of wrong decisions coming. We are coming into the Himmelzer, this is like, uh, did, you, <laughs> did you maybe watch tennis recently? Uh, if you're going, uh, are you going to talk about Federer versus uh, Nadal? 
No, it's gonna be uh. like Djokovic and Federer play oh, the Djokovic, finals of, uh, of Wimbledon. But, but man. the game that lasted like <laughs> how long was it? Five hours. Yeah. And like uh, Federer had like two match points, man. And then he lost, and then he had like a couple of games up, and then he still lost. This is uh, like that. I don't know, man. Like this can be a biggest upset in last two years we had in Europe. But that it can David still takes this, but they can still lose it because still it's Himmels. Lose. It's Himmels. Like they really really need to play tight and it's so hard and it's hardest because it's so close yeah I, the, the, the the three things here that i don't think are good for davy is they're on match point believe it or not you might think that's a good thing but the amount of pressure that actually adds on towards the players fc is every like the thing is every every move could win the game or lose the game yeah but hands down pressure in being two games up than being two games <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I understand. I understand. But the thing is, however, that they've never been in this scenario. They've never no been one on match was. point in finals. Man, no one was. Like the last two years, champions all the time, by far, not even close. Anyone was this team we're watching across. That's it. Yeah. So this, this Clef game, they had to repush, but like, yeah, well, I mean, it's so hard. Like the repush was even slow, IMO. Like if you want to repush, like in their scenario, in the way they misplayed by going left, mm -hmm. you have to immediately repush. Because if you do not immediately repush at that point, those 907, you saw what they did. They just turned back and shot the middle. Yeah, man, when I play Cliff, even with uh, my guys who play much less than this, first time when when I when we go one to line, I start yelling before we even go back. Go right, go right, go right, go right, go right. <laughs> like don't even get greedy. Like you're playing a random game. I don't know. I think there must have been some bad communication uh, from the middle coming in. There is no way that so many of them make such a mistake. There must have been some wrong have info. So many Where are the daily yeah, players, actually? I, I mean, it's weird, though. I don't know. I, I can't see anything else. There is no they way. There are so many experienced people on that team that should yeah, be going and going. There right. must have been, because they can't see it, you know. They can mm. see tanks on minimap approaching there, you lose a spot. There must have been uh, some kind of uh, bad info coming from the tanks on the middle. How are actually daily tanks positioned and what is their approaching speed? Hmm. Like I, I can't see any other way how to something would have to, to ask them that. as well to to see what happened. Yeah, because to every like it may not seem like super important to like people at home, but the difference between going to the left corner and the right corner is is two tanks pretty much. Of yeah, it's like HP. Bugs Bunny, man. I took a left truck and turned it Albuquerque, you know, <laughs> ended up on Southfall. So four to seven nines for the side of BGWP, only two for the side of DV. A lot of chieftains though. Well, let us see, guys. A match point for Davy, something I never expected to happen, but congratulations and well deserved. We have a massive presence of Davy coming toward the hill. Only four guys actually staying, no, five guys staying on the lower part of the map, similar to what they did in, uh, against uh, CSA. On uh, BGVP side, we have pretty much much less people actually going up. I think yeah. like maximum six. Looks like they want to overrun the eight line though at some point. Triple two seven nine there. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. They need to be very quick with reactions on towards this because if they... I mean, Davy needs to be careful here because already the 277 has taken E1. taken E1 already. They take Not a lot of damage. Challenged. Challenged. Uh, he took it like 800. Uh, last time, like Mudrats, when he went there, I think it was from CSA, he, he died. He got deleted it was before delayed. he even gave there. Yeah, it was delayed, so... Permanently. Kamil here facing off against Shifter. Shifter is late because somebody rammed him. Nice shot there from Shifter. Wins the initial trade. Will Camel repeat? Of steel. Camel instantly pressing reload. He spots the 50B coming up. He's getting a lot of info here this time. Yeah, at this least. is really important. Will he peek again? No, he does not. What is the play here? They do not know it, but if they push hill straight, they. Mm, oh, it's so hard it to call on that. Depends on our first exchange. They see so many times though at this point. Okay, Failure and Kaiser are starting to snipe the guys of Davy on the bottom part of the map. And there is a push coming in from the two line. The tanks are 279 and 50B are running away. So there will be a pressure. There will be actually huge pressure on the guys on G line. Those two guys are already running away. As you can see, they took some initial damage. Ilya Minion, he's tracked now. 483 HP, actually. I don't think he will be able to leave this position. Broken ammo wrecking engine also. Ah, he's down towards 4 HP now. He might indeed die, Mojo. He's, you're right, he does die. And this is Himmelsdorf. This is BGWP's territory. Losing already one guy. They will have to be forced to push now. They're pushing from the right-hand side. Are they just going to go past and kill the Chieftains? It, might, it may look like that. There's five guys pushing here. Joseph 
Conrad and Karana and Zix are not going to be enough to actually hold this off. They're going to need to have some support here. Tony trading in his 50B. He's the first man to be focused out. And there comes Davy with more tanks, but already down 5,000 HP in this. They're going to have to be very, very quick about this one. And they have to protect their base. Do you going to actually take out the heal for sure? But will it matter? Because the heavy pressure on the base is already there. The tanks we noticed on an 8 line are already cornered. The guys that are supposed to decap. There will be a triple cap coming in here. Asax and Killer are pretty much already there. Tuxi is the only guy surviving here on 1400 HP, but he needs to deal with everyone from the BGVP side. There is no way to decap this, There man. is no way to decap this with 15 seconds left. The fear of Himmelsdorf, it's setting in, Mojo. The HP may seem kind of even, but Tuxi, he will not be getting back in towards this one to get a reset. He gets picked up by Papa Pavian, and with five seconds left, BGWP will be picking up their attacking round on Himmelsdorf, making it 4-3, and Mojo, Himmelsdorf, they can be the decision maker here. Anything can happen, they can still pick this up 2-0. This is the map we feared if it came at the beginning or the end. If yeah, feared or not, we said there is a realistic chance that actually BGVP is a kind of team that can come back in the game even after losing four games in a row on a map like Himmelsdorf. And before we started the stream, you remember we spoke. Really brave choice to have a Himmelsdorf as the last designing map. But if you look at it from this perspective, even like that, it works well, well for Devi. Because even if that happens, it still leaves us with a tiebreaker. Yeah, they, they still always have the tiebreaker. They don't, I don't think they, they want to go there. They still have one more match point. They so do. they still have one more match point. And they, this time they will play attacking side, the north side. But uh, if even that fails, they still have a tiebreaker and another chance. So that's not like they had only two chances. That's like they have three. Yeah. Well, they have already used one of their three. Two, two. left now. Two left. <laughs> but good stuff there from BGWP. I mean, getting Ilya for free. Uh, good good move there, pushing out 1-2. He's forced to run. He gets to shot honest, from the hill. To be honest, it was a slow reaction by those chieftains. They should have ran away faster. Mm. Like, they stay there like it's a picnic. They started getting sniped from the hill. If the, the, the tanks from the hill pushed maybe 20, 30 seconds earlier, it would be a different story. So I guess there was like a bit of... Uh, maybe lack of info what's going on because also we saw tanks from the rail running away faster than the chieftains from that center and they were not in even the one in jeopardy so i guess the call came on time maybe but they didn't have time to turn the tanks and mm -hmm. then they got uh, like sniped they tried to avoid damage whatever and he got probably second damage second track on a corner and that's it man then it's just like you're just yeah kill me um going from north though I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what to predict, actually, what to go, what's going out of DV. I'm not certain for this. Uh, in their scenario, I feel like they might just try and take full aggression again, since it worked a lot. Flip a coin and what happens? Whatever happens, happens. All right. As we said, they have two chances still. And as far as BGVP is concerned, they have only one all the time. Mm. So it's still, a, it's still a better coin chance, you know? Yeah. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't go into a coin flip with those odds. Well, BGVP still like a master on Himmelsdorf, but that stands for nothing because like I would never say they would lose the maps like the way they yeah, lost so yeah. far. I would never say they lose 2-0 on Prokhorovka. I would never say they would lose 2-0 to Cliff. Cliff, I don't, Cliff is like a, I don't know, map. I don't know. Anything can happen. But on Prok, you can, you can make mistakes. Something can happen to lights, man. Yeah. And you can really lose game because of that. But on Cliff, to be honest, they lost straight brawls. There's nothing else to say, like... David took those games. That's it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I'm trying to remember how BGWP played for on Himmelsdorf South. Did we see them play from Himmelsdorf South? Yeah, we saw them both sides. I don't remember exactly how they played. Uh, in one game, they had Papa Pavian with 60 TP holding that the corner. That was a mispick, actually. Uh, as far as guys told me, 60 TP strong tank one on one. Really? Yes, personal choice. R he only shot HE. Yes. What? Well, I guess uh, he thought one on one is good. <laughs> Alrighty then. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, I don't know. I don't think that in this match they'll go back towards the 60 TP. Polish power. I don't think he will. <laughs> you know, I mean, maybe he's like blasting the Studzianki soundtrack and playing 60 TP is like, yeah. Yeah, I guess. I, he could afford that in one game, I guess. Not in this scenario. I think this is going to be like uh, full attention kind of Papa Pavian play now. Yeah, I think everybody's on edge, uh, on the edge of their seats in this one, including the players. Viewers, players, even casters. Yeah, I'm always on the edge of this seat. It's kind of tiny. 
I'm like boiling here, so I'm on an edge of the seat, so I would sit on the less. <laughs> so there we go. Anyways, really exciting games for us here, and uh, surprising result that I believe that everyone actually enjoys because this is not a one-sided game that everyone pr pretty much expected. They be coming in really strong after yesterday's rather pff, sloppy performance and coming like four to two. Uh, but today playing hard match against CSA and now like being on a match point against uh, BGVP who are the by far like the favorites of the tournament. Uh, I would say like that's a spectacular result already, like already. It is, it is. Uh, what were the t t results from the last tournaments again? The TRVST lost 7-1 I think? Was it 7-1 or 7-2? Something like that, I can't actually check. Uh, and, uh, I, I know CSA lost 7-1, I was there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then before that, what was what came before that? Was it was it the absolute supremacy that came before that? I think mm -hmm. it, I think it was absolute supremacy that came before that. If I'm not wrong, give me a sec. I don't think anybody ever took more than three rounds. I very much doubt it, actually. Trust and fame. That was a 7-1, as you said. 7-1. CSA was 7-1. I'm certain about that one, for sure. Um, was it 7-1? I think. Yeah, it was 7-1, because we lost the first round, won the second, and then lost everything else. Um, and then before that, I think it was Absolute Supremacy, because that was Road to Moscow. So that was Absolute Supremacy. And that was against Nomi. I think that was like... The Roids against CSA, 5-2. 5-2? I thought yeah. it was seven games. Maybe it was 2-0 and then 7-2 because they didn't even write the results, so it was probably like that. Mm. <laughs> oh well. Um, so yeah, it's already a surprise for a team to indeed pick up that many rounds. If it's best of 9, it's 5-2, mate. Mm -hmm. I thought it was best of 13 in Moscow. I'm not sure. This is, uh, no, no, this is against CSA. Hmm. If you Maybe my memory is fading after all. After all these years, it's finally caught up to me. You need a bigger buffer. Yeah, I, had to, I I should just download more RAM. Against Tornado, it was actually quite different. I was like 4-4 four, four up to this point, and then Himki decided. Mm -hmm. Close games, man. What a difference can make, like, if you like few players they're used to. Yeah, also, especially also I guess, like, that pain, <laughs> training, hard training you were saying that Davy was doing, it actually looks like it pays off. Yeah, I, I don't know what the BGWP's preparation was, but I do imagine some of them want to get to Minsk at least. Mm -hmm. So we will see. Uh, still a match point here. If they I mean, actually win and ready. get gold bunches, I'm never playing advances again, man. Seriously? The best I go to flex is a global map legend. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> uh, I guess you will be a little troll then. Yeah, pretty Slightly. much. All the time. But it's okay. Live and learn, man. Live and learn. Anyways, we're about ready to get into the final round of regular time between day V and BGWP currently Davey leading four to three. The last round here on Himmelsdorf and Mojo. I see VK's mouse. The 50, is this a camp? It's a camp. It's a camp strat, Mojo. Unreal. It actually is. Even a mouse by failure. Three fifty sevens. E W three. It's a camp strat. VKs. Yeah, you can't push with this. Uh, I. D this reminds me of TVST, and I absolutely hate it. How will they actually... I mean, to be honest, it's not that easy to camp on uh, Himmel. It's doable, but it's not easy. They have a lot of HP though, Mojo. Yeah, they need to make such a good pressure towards the hillside, so that if tanks want to come behind the church, which is the only danger for them, uh, they can actually delete the first one. Yeah, I'm just... I guess they're... I guess, I guess that's the reason for a mouse. I guess they're counting on doing enough damage to where they can repush if uh, the, a cap happens. Yeah, you understand why is mouse there? Just gonna sit him there so if someone actually comes he can reset. Because if you wanna peek to shoot the mouse, you still need to face the rest of the team from two streets. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, makes sense. Okay, I guess this is like a heavy negotiation going now in Davy. Uh, shifter spotting, yep, they are not healed. Yeah, big info guys, they are not healed. Well, you gotta make sure that you clear K-line. Uh, like all the way K zero. Yeah, you, you need could to have a trap. you need to check all those corners there. That's the, like the first step when you're playing against the camp, and uh, then you need to make pressure from several sides to see are they making mistakes. Can you get a free kill somewhere, and then maybe try to sneak someone behind the church. The biggest issue is if DV just plummets down one two line. Yeah, so 
like you cannot push someone in a church right away that actually has to happen while the fight is going on but bgvp actually has a mouse and that mouse can decap any time i don't like this from bgwp yeah who likes the camp but let us see how it actually work it's putting all your eggs in a basket that you count on the opponent not figuring it out well they have really a lot of HP there to play around with, like 3k advantage before the game even started. The drawback of these tactics is, to be honest, is because they don't have any rotation force. So if they lose one or two of those faster tanks, they can move a bit left and right. Those VKs and E3s are really hard to turn. On the other hand, those two E3s pack a lot of punch, and those VKs also pack a lot of punch. And they have a lot of HP. Yeah. 3,000 extra from, well, three, a little less than 3,000, but uh, 2,500, but... Uh, this is a really significant moment. Uh, this is the first time I've seen, actually, this team camp. Yes. Oh, I'm, I mean, I haven't matches. seen them. I haven't seen them camp in a single game playing European tournaments ever. No, no, not in, not in European tournaments, no. Against Russians, yes. But that's different. Uh, Russians know to camp sometimes too, so... Plus, plus. It goes around what's going mm. If you remember old Himmelsdorf in a uh, old gold league format, like Navi's uh, camp point on Himmelsdorf was uh, dead square A1, A2, B1, B2. You could pretty much find a single player anyway. <laughs> they were just waiting there to spring the trap. Also, the map was a bit different, so it was like much harder to decap and so on. Uh, I mean, it was much easier to decap and so on. Fortunately, after those magnificent strats of theirs, the map actually changed and the cap moved a bit. Mm -hmm. I'm just watching Davy's movement to see what they're doing. It is going to be the K-line approach. Yeah, they're going to try to put someone behind the church. I personally feel like the 1-2 is the weakest part of this strat, but uh, they obviously do not agree. Kaizu is the only guy who took any damage so far. But not much in his T57. There is a lot of guys coming in there. Are they actually going to try to push everything from that K line and uh, make a mass pressure on the cap, and then use everyone from that uh, side street to be to to make everyone else back off, like to not be able to decap and keep some guys safe in the cap behind the brunt of the tanks? It, it, this is how it looks to me. Yeah, um, they're gonna put everything in that. Hmm. They also left General Zix completely alone, but he's covered by 50 bees from the 8 line. There's not much going on now, but this is like a high risk, high reward situation. They need to get two guys on the cap to make it work to kill Failware. I think they will try to get more guys in the cap, not just two. Because they cannot le leave anyone to trade with 57s, VKs and E3s. They cannot. I just wonder if they just they, they should stop here. Unless they just keep going straight. I think they'll just go straight, man. Oof. This is big Tromi here immediately yeah, yeah. taking a lot of damage. He's down towards a one-shot, but he will live. If he lives, that's important. Skurga actually managing to cross as well. They live. They need to start focusing out this mouse here. Play off the cap. Failware getting focused down immediately. The cap pressure is on. And now there needs to be a reaction from BGWP. But what is it going to be? They have a lot of slow tanks and they have a lot of guys to decap now. This is what I've said. Failure is already on one shot. They need to be entire team coming in from BGVP so they can decap this. They need to fight to the death for these positions here. Nico takes out Failure. He's down with his mouse. And let's see, there is only 10 seconds remaining, man. Consume is now pushing in from behind and it's 279. The resets go down towards 7 seconds. Can they find it? Or these 277s are shielding Davy here. It's an all-in tactic towards the cap. 10 seconds are left now. They do get the resets. The damage has to be done. The HP has gotten even here. But but this BGWP team is just trading off of the cap and they're making it work so far. Nikos goes down, Buzok goes down, Nihilita gets traded in return. The HP is still very even. The 50 Bs are still in the game. Can Davy make this work? They're now taking an HP lead. Slowly but surely, they're starting to focus out the guns here. Skurgak, Fito still on the cap. 14 seconds are left. They pick up Papa Pavi and Magma goes down in return. And a lot of the HP here for the Fame team is on towards this cap. Six seconds left now. They need to get Shomi. They need to get Fito. Can they actually do it? Finally, a reset comes out. It is important, but the HP Mojo 
It's dwindling, it's going down, and it's not looking good for BGWP. 11k here for Devi here, 7k for BGVP. Magnificent positions. Chomi surviving from the start. Actually, it turns out to be one of the key strokes in this strategy. Dr. Tvitos, Krga, and Chopi still capping. 30 seconds, but the HP is working in their favor because there is now HP, as you said, from Devi coming from all over the sides. There is only four guys coming in from BGVP alive. Gastoni is the only guy with any kind of HP. They simply, I don't think they can pull it off anymore. I think we will have actually a new champion. I don't think it's possible either, but we'll have to see three men left standing, fighting till the two, two are now left. It's Kaizu, it's Tony, and here comes DV. They're hungry, they want it, and somehow they have managed to do it as well. 2-0 down, turning it around. It's going to be 5-3, and did anybody expect this? They actually pulled it off, and it's not going to be BGWP, but it's going to be DV that we're going to be seeing in Minsk. As the cap goes out, Kaizu is the last man standing, and it's going to be 5-3. To three. Unbloody believable. I was so like shocked that I was casting on the side of the mic half of the time. <laughs> like this is a big surprise. They actually survived to cross over the cap. As I said, like they will aim for they that. Actually and they actually managed to cross towards the cap. Yeah, there is no way. When you go, you have to go. Like as I said, but they actually survived and they had it pre-planned. You can see the first guy who came in, he took all the damage. Then another guy came and made a side block for everyone else to play hold down behind him. There is no artist right here, so this is an option that can actually work. Shkrga, Shkrga wasn't he one shot? 5k. Wasn't he like, he was half HP when he crossed to the cap, never mind, sorry. Yeah, he was the guy in a hold on behind the dead guy. Uh, Chomi was the guy who went in first, and he was on 80 HP entire game, capping. Yes, 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 and he actually Amazing, to amazing, amazing. They actually managed to break through 5-3, to three, well deserved for Devi. After like that disastrous start, taking four games in a row, coming back in a game, and now taking the victory in this like big, big, this is a big bang and this is a big difference on the European server now. Congratulations, guys. Nothing else to say. I did not expect it after being 2-0 down that... Uh, no, no, no. We already wrote, wrote obituaries off. and everything. Yep. Good work. <laughs> I do not like when this team comes. I think this BGWP team is incredibly good. Like, amazingly good. Probably the best player for player team on the server. But I do not like it when they feel like they this need to This is the first time I've win. seen them cap. Like camp, first time. I don't know, man. Like uh, if they played some of the standard stuff, I think they would be much better off. But as I said, like we can be generals as much as we want. After the battles, the battles are played with their own minds, with their own hearts. And at the moment, Devi had more heart and they won. That's it. That's hands down, fair and square. That's just how the cookie crumbles. Whatever, man. We can go with those uh, <laughs> sayings as much as we want. Like, yeah, look, the... I don't know, this is really shocking. Like, uh, all of you guys still stay on a cast on a stream, please, because we still have to give away that one PC to someone. Like, it's 2K quid worth of uh, quid hardware. So it's okay. I think it's okay to wait for a minute or two for that. Other than that, I can really not even exp start expressing oh. how much I'm still shocked. There we have <laughs> the uh, winner, Aich64. I hope I said that right. Congratulations. You're going to be enjoying that Aich. chill, <laughs> chill blast PC to rock roll the things, not just in medium, not just in high, but the way it's meant to be played in ultra. In Ultra, man, you cannot say that you never got anything from Wargaming. Definitely. <laughs> that will also hopefully secure premium subscription to the game for the next two years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Seriously. Why? I, I'm making a marketing move here, alright? You should, right? like, do a t-shirt. I've been tempted to sell my forehead to Wargaming. No, no, like no, 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 no. You should do a proper thing, like, just t-shirt and just, like, at the end of the stream, you know, hmm. the kills are Twitch TV. Oh, my God. Yes, that's, that's amazing. Mojo, final thoughts? Good tournament. A lot of close matches. Shocking ending. Shocking ending, indeed. Big congratulations to all the teams involved, not just the winners, for mm. showing us some really good games. Uh, incredible performance in the end from DV. Uh, both teams actually playing extremely well. IMO in the beginning, BGWP by far the better team. And then DV turning it around. And yeah, we'll have to see how they fare, fare in Yeah, I'm going to have to rewatch this from start and actually see what happened and what decided in some of the games. Anyways, I think that's it from me and Mojo. It was my greatest pleasure to cast together with Mojo for all of you. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.